So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was summoned into another world to marry Murahin Strauss? Movie. Naruto Uzumaki, the current Jinchuriki of Karama the Kayubi and all late other tailed beasts, was considered the strongest ninja of his time. His former rival Sasuke Chiha tied with him while Naruto held back and was exhausted from continued fights during the fourth great ninja war. After the war killer B decided to split Jayuki Chakra in half and sent half inside Naruto, along with the tower tailed beasts, choosing to be sealed in their mutual Jinchuriki. This was due to their own word so protect the sage of six paths legacy. This along with the return of Kurama's Yank Chakra, made Naruto something of a new six paths Jinchuriki, as he had the power of all nine tailed beasts inside of him, along with half of the Hagamura Chakra mixed with his own. Kurama had claimed to Naruto despite not having the Rinnegan, Naruto was for all purposes the true next six paths, due to having the same philosophy as his creator, and the power to back it up. Naruto had spent a year after the war learning several jutsu from each of the five main elements, which he had an affinity for due to unlocking six path sage mode. He also learned how to use the flying rajin from the fourth hookage and second hookage notes, despite mostly using it for long distances, or to escape with his allies. His speed in his various modes were noted to be comparable or surpassing the raw speed of the flying rajin. One day Hagamura appeared to Naruto in a dream. Old man six paths how are you here? I thought Kakashi sensei said you disappeared when I fought Sasuke. Naruto said in surprise as he waved his hand in front of Hagamoro, expecting it to pass through him. Hagamoro swatted his hand away much to Naruto's surprise. The chakra left inside Madara's Yubi Jinchuriki body did indeed fade away, but you and Sasuke still have half of my chakra inside of you, so I am still able to manifest inside your heart. Hagamoro explained as Naruto looked skeptical. Not that I don't mind talking to you as who can say they got to talk to the sage of six paths himself Databeo. Naruto said with a nervous tick much to Hagamoro's amusement. But why are you here? Naruto asked looking Hagamoro in the eye. Naruto it is time for you to learn of your destiny. Hagamoro said with a kind smile seeing the confused look on Naruto's face. Destiny? I thought I helped save the ninja world from your mother and help ninjas get along. Naruto asked with a head tilt. Yes, that indeed was your destiny here, but you have a calling somewhere else. Hagamoro explained as Naruto's eyes narrowed. Wait it makes it sound like I have to leave the leaf Naruto exclaimed in anger. Yes, and not just the leaf, but the elemental nations altogether as this place you need to save is in another dimension altogether. Hagamoro said with a sigh seeing Naruto's furious expression. If it's in a new dimension make Sasuke do it. He has the Rinnegan that can travel through dimensions like your mother could. Or if you need to me do it have Sasuke pick me up so I can travel between the two worlds whenever I want. Naruto shouted in annoyance as Hagamoro gave a look of sympathy. Forgive me. I should not have said dimension and implied it could be traveled at will. Rather this new place is a different plane of existence altogether, so it will be a one-way trip only I can send you. Once you get there, there is no turning back. I do not know what will happen to your soul when you die, so it could really mean the end of your time here if you choose to go. Hagamoro explained bluntly choosing to be honest for Naruto's impossible choice. Naruto frowned and spoke what about the tailed beasts. What will happen to them if I choose to go to this new world? Naruto asked with a serious look. Before Hagamoro could speak Kurama manifested in the dream we will go wherever you go, since we are inside of you Naruto. Kurama spoke as Naruto beamed at his leaflong partner. What about the rest of you guys? What do you think I should do? Naruto asked as the other tailed beasts appeared in the dream. I don't care what you do as long as I get to show why Tanikas are better than foxes he. Shikaka chortled as Nartudo and Kurama sweat dropped. Naruto Khan I will support whatever actions you choose to do. In this new world you might find some new friends and perhaps a mate or two. Matatabi suggested with a feline grin as Naruto's face turned crimson as he sputtered in response. Kurama and Hagamura chuckled in good fun. Asobu and Seiken were content inside Naruto, so they didn't give much of an opening. Sun stated he would go anywhere as long as Naruto didn't let himself grow weaker in times of peace. Kakuo stated his powers were Naruto's since he proved himself during the war. Chimei cheerfully exclaimed with him seal Disney of Naruto they were lucky making Naruto laugh. Jairi explained due the way the seal worked regardless of what happened to be a Naruto, he would respawn at full strength wherever his siblings were so he was interested in the new world. Naruto closed his eyes and thought carefully, and when he opened them he looked resolute. Before he could talk Hagamura raised a hand and said I know you are wondering about your friends here, and the chakra inside Sasuke has already told him about the situation. Sasuke's message is knowing Naruto he will go where he can help others, so I will tell everyone to send their regards. Hagamura claimed as Naruto gave a dry smile in response. I guess he knows me well. Alright I will go to this new place. Naruto declared as the tailed beast sent a cheer in agreement. What do I need to know about this place and the problem it has? Naruto asked. This new place is called Earthland with the country you will be landing on called Fiori. The land is filled with an energy called Ethanano, which is similar to the natural energy here, but instead of Charka sustaining their bodies, mages have magic. 
Don't worry about the little things, but in the new land you will have all your powers and memories. But I will de-age a bit, so you will have time to adapt to the new powers to be given. Look out for Agnolojo and Zerf. Hagamoro explained quickly as he started during rapid hand motions with his staff creating a portal. The portal glowed as and started to pull in Naruto, and in the real world his body started to disappear. Wait old man six paths. How young will I be and who do I look for? Naruto yelled as he started to get sucked into the portal. Look for Mavis Vermillion. Hagamoro yelled as Naruto cursed before he disappeared. That was mean old man not telling him everything. Kurama said with disappointment. The portal could only stay open so long anyways I am sure Naruto won't mind going 13 years again. Hagamoro said with a smile as the tailed beasts disappeared in puff of smokes to their seals inside Naruto body. On Tenro Island, thank you Hagamoro for our savior. He looks like a real troublemaker when he growing and a real heartbreaker when he is all mature again t. Mavis Vermillion said with a giggle as she picked up a sleeping 12 year old Naruto Uzumaki. Mavis was a young looking blonde haired woman with wavy long hair, a white dress and pink and noticeable nose shoes. She had large green eyes, peach colored skin and sing like ornaments in her hair. Thus the era of the Naruto Uzumaki future Hokage was over, but the beginning of Naruto Uzumaki the Magic Ninja was about to begin. The year was X787, seven years before Lucy Herfilia would join Fairy Tail. Seven years later year X784. Man I can't believe it has been seven years since I arrived here Databeo. Naruto said with a grin as Mavis smiled fondly at him. Mavis being a spirit had not changed her appearance at all, but Naruto was now one year older than he was before he arrived in Earthland. He now stood a respectable 6 foot 5 with a very muscular build. His yellow blonde hair had gotten slightly longer, but retained his spikes, while his blue eyes still sparkled with mischief. His three whiskers on each on his cheeks, gave him a wild look that Mavis claimed would wow the girls, much to his embarrassment. These years together have been some of the happiest I have had ever Naruto. Mavis said with a smile, but with a sad look in her eyes as Naruto hugged her close. Hey this is goodbye okay? Naruto said soothingly as Mavis wrapped her arms around his waist, burying her face into his chest. It is time for the world to know the awesomeness of Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto exclaimed with a fist bump, making Mavis pull away and giggle. Sure Naruto, remember to say hi to the third master for me K. Mavis requested as Naruto looked nervous. Ah uh, how do I prove I talk to you as you are kind of a legend, and Makarov Singong to believe willy nilly a kid from nowhere, has actually met and spent time with the first master on Tenro Island Databeo. Naruto replied with a sigh. Mavis made a letter appear with magic, and put it in Naruto's hands and said this letter should explain everything, and if you need help, just tell him about fairy tale greatest secret. That will definitely convince my godson that we met. Mavis looked determined at that, and Naruto stared and nodded. Yeah you told me only the guild masters know about that, and it should be enough from him to at least hear me out, and hopefully believe me when I see I am from a different world. Naruto thought to himself as he started walking to the beach. Mavis walked alongside him till they reached the water edge. Well I guess this is goodbye for now Naruto. And remember don't tell anyone else besides Makarov about meeting me. Mavis reminded him with a pout making Naruto laugh. Right see you Mavis Chan, and here I come fairy tale. Naruto declared as he walked onto the water as if it was solid ground. After a moment he ran being little more than a blur, gently pushing the edge of the water away, as he ran toward Harjin Harbor, and then to Magnolia Town. You best Naruto. Mavis said before she walked back into the forest humming to herself. Meanwhile on an isolated part of Tenru Island unbeknownst to Naruto or Mavis Air slumbered partly awake but still sleep. Mavis who play a dangerous game brining someone like Naruto Uzumaki into our world. Zeref mused. Natsu my dear little brother please hurry while I still want to die. Zeref prayed to his beloved younger brother as he closed his eyes in slumber. As Naruto in his base form zoomed across the ocean, he was little more than a blur to the visible eye. What would take normally several hours or even days for a boat to reach Harjin Harbor from Tenru Island, he reached in a matter of minutes. TCH. Kurama grumbled from inside Naruto's mind. What's wrong Kurama? Naruto asked as A closed his eyes and let his body run on autopilot. If you were using my Charka or even Sage Mode, it would take you seconds to cross the ocean, and yet you are wasting time just running at your normal speed. Kurama grunted annoyed that Naruto was not using his Chakra. Come on Kurama. We are no rush besides there is no point using Chakra for a simple task like this. If I get hooked on using you guys powers and not adapt on my own, I am no better than Madara was. Constantly using his Sharingan like it was nothing and even using stolen powers like yours and old man first sage mode. Naruto declared making the tailed beast smile, knowing they picked the right host to follow. Naruto opened his eyes just as he landed on the harbor, and he looked surprised. What happened here? Naruto wondered as the port was almost completely destroyed with smoke still rising in the air. This feels like fire magic but more focus. Maybe it's fire dragon slayer magic that book Mavis Chan was showing me. Naruto mused to himself as he walked past the port to start walking towards Magnolia Town. Soon Naruto arrived in town with him feeling several forms of magic signatures gathered in what he assumed was the fairy tale guild hall. 
When he peeked through the door, he was kind of flabbergasted at what he saw. He was expecting a place where people gathered to find work in an orderly fashion, and yet what was inside was little more than a bunch of wizards brawling for no apparent reason. He saw a pink-haired man whose magic felt similar to the damage done to the harbor, arguing with a dark-haired man whose magic felt cold, making Naruto think of ice. There was a busty brown-haired girl with a bikini top chugging a massive barrel of alcohol. He looked around and saw pure chaos, as almost everyone in the guild hall was fighting someone else. He did take note of what appeared to be a talking blue cat, but his main focus was when he saw a beer bottle fly towards an unspecting white-haired woman in a red dress. Naruto thought I gotta help that abeo. As quickly moved and appeared in front of the white-haired woman with his arm around her back, as he spun them around and smashed the bottle against his other hand, effortlessly causing the shard to be destroyed as well. The guild instantly became quiet as the unknown blonde had saved Mira without anyone sensing his presence, and even holding Mira protectively, while Mira was blushing. Excuse me. Thank you for the save, but you can let go of me now. Mira said sweetly in a polite tone of voice while her cheeks reddened. She called help it as she found it was the sweetest thing the mystery man had saved her, and she could feel his muscles when she was held. She briefly looked into his blue eyes which she could easily get lost in, and saw his whiskers which to her was a perfect blend of cute and handsome. Marahan Strauss was a beautiful 19-year-old wizard long white hair that reached her lower back with a small ponytail in the front. She had bright blue eyes and a slender figure. She was well known for her curvy body cross fiori, due to modeling in bikini spread in Sorcerer Weekly. She was wearing a simple red dress that went well with her curves and large breasts, showing a view of her ample cleavage. She was constantly in top 10 wizards you would want to be your girlfriend articles with her being considered fairy tale drawing card. Oh sorry. My name is Naruto Yuzumaki nice to meet you. Naruto said with a grin as he let go of Mira before he turned red as well. He was annoyed at being so flustered, but to him, Marahi may have been the most beautiful woman he ever met. He had picked up a few Sorcerer Weekly magazines just to see what the culture was like, but he always remembered the white-haired model, and to his shock, he was meeting her in the flesh. He could see why she was considered Fiori's top model. No problem. My name is Marahan Strauss, but you can call me Mira like everyone else. Mira said with a gorgeous smile secretly rather pleased at Naruto's reaction. I am constantly told how beautiful I am, but Naruto-san's expression fills me with joy. Mira mused as she shook Naruto's hand. Okay Mira-chan. But please call me Naruto as I hate honorifics. Naruto declared making Mira giggle. Sure Naruto-kun if that is what you would prefer. Mira agreed happily as Naruto starting looking around not noticing how the entire guild was looking at him as shock. It was well known that Mira had a motherly personality and treated everyone like family, but she never used Kun on any guy she had met. But do you guys know what is happening? Natsu asked clueslessly as Happy the Blue Cat shook his head. Natsu Dragneel was well known as Salamander due to his Fire Dagon Slayer magic, and his tendency to destroy buildings on his missions. The guess is as good as my Natsu. Mira Cha is nice, but never this friendly with any guy, especially with someone she just met. Gray answered as he shook his head, not noticing his shirt and pants were gone again. Gray Fullbuster was an ice make wizard who had an unusual tendency to lose his clothes without warning. However the new guy is he is Kinda Cutie. Kana said with a wink as the guild side used to her flirty tactics. Kana Alberona was a busty brown-haired woman who wore a bikini top and capri pants. She used various forms of card magic. Nissan seems to finally found herself a real man. Elfman cried out with manly tears, much to the embarrassment of his younger sister standing next to him. Elfman Strauss was the younger brother of Marahan and older brother of Lasana. He was a tall dark-skinned man who used various forms of takeover beast magic to change his form into beasts he had subjugated. Bro? Lasana complained as she rolled her eyes. She took a close look at Naruto who was logging with an amused mirror, and had her eyes widen. It can't be. Could it be him who saved me two years ago? Lasana thought to herself as she remembered a blonde-haired man saving her and healing her, when she was wounded by her possessed brother. Lasana Strauss was the youngest sibling of Marahan and Elfman. She looked very similar to her older sister with the same white hair and blue eyes, but Lasana was taller despite being two years younger. A big difference was Lasana modest and petite measurements, while Mira curvaceous form had very large measurements. She practiced takeover animal soul magic. And it might be good luck we are getting two members on the same say. Lucy Chan and Naruto Sanha. I guess we will have to wait and see how they fight later on. Levy mused as she studied the two blondes. Levy McGarden was a young blue-haired woman with short and petite figure. She was wearing an orange mini dress that ended at her lower thighs and showed her shoulders. Levy used solid script magic for various effects based on what she wrote. Naruto Yuzumaki. I swear I heard that name before. Lucy said in frustration blushing when Naruto turned around to see who spoke his name. My name is Lucy by the way. She said realizing she hadn't introduced herself yet. Lucy blushed when she saw Naruto up close with her swearing, she heard his name before, and his face seeming familiar somehow. Naruto once again blushed when he saw Lucy up close. Despite not being a model in his opinion Lucy rivaled Mira in looks and once again took his breath away. 
Lucy had short blonde hair which reached her neck, and she kept style to the side with a small ponytail. She had large brown eyes and a very curvy form. Naruto's perverted side from his godfather noted that her breasts appeared to be larger than mirrors. Lucy wore a sleeveless blue and white shirt and a blue mini skirt with a set of keys and a brown whip hanging from her hips. She also wore knee-length boots, leaving part of her legs visible. Mira frowned when Naruto checked out Lucy, but smiled again when Naruto asked where the fairy tale guildmaster was. Makarov made an appearance in his giant form expecting a fight, but was shocked and relieved to see the guild hall relatively intact. What's this? Two new members. Welcome to fairy tale. Please ask Mira where you want your guild mark. Makarov said with a grin as the guild cheered. Lucy soon asked for a pink stamp on her right hand, but Naruto shook his head. Master Makarov before I join I need to talk to you in private about something. Naruto said urgently as Makarov saw the conviction in his eyes. Very well come to my office young Naruto and we can talk. Makarov said with a sigh. Naruto waved to Lucy and Mira before the door closed. So, Naruto my boy what can I help you with? Makarov asked with a smile as he sat down at his desk in his private office. Naruto sighed before speaking I might as well just say it. Seven years ago, I landed on Tenru Island and met Mavis Vermillion. Naruto said wincing when Makarov's eyes narrowed. Naruto, I don't know whether you are mental or have trouble speaking the truth, but that is a very serious claim, especially since Fairy Tail First Master has been gone for nearly 100 years. Makarov said sternly as he stared intently at the whiskered blonde who shuffled his feet in nervousness. Damn it I knew you wouldn't believe me, and I even told Mavis Chan that, but she thought this was somehow a good idea. Naruto ranted childishly as Makarov raised an eyebrow and a small smile seeing Naruto all flustered, made it almost seem like he was telling the truth. However, he knew Tenru Island had powerful magical barriers that only guild masters could penetrate. Look she told me to tell you this. I know about fairy tale greatest secret fairy heart or his codename Lumen Histor. Naruto said seriously as he watched Makarov gape in pure shock. Where did you hear about that name? Makarov asked with eyes widened as Naruto spoke off the greatest secret of fairy tale, and possibly the wall itself. From Mavis Chan of course. Naruto said with a grin as Makarov still looked shocked. She told me all about the start of fairy tale, her history with Zeref, and even what fairy heart can do. We had a lot of time to talk when I wasn't training on Tenru Island. Naruto explained fondly as Makarov tried to calm himself down at these revaluations. Naruto you speak of information nobody except someone told by the first master could know, and I would like to believe you, but it is still rather difficult to believe you somehow ended up on Tenru Island, and were trained personally by the first master herself. Makarov admitted wincing at Naruto's crestfallen expression. What do I die to prove without a doubt I am telling the truth? Naruto thought to himself. Naruto conned the letter. Matatabi suggested as Naruto's lit up. I forgot. Thanks for the save. Naruto thought happily getting a purr in response. Maybe you baby Naruto too much, especially since he was just recently your Jinchuki. Kurama grumbled as the other tailed beast snickered. That matters little Kurama. He had the one father believed in and we do too, besides Yujito Wolf liked him too as she had lived and perhaps dated him if he was a few years older. Matatabi mused as Kurama gave a look of annoyance. The Afu wolf liked him too. Chime added happily. He got the respect of all our Jinchuriki not just the female ones. Sun noted sending a suspicious glare at Chime and Matatabi who gave nervous laughs. While the tailed beasts were chatting inside Naruto, he was giving the letter created by Mavis to Makarov. Makarov quickly skimmed the letter before looking up at Naruto with a smile. I suppose you are telling the truth Naruto as this letter was specifically made with the first master light magic, and even included my relationship to her which I have never told anyone else. Makarov said with a happy smile. That you are her godson. Naruto mused as Makarov nodded in surprise before realizing, they must have talked about it as well. The letter just said before you arrived on Tenru Island you were far away in another dimension. Were you in Adolius? Makarov asked quietly as Naruto gave a confused look. Where? Naruto asked with a head tilt never hearing that term before. Never mind then. Could you please tell me about your history? Makarov asked looked curiously at Naruto. This planet is called Earthland right? Naruto began and seeing Naruto nod he continued. Well the world I lived it is called Earth, and we use a different energy source called Chakra to do Jutsu not at the Nanyo for magic. Naruto explained as he also told him about his mission for Hagamoro, the nature of Chakra, and the rough estimate of his life on Earth. That is fascinating. To think there is another world out there where people don't have magic, but another source of power that is completely different. It seems pretty surreal to be honest. Makarov admitted after a minute. Naruto laughed and said you're telling me. One minute I am 18 in bed, and next I wake up as a 12 year old in a new world. Makarov joined in the laughter, and after a minute Makarov grew sad and serious. Naruto how did you find the courage to leave your home forever for a place you never knew? Makarov asked softly not knowing how anyone could choose to leave everyone they loved behind, to help people they didn't know. Hey it wasn't a big deal or anything right? Naruto said with a nervous laugh not wanting pity, but he only saw empathy and sadness. Naruto you can be honest here and I won't judge you. 
Makarov said honestly making Naruto smile being reminded of his grandfather figure the third Hokage hears in Saratobi. I could do it because I knew I called live with myself knowing I walked away from people who needed my help. Besides Sasuke is still back at home, and I know he will keep that promise and keep the world over safe, will I keep the world over here safe? Naruto admitted with a few tears leaking until Makarov put his hand on Naruto's shoulder for comfort. I don't know what to say Naruto, but I promise you fairy tale will do everything it can to make this world as real a home as too original. Makarov declared getting a grin from Naruto. Besides thanks to coming here I got to meet Mavis-chan. She is like super smart and fun to hang out with. Naruto said excitedly as Makarov looked amused at seeing someone describing the first master so passionately. I never heard someone the first master quite like that, but how is Mavis-sama? Makarov asked with a smile. Mavis-chan was really bright and cheerful, but honestly I could tell she felt lonely a lot of the time. Naruto admitted with a frown. She called visited even if we called tell them about her body, she is more than welcome in the guild hall. Makarov said quietly looking down in some shame. I asked her once why she didn't come down here to at least talk to you, and she said because those of us who are dead, should be laid to rest not mingle with the living. No matter what I said afterwards she would not budge and I decided to drop the issue. Naruto said with a sigh as Makarov looked down with sadness. What did you do during the seven years before coming here? Makarov asked deciding to change the subject. Well the first year I adapted to using magic, and when I was 13 the fun stuff started to happening. Naruto began as he started chatting with Makarov. Meanwhile in the guild hall, I wonder what Blondie and the master are chatting about up there. Kana asked as she looked around her fellow guild members who shrugged. Your guess is as good as mine. Gray declared with his shirt still on for once. I know I heard the name Naruto Uzumaki somewhere, but where? Lucy thought to herself before she widened her eyes and shouted. I remember. Everyone looked at the new blonde in surprise at her outburst making her blush. Remember what Lucy Chan? Levy asked her new friend with a head tilt. Where I heard about Naruto from. Here check it out. Lucy said excitedly as she got a recent copy of Sorcerer Weekly out of her purse. Everyone crowded around Lucy as she read from the article called Where Is He Now? Hello everyone. Staying cool. This is Jason you cool reporter. Six years ago, all across the Ori was a buzz when rumors that the Magic Council had accepted a 13 year boy as S class wizard. That would make this mystery boy the youngest in the history of Fiori. Nobody from the Magic Council would confirm or deny the rumor, but somebody did slip the name Naruto Uzumaki. Are these rumors true or something somebody made up? We'll report or when I have more cool details. Lucy finished reading the article out loud. Wait is stirs of the youngest S-Class wizard. Natsu asked remembering his childhood friend famous Tatana title. No Urza was S-Class when she was 15, which 4 years ago if this Naruto really did become S-Class when he was 13, he would be younger still. Levy said in awe. The guild grew quiet as they took this in. I mean what are the odds of it happening we happen to find the mystery S-Class wizard wandering into our guild out of nowhere. Gray said skeptically as several members nodded in agreement. Wait listen. Naruto looks 19 now and 6 years ago he would be 13 which would match the rumors. Lucy insisted as Mira looked thoughtful. I wonder what Naruto had to do for the council to make him an S0 class wizard, if he really is the same one from the legend. Mira said out loud as everyone started thinking of their own theories. Meanwhile back in Makarov office. So, you had to fight a wizard saint and a high A class for your S class test. Makarov asked in shock and outrage. Sure, the test was supposed to test a person, but fighting wizard saints at least for fairy tale guild members was an outrage. Yes some blue haired guy called Jalal and some earth wizard called Jur. Naruto said nonchantly feeling oddly touched at the concern Makarov showed him like a real grandfather. How did anybody in the magic council actually even sanction this? Makarov asked still a but annoyed. He looked confused when Naruto smirked. Well you see the magic council really didn't want to give me a test, especially since I was only 13, but I insisted so this old geezer I think Orc decided to graciously offer me a shot by defeating two powerful wizards. He prob thought I would crap my pants and back out or lose, allowing the council to show of his power, but joke on him. Naruto said with a happy laugh as Makarov smirked imagining those old geezers at the magic council. When I beat them since Orc made a show of it, he had to honor it, but tried to hush it up, which seems to not work. Naruto said with a wide grin. Wait if you beat a wizard saint and a class wizard in combat, why didn't the council make you one? Makarov asked confused as he knew the council would want to try to keep Naruto under their thumb. Naruto expected a question like this, and answered Orc more or less, said he didn't trust a guildless wizard with the responsibilities of a wizard saint, but would reevaluate if I become part of legal guild. Naruto said with a huff. Old bastard. Naruto murmured getting a laugh from Makarov as they shared the same low opinion of the council. So how did you beat Jura and Jul? Makarov asked after a moment. Jura was strong but slow with his earth magic having times of recharge, so I just dodged and blasted him with my magic. Jello was pretty good at hand to hand, but he was no match for my magic, so knocked him out pretty quick. Naruto said with a shrug as Makarov raised an eyebrow. 
Sure, he could easily beat them both his experience, but for a 13-year-old boy who just entered their world just a year prior was incredible. Although Jal seemed odd. Almost like his power was not all there I guess. It is hard to explain. Naruto noted as Makarov nodded his head. What are your magics Naruto? Makarov asked wanting to know. Naruto sat with nervous hand on his head. Most of my magic is too destructive to show you indoors, but here is the one I used to become S-class Sky Devil Slayer magic. He formed an aura of blue wind around his right hand, making Makarov looked impressed. That is rather smooth control over wind it looks like it can be rather powerful. Makarov noted sensing its incredible power. The up is magic to fight demons. I punched Joel with it and used it in this form to cut through Jura Earth magic. Naruto said as he focused Sky Devil Holy Magic Sword Excalibur. Naruto said as the wind in his hand changed form. After a moment it turned into a four foot one handed sword with a white shining blade, blue aura surrounding it, dark blue guard and hilt, imagine as if Shidori was running through it, incredible so majestic and I can feel his power at close range. Makarov said in amazement as Naruto dispersed his magic. So, do I get to keep my class or do I have to take the test again? Naruto asked with a whine as Makarov looked thoughtful. If it was up to me the magic council and Mavis Sama words would be enough, but I am afraid most of the guild will not take too mildly to that decision. So I think a battle test would be best. Makarov said after thinking it over. It's cool with me. Just means I get to have some fun testing my strength against my guildmates. Naruto cheered making Makarov laugh. When it be? Naruto asked. Well, I think I guess after our S-class wizarders it comes back would be best. So she can witness your strength as well. Until then feel to do some jobs or just relax and get to know your new family better. Makarov declared as Naruto smiled. What to do next? Naruto thought as they went to the door. Master can I ask you something? Naruto asked as they walked to the door. What is it my boy? Makarov replied feeling little point not to answer what he wanted to know. Natsu is a fire dragon slayer, right? Naruto asked with Makarov nodding his head. I wonder if I am sky devil slayer do you think there is a sky dragon slayer counterpart? Naruto wondered as they both looked contemplative. Meanwhile at the cage shelter guild. A cho? The young girl sneezed as she rubbed her nose. Child you must take care of yourself. A snubby voice said in worry. Carla. I am sure I wasn't sick a minute ago. The young voice whined. Wendy perhaps someone was talking about you from far away. Carla mused as Wendy looked up. Wendy Marvel was a young 12 year old girl. She had petite figure, dark blue hair that she kept as two long pigtails reaching her waist. She had big brown eyes, sharper canine teeth from being a dragon slayer, and her gold mark on her right shoulder. She wore a simple green dress with a yellow and blue pattern. She used Sky Dragon Slayer magic both for combat and healing purposes. Carla was a white cat who could talk and fly using arrow magic spreading wings on her back when she chose to fly. She had pink ears and brown eyes. She wore a red skirt and yellow coat with a pink bow on her neck and tail. Maybe it's a future friend. Wendy asked hopefully as she didn't know anybody outside her guild besides a boy called Joel, but he left some years ago. Perhaps as long as not a boy who tries something with you. Carla warned making Wendy frown. Carla if you keep talking like that, I wouldn't be able to make friends if you scare them off like that. Wendy chided while Carla merely huffed. I am merely worried about you child. You are far too young to be dating or thinking about boys like that. Carla said soothingly as Wendy's face turned scarlet. Dating Wendy squeaked as she was still very much a young teen in heart and body. Anyways. Wendy said shaking off her embarrassment. Maybe this will be the lucky year where I make a lot of friends. Wendy asked hopefully. Maybe you shall. Carla said with a smile. Back in fairy tale, however that sky dragon slayer is hopefully they are not as destructive as Natsu. Makarov said with a shudder. Has that bad? Naruto asked with a sweat drop. You have no idea. Anyways I think this time you are properly introduced to your family. Makarov said not missing the smile on Naruto's face. Yosh, let's do this. Naruto said with a grin as they opened the door back to the guild hall. Everyone meet Naruto Uzumaki our second new member. Makarov shouted with many cheers coming back. Naruto smiled happy to see so much camaraderie among the guild. Let's get a drink. You're a real man. Fight me. Looks like we got another newbie to babysit. Were several of the cries Naruto picked up making him sweat drop especially at the last remark. Now Naruto go to Mir, and she will get you a fairy tale guild stamp to make it official. Makarov told him as he went to the bar to get a drink. Naruto walked to the center where Lucy and Mira grinned at him. Congratulations, Naruto-kun. Where would you like it? Mira asked him with a smile. Naruto rubbed his head in embarrassment of all the attention and asked Lucy where did you get yours. Making Lucy blink in surprise. On my right hand. She told him showing the pink mark as he thought to himself. Where do people typically get it? Naruto asked not wanting to stand out too much. Though the guild gets it anywhere they want, the shoulder, chest, hand anywhere. In matter of fact we have a member who has it on their tongue. Mira told him airily. Seeing him think hard she saw an opportunity. Naruto-kun can you guess where mine is? Mira asked with a smirk. Um, where Mira-chan? Naruto asked nervously seeing a beautiful but deadly smile on the model's face. 
Miro leaned and whispered in his ear in a hot seductive tone of voice on my thigh would you like a peek. Naruto turned bright red with a small trail of blood running down his nose, as Mir smirked in victory. The reactions in the guild were amusing at the very least to Mir. Makarov giggled like a schoolgirl at the scene, Kano whistled in appreciation, Romeo turned bright red, Wakapa started crying, Levi looked on in disbelief, Grey raised an eyebrow, Natsu shrugged, Lucy gritted her teeth in annoyance, Elfman started shouted how manly Naruto was, and Lasana looked at her big sister in shock. Marinitos truly flirted all, so could it possibly she really likes Naruto-san? Lysanna whispered to herself in disbelief. She was not blind to how popular her big sister was, or how uninterested she was to dating. Mir San is mature. Lucy thought dreamily while another voice screamed how dare she flirt with Naruto so blatantly. The I think on my hand is quite alright Mir Chan. Naruto said nervously once he got control of his perverted nature. Orange would be cool. Naruto added realizing he could choose the color. Whatever you say Naruto-kun. Mir said with a smile as she stamped an orange mark on his right hand. The girl cheered again before Natsu ran up to Naruto with a grin. Now you are part of fairy tale I wanna know something. Natsu said ignoring Lasana telling him he was rude. Are you the Naruto Uzumaki who became S-class at age 13? He asked loudly making the guild dead silent. Ah. Dot yeah. Naruto said with a nervous tousling of his hair in embarrassment. The guild converged on him in excitement and started talking all at once. Luckily Makarov whistled to get the guild attention. Listen up you brats. Yes Naruto is youngest S-class wizard, and I do plan to let him keep his class here as well. Makarov shouted as several members grumbled instantly. Mira, Levi, Lucy and Elfman seemed fine with it, but most other guilds started shouting how unfair it was. Come one gramps. How come he doesn't have to take the test like the rest of us? Natsu shouted with Grey, Wakaba and Kana Green. Naruto sighed and shouted look I get where you are coming from, so I agreed with Master to do a mock test when Erza comes back where I fight some of you guys, so you can see it was luck that got me this class okay. This got the guild to calm down, while Mir gave a look of sympathy for having to prove himself to the guild on his first day. So what kind of person is Urza anyways? Naruto asked curiously as he read on every member before he got the guild. Urza is my rival. Mir said WTH a furious stare making Naruto raise an eyebrow. Urza-san has beautiful red hair. Lasana added making Naruto smile. Urza is scary. Natsu claimed making Naruto look confused. Urza is kinda tough on us. Khan explained making Naruto a bit nervous, while Lucy had an imagine of a monster in her head. Asano walked up to Naruto much to his confusion. Ah can I help you? Naruto asked politely. Naruto-san were you the person who rescued me two years ago? Asana asked seriously looking at Naruto directly in the eyes. The girl grew quiet as Natsu's eyes widened, while Mira and Elfman looked urgently at Naruto. You noticed huh? Yeah I was there when you were injured, and I merely healed your body and made sure your siblings could find you. Naruto said trying to downgrade his contribution. Natsu did a quick bow and said thank you for saving Lasana life that day. I don't know if my life would be the same if she died that day. This made Lasana blush, while Naruto waved the thanks off with a grin. Naruto you are the greatest man ever. Elfman declared as A gave Naruto a bear hug that made the guild laugh. Ha he are welcome Elfman. Naruto said patting the sobbing man on the back until he let go. Thank you for saving my life and making sure my siblings weren't alone. Lasana said sincerely as she gave him a quick but warm hug. Naruto hugged her back and patted her on the head making her pout. Yar welcome. Naruto said simply but raised an eyebrow when she looked somewhat nervous. Naruto-san can I call you Naruto-nai? Lasana asked with her face looking down. This surprised Naruto as he never had siblings but made him happy as well. Of course Lasana if you want to, I won't stop you. Naruto said with a smile. Mir walked up to Naruto and simply buried herself in Naruto's arms in a tight hug, crying slightly thank you for saving my little sister life. Mir said in heartfelt cry. Mir-chan I will always try to help anyone I can. Naruto said softly as he hugged the white-haired beauty back. Mira pulled back after a bit and smiled at Naruto before Makarov told them to stop gawking. After the excitement of Naruto's announcement and the prospect of seeing him fight the guild organized themselves into various smaller groups. Naruto had decided to stay with the lovely Mira at the bar, much to the ire of certain males and females. Makarov was at a table by himself drinking his headaches away when the young Romeo went up to him. Master it's been a week since my dad went on his last job. Something must have gone wrong. Romeo insisted with a plea, while Naruto looked on with sympathy. Romeo your father Macau is a wizard and sometimes jobs take longer than expected. Makarov said patiently while setting down his mug. But master what if something went wrong? Can't you send someone to Mount Hakkab to check? Romeo insisted while Makarov sighed. Alright since we got some new members, I think Lucy should go on this mission as her first step into the life of a fairy tale wizard. Makarov declared while Lucy looked horrified. Me Lucy squeaked scared of going to a mountain by herself. Luckily for her Mira and Levi both had similar concerns. Master it would not be right to send Lucy on her mission alone. Mira chided while Levi nodded her head furiously. I suppose you are right. Makarov conceded making Lucy sigh in relief. 
Who wants to join Lucy on her first mission? Makarov yelled as several members looked interested. I will master. Naruto declared with Lucy looking awestruck, while Mira frowned. Naruto, I believe it is best if you do not go on this mission. Makarov said seriously while Naruto growled. Why not? Naruto asked with a glare. If you and Lucy make googly eyes at each other, it could compromise the mission. Makarov tried to explain seriously, but his pervy grin quickly dispelled the reason. Lucy and Naruto blushed and quickly looked away from each other, while the guild laughed heartedly at the new member's expense. Mira however tightened her fist and eyes darkened briefly, but returned to normal before anyone saw. Natsu, you brought Lucy to the guild, so you should be able to work well enough together, so you two should go on this mission. Makarov declared. Lucy looked disappointed but shrugged her shoulder while Natsu looked exited. Gramps you can count on me. I am all fired up. Natsu declared as he, Happy and Lucy went to the entrance. Bye Naruto. See you when I come back. Lucy said warmly with a wave. See you Lucy. Have fun. Naruto said waving back. Master what should I do until Urza comes back? Naruto asked referring to the test. And feel free to do a job while you wait, how about this one? Makarov replied handing him a flyer. Naruto looked at the quest with a grin and said perfect. I am heading out now. Wait I can't have my new members unescorted on their first jobs here, so you gotta take someone from the guild to go with you. Makarov told him. Alright who wants to go with me on an A-class job? Naruto said widely. Most of the guild looked eager at the prospect of an A-class reward and seeing the new guy in action. However, before anyone can volunteer Mira slid next to Naruto with a grin. I will be happy to Naruto-kun. I have some free time right now so how about it? Mira asked with a wink. Of course, I will be happy to take you with me Mira-chan. Naruto said with a massive smile as they left the guild together with not even a foot of space between them. Wow I don't think I have ever seen Mira-chan take a job with anyone except her siblings. How about you Lisanna? Does Mira really do jobs with anyone else? Grey commented in his boxers. No Mirani usually refuses to go on any jobs nowadays and simply models, but the one time she and Urza-san happened to meet up with was a disaster. Lasan acknowledged with a wince. Kana laughed and said Mira has it hard for the new guy. I can see why but Hass not really my type. Too bad Lucy also looked interested too. Kana was incredibly pleased at the drama making everyone sweat drop. That lucky devil. To take the hearts of two or guilds maidens. My heart is broken. Loke declared dramatically putting a hand on his heart for added effect. They probably won't date you if Naruto wasn't here. Levy told him dryly making his head collapse in defeat. Meanwhile on a train to West City, original town sucky name. So Naruto-kun what is the job we have to do? Mira asked with a cute head tilt. They were seating in a private booth with various sandwiches and drinks in front of them. Let's see. A-class job, wanted. Strong wizard or wizards to defeat demon terrorizing our town. Reward. 750,000 jewels, don't know if that is how much an A-class job worth, but I am making it in this story, Naruto told Mira reading off the job. I see so why did you tell master this was the perfect job for you? Mira asked Naruto curiously. Well I might as tell you since I will probably have to use some of my magic during my fight with Urza. Naruto told Mira making her perk up in interest. One of my magic is called Sky Devil Slayer Magic. Naruto told her making her blink in surprise. Devil Slayer Magic. Mira asked in surprise never hearing about this magic before. Yeah it is a magic especially good for defeating demons. Naruto declared making Mira smile. I guess this would be your perfect job then. Mira mused as Naruto grinned. By the way thank you for telling this Naruto-kun I appreciate it. Mira said softly as she leaned in and stroked one of Naruto's cheeks with her soft warm hand. Naruto's face turned scarlet as he stuttered while Mira smiled happily. The tailed beasts inside of him roared in laughter, while Matatabi purred her approval of Mira. After this moment was over Mira went back to her seat right next to Naruto, while they simply enjoyed each other's presence for the next several hours. At one point a 20-year-old man happened to walk by and instantly recognized Marahan Strauss fairy tales pinup model, and eagerly walked over to their private booth, Mira-chan. The man said in awe making Mira silently cringe, as he made no effort to hide his eyes, wandering down her red dress. This made Naruto frown which was ignored as the man's entire attention was on the white-haired model. You might have heard this a million times, but I am your biggest fan. I have read every one of your interviews for Sorcerer Weekly. The man blatantly said trying to flirt with Mira, as his eyes kept alternating between Mira's face and cleavage. Oh really? I have heard it a few times. I am flattered. Mira said with a nervous laugh as she thought interviews my ass. You only see me for my bikini spreads you damn pervert. In a chubby angry version of herself in her mind. Naruto growled softly as his new friend was being ogled like a piece of meat. He knew she probably got this a lot and was used to it, but still he felt anger at the creep for taking advantage of Mira Chan's nice nature. May I be so bold to ask for your paragraph lovely Mira Chan? The man said with a massive perverted smile as Mira sighed and nodded lifting her hand up for a pen and paper. Much to her surprise and Naruto anger, he instead grabbed her hand with his, and attempted to lay a kiss on it. Oh, this man is going to die now. 
He is trying to make a move like that on me, while Naruto-kun is watching Mira thought in anger as she got ready to punch the man through the wall. However, before anything could happen Naruto vanished and appeared right between them with his hand jolting the man's hands away from Mira's. He then pushed the man into the door of the cabin with a menacing glare. Look I would appreciate if you didn't flirt with my friend like that. Naruto said with a dark glare as the man glared right back not knowing who Naruto was. Look here kid. Go home before you get hurt. I don't know who you are, but this is between me and Mira-chan. The man said arrogantly ignoring the growl from Murahin. Cause next time I will break your wrist if you touch Mira-chan like that again. Naruto warned as he released a very small portion of his magic. This actually got Mira rather pleased seeing Naruto defend her, while the man crapped his pants. The man apologized and ran for his life out of the cabin the instant he was released. Murahin giggled and said Naruto-kun I had it handled. You didn't need to intervene. Just as Naruto was about to apologize Mira smiled a warm beautiful smile. She then said softly and with affection but thank you anyways. I get this a lot, but usually the men are not blatant enough to do anything besides try to take a peek or make lewd comments, so you thank you. This smile alone was enough to make it well for Naruto. He remembered how he thought Murahin was one of the most beautiful if not beautiful women he met, and with this smile she looked a lot prettier. He was even more pleased when she threw her arms around her neck burying her face into his shoulder in a tight hug. This feels right. Mira thought happily as she sighed feeling Naruto's strong arms wrap around her smaller frame. Mira-chan smells so nice. Naruto thought to himself as her hair was in his face, and her smelled her sweet vanilla scent flow right into his nose. Kids got it bad. Kurama said inside his seal as the other tailed beasts sailed their approval. I hope she is Naruto-kun's first mate. Matatabi claimed thinking Naruto would probably have at least a few girlfriends in his time in Earthland. This sweet moment went on for a few minutes until the announcement next stop West City. Came from the speakers. They reluctantly pulled apart with slight blushes, but smiles on both their faces. They excited the train with their luggage. West City was a relatively large city a few hours away from Magnolia Town. It was mostly full of civilians who traded their technology with the rest of Fiori, as they used capsules from turning things into portable carry-ons instead of magic. This is not a Dragon Ball Z crossover I just needed a town. A few minutes after arriving they found the mayor who was frazzled but grateful when both PFM greeted him. Thank goodness we got help so soon. Now who are you and how powerful are you both? The mayor asked urgently. I am Rahan Strauss from Fairy Tail, and I am an S-Class wizard. Mira declared smiling when he nodded and did not try to look her over. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I just joined Fairy Tail, but I am also an S-Class wizard. Naruto said with a grin as the mayor looked thoughtful before shrugging. We are desperate and we will take any help we can get. The major said pacing back and forth. What can you tell us about the demon terrorizing your city? Mira asked professionally putting her hands in front of her as Naruto listened intently. Of course. A few days ago, a green creature appeared in the mountain outside our town, and when our scouts disappeared, we started attacking it with guns, missiles and snipers, but nothing worked. Don't know if these weapons exist in the FT universe, but they do at least in the Sox City, the mayor said with a sigh as he continued. Then people started disappearing en masse with nothing but their clothes behind. The mayor said grimly as both wizards' eyes widened. Yeah, I believe it somehow eat the people whole or somehow disintegrates just their flesh. Please destroy the demon. It has already killed about 10,000 of our citizens, and if something doesn't stop it will destroy us all. The mayor pleaded on his knees. Don't worry we will beat this demon for you and restore the town back to normal. Naruto declared getting a grateful nod from the mayor and warm smile from Murahin. Can you tell us where the demon was sighted last? Mira asked, but before the mayor could answer Naruto beat him to the punch. It is about 5 kilometers outside the city waiting to pounce. Naruto noted while Mira and the mayor looked at him in amazement. Naruto-kun how can you sense it I mean I can't sense anything around here. Mira whispered to Naruto who smirked. Remember I slay demons so I can sense though even if they try to hide their magic power. Naruto whispered back as they exited the house. So, what's the game plan Naruto-kun? Mira asked Naruto as they walked in the direction where the demon was hiding. Simple Mira-chan you sit back and relax while I show you why my magic works in demons so well. Naruto said with a grin. Mira wanted to argue, but she felt she could trust Naruto, so she just nodded. After a few minutes they arrived where the demon popped out of the ground with a surprised look on its face. The demon in question looked like an insect-like humanoid creature. It had mostly green skin with patches of orange, black and different shades of green in certain areas. It stood on two feet with a large beetle-like wings on its back. It had a long green tail with a grey needle-like stinger at the end coming from its behind. It had two toes on each foot, an orange beak-like mouth, for its head it had two sections on its head going in a V-like formation. Imperfect cell from Dragon Ball Z. I see. Two wizards how delightful. You might be more fun than those pesky humans I had to face in the last couple of days. Truth be told I only appear when I am ready to hunt, but it's so much more fun when the humans scurry in fear not knowing when I will strike. It crackled as it swung its tail back and forth. Both Mera and Naruto looked at it with disgust as Naruto asked it, What are you and what did you do to the people here? 
Sal looked amused at the questions and decided to answer. I am a demon created by the Dark Wizard Seraph, and I am called Sel. Sel declared proudly as both wizards narrowed their eyes at the information. For those humans let just say they taste it rather tasty and leave it at that. Sel told them with a hungry smile. You ate them? Mira asked in horror as Naruto visibly restrained himself from attacking the monster just yet. What else do you think this tale is for? Sel mocked rhetorically. It makes digesting you humans so much easier when you are nothing but paste. Besides what other purpose do humans have besides being tools of food for us demons? Your species lives maybe a hundred years if you're lucky, why lust demons can live forever. Cell crackled as Mira looked disgusted at the vile creature. Demon I am going to kill you and stop you from hurting anyone else. Naruto declared stepping forward as Cell scoffed. You human will defeat me. I am a demon and you just a lowly human. Cell declared as it licked its lips. Now to see what a wizard tastes like. Cell yelled as it vanished and rushed Naruto trying to punch his skull in. So fast. Mira thought as she tried to yell out a wearing for Naruto. Only to see to her and Cell shock Naruto costly move his neck to the side, completely avoiding Cell's punch with a bored look. Is that all you got demon? Naruto taunted with a smirk as Cell growled. Cell sent a rapid barrage of punches, kicks and even sending its tail forward to jab Naruto only for Naruto to casually avoid each blow with no problem. This demon appears to be a class or higher, and yet Naruto-kun is dodging all its attack without trying. Maybe the rumors are end wrong about his strength. Mira thought analyzing the fight. Time to test out how this magic does against real demons. Naruto thought to himself tired of the cat and mouse. He summoned magic in his hand as Cell leapt back. Sky Devil Slayer push. Naruto shouted as he punched the air, and a blue wall of wind flew towards Cell. Cell growled as it summoned yellow demon magic, intending to overpower the blue wind, and pushed it forward. To his shock the blue wind went through its own magic and caused an explosion on impact. Mira held her dress down, not wanting to flash Naruto, as massive wind picked up from the explosion, as Naruto looked passively. The wind cleared as Cell panted having lost its right side of its body from the impact. I guess it's just about over demon. Naruto said with a side gathering magic power again in his hand, intending to finish the fight off once and for all. Much to his and Mira's shock with a shout Cell body grew new parts to replace the destroyed parts, with liquid dripping from the replaced parts, imagine Cell regenerating in Dragon Ball Z canon. Shock humans. I can heal any amount of damage and never die. I am the perfect being unlike you lowly humans. Cell declared with a smirk as Naruto narrowed his eyes. It seems like regeneration and the ability to consume other beings for more power, is the power bestowed on this demon by Zeref. Naruto mused remembering his conversation with Navis about Zeref wanting to die. Naruto ducked underneath Cell tail and punched Cell with Devil Slayer magic, sending it flying with a giant hole in his stomach. However, it got up slowly as the hole slowly healed. I need something a bit more powerful to finish it off. Naruto thought as he gathered magic in his hand again. You will never win human and when you are tired, I will consume you and your friend. Cell gasped as Naruto growled. Naruto vanished and appeared right in front of Cell with a blue ball in his hand, Sky Devil Slayer or Sengen. Naruto yelled as he pushed the small ball of doom into Cell, and vanished back to Mira's side. A massive explosion as Naruto shielded Mira with his body erupted as Cell's scream of pain got quieter, until the cloud vanished. All that was left of Cell was its head that was disinteresting. It cannot be. Me Cell a perfect creation of Seraph beaten by a mere human. Impossible. It yelled as body refused to regenerate due to the damage and unbeknownst to Naruto use of chakra. The Sky Devil Slayer or Sengen used both magic and chakra in its creation to increase its power and damage even more. In mere moments all that was left of the was dust which dissipated into the wind as Mira cheered and beamed at Naruto. You were amazing Naruto-kun. Mira praised as Naruto rubbed his cheek in nervousness. There was nothing. Naruto tried to claim modestly, while the tailed beasts grinned at their host's modest nature. They went back to the mayor house with the good news, and Naruto was raised as a hero, much to Mira's job and Naruto's embarrassment. The reward was doubled due to the prompt actions of Naruto, the lack of collateral damage, and sheer gratitude for Naruto saving the rest of their lives. Naruto tried to refuse the double reward, but the mayor's young daughter asked her big brother to take it, and he called and say no to the six-year-old child, much to Mira's amusement. The town was so grateful they even offered a fancy hotel room for two nights, and access to their hot springs before Naruto and Mira could leave. Once again, he tried to refuse politely, but Mira's puppy dog eyes made him relent. For the reward Naruto wanted to split his 50 50ths, 750,000 jewels each, but Mira refused only taking 300,000 as she did not fight, and was essentially just a guide. Naruto tried to protest, but Mira's sweet smile made him relent, making the tailed beasts call him whipped much to his annoyance. The major had sent a letter praising Naruto's effort to fairy tale, so Makarov demanded he stay there with Mira for another day, while they waited for Urza return back in the guild. That night Mare asked Naruto a question would you like to join me in the private mixed hot springs? She asked with a smile. Join you won't that mean you will be naked? Naruto sputtered as imagines of Mira model like body assaulted his mind. Yes. 
Most people are naked in hot springs, will that be a problem? Mira asked with an innocent head tilt as Naruto felt blood leak from his nose. I mean I just don't think I could be comfortable knowing you are that close without clothes Naruto murmured raining in his perverted nature as he didn't want to be called a pervert by Mira. Mira blinked in surprise as she knew about 80% of all males in Fiori would jump and beg for an opportunity like this, not that she would let them, but was touched as how considerate Naruto was, even though he clearly thought was attractive. Alright Naruto-kun you can wear some swim shorts, and I will wear something so you can share a bath together, without making it weird for you okay? Mira asked him sweetly as Naruto looked surprised and nodded. Weird for me. It should be weird for you. Having a naked boy next to your naked body and not expecting to be jumped in the water. Naruto thought as he brought some swim trunks from a swim shop in preparation for the night. Later that night Naruto got into the warm hot springs sighing when the water relaxed his tired muscles. I always did enjoy hot springs even when I was in Kahona. Too bad pervy sage used them mostly for his research. Naruto thought fondly. Warning. Fan service begins. Naruto-kun I am coming in now. Mira's voice said from the doorway as Naruto turned around and felt his jaw drop to the floor as he took in Mira's appearance. Gone was her tight but covering red dress that clung to her body, and now she wore an incredibly skimpy bikini and blue sandals and nothing else. He could see almost all of Mira's beautiful pale skin, and her bikini only hid her private parts. Her top was nothing more than a blue cloth that was linked together by a golden ring in the middle. It covered the lower part of her huge breasts and nipples, but left a tantalizing amount of cleavage he felt he could look at all day. He briefly looked down her entire midriff exposed due to the two-piece bikini shooing off her curvy hips and toned stomach. Then her bottom was a blue drape tied together on her right hip that ended at her upper thigh, protecting her maidenhood from sight, but exposed everything else. It made her hips and waist look even more sexy, and her legs went on for miles. He knew Mira was shorter than most of the guild members, but in pure view he swore her slim legs went on for miles. He also noticed her guild mark on her thigh, and how her thighs looked so good on her frame, he felt the urge to touch it and her other thigh as well. As Naruto could not help but look Mira over Mira giggled in excitement. She was pleased Naruto was eyeing her up as that meant she was attractive in her eyes, and not sisterly love type. I am glad you like this little setup. Does it look good on me? Mira asked as she did a quick spin as Naruto eyes wandered to her backside, watching her hips move. Look good. You look like the best woman ever. Naruto blurted out making Mira blush. Thank you Naruto-kun. Usually when I pose for Sorcerer Weekly the photographers are too professional to tell me their opinion, and it is always nice to look good. Mira told him as she put a hand on her hip tilted her body slightly and put her arms underneath her breasts. This had the intentional effect of striking a sexy pose, and making her large breasts even larger. After a minute of Naruto Day's look, she decided she teased enough so she walked into the hot spring and went in sighing in relief just a mere foot from Naruto. Naruto gulped as he could feel heat rush into his face from the close proximity, and resisted getting a nose bleed from the extremely attractive model next to his mostly naked body. As Naruto was trying not to get too excited Mira lips her lips as she took in his muscular form. She had felt it briefly when they hugged, but to see it up close made her feel rather warm inside. Mira tilted her head in confusion when Naruto tried looking away from her until she realized he thought if he looked at her in this state, he would be a pervert. Naruto kun you can look. If I was not comfortable with you looking at me like this, I would have told you by now. Mira told him calmly as he went back to looking at her face. Besides I suggested us being naked before so being in swimwear should totally be okay. Mira teased as Naruto's face went red at the thought of being naked in a hot spring with Mira. Naruto tried opening his mouth, but literally could not get over how attractive Mira was especially in this setting as Mira giggled. Maybe we should share bedclothes so we can get better acquainted. Mira asked suggestively as she winked at him. Naruto's nose bleed briefly before his healing factor quickly healed the damage, but she till saw the blood. Just kidding Naruto-kun. We have separate beds in one room. Mira assured him. Naruto sighed in relief and slight disappointment, as he felt a small part of him wanted to have no choice, but sleep next to Mira, if there was only one bed available. The more rational part of him realized if he slept next to Mira, he might not be able to control his urges and desires for the model who was a dear friend to him. Mira shocked him again when she walked next to him and laid her head into his shoulder, and making her covered breasts squish against his arm. He found the new position rather enjoyable as she whispered thank you for everything Naruto-kun. Good night. As she laid there for a few minutes as he enjoyed her body next to his while she enjoyed his naked wet muscles. She left the toe springs afterward and swung her hips as she walked away knowing his eyes were following her from behind. She picked up a towel and put it on which instantly clung with her naked body, and made her look nearly as good as it only covered the lower part of her thighs, and the lower part of her breasts. It left plenty of cleavage and legs to ogle as she walked away back to their shared room. Hands serve over, mostly. Naruto quickly changed into his PJs in the hot spring changing room, wanting to avoid any more embarrassing situations with Mira, and he entered the room. Much to his surprise and secret pleasure, she was still in her towel just casually drying her hair with another one. Mira-chan are you going to sleep in that Naruto yelped as Mira gave him an amused look. Of course not. 
Naruto-kun, there is no sense you leaving the room just because I am in it. Feel free to stay while I change, okay? Mira told him with a smile as she started to undo the knot on her towel covering her body. Naruto felt an eager part of wanting to watch Mira change in front of him, but the part of him who was chivalrous quickly took over as he ran out of the room. Too easy. Mira mused as she began to got undressed and her dress for real. Outside the room Naruto heart began hammering as he tried to control his breathing. Kid you miss your chance back there. She clearly wants you to make her yours. Kurama growled and laughed as the tailed beast slapped inside his head. Shut up. Mira-chan is not that kind of woman. Naruto yelled back at his tailed beasts much to their shock. Naruto-kun are you alright? We just joking of course. If you do not feel that way towards Marahin we won't force anything on you. It is not just about appearance it is about personality as well. Matatabi said in a soothing tone of voice. Ever since she got sealed inside Naruto she had a maternal role in Naruto's life. Kurama chalked it up being inside a female Jinchuki Yujido Nai for over 20 years before death. Kurama declared itself as having no gender, but it acted male as noticed by its fellow tailed beasts. Sorry I yelled at everybody. Naruto apologized when he realized they only had his best interests at heart. It's just I don't know how I feel towards Mir-chan. It is completely different to anything I felt before. She is so nice and pretty and wonderful, and yet I don't know how she feels about me. I don't want to rush into anything and have her hate me for being pushy. Naruto admitted with the tailed beast smiling at him for opening up. Naruto-kun I am changed. Mira's soft voice set through the door. Naruto opened the door and much to his relief she was in plain pink pajamas, which made her look normal compared to her sexy outfits, but still good looking. Good night we gotta take a train tomorrow by noon to get home. Mira reminded him with a gently smile as he climbed into his own bed. Good night Mira-chan. Naruto said simply as he fell asleep thinking about his complicated feelings towards Murahin. The next morning. They both acted like the night in the hot springs did not happen, and then they said goodbye to the town people. They boarded a train to Magnolia and sat in another private booth with a lock this time, as Naruto did not want another pervert to hit on Mira on the ride home. Naruto and Mira sat next to each other in silence before Naruto felt a warm pressure on his shoulder. He looked surprised when it was Murahin asleep on his shoulder with a peaceful and happy expression on her face. He smiled and just enjoyed her presence as he pulled her closer. Beautiful is all he said as she started her sleeping face for the next several hours. I guess he just needs time to decide for himself. Kurama declared as they could sense Naruto's serene emotions around Murahin. Murahin woke up just before they reached Magnolia as Naruto sent her a warm smile. She smiled back at him enjoying the best snap she ever took as they walked off towards the fairy tale guild hall together. Naruto and Mira arrived back into the guild to see Lucy angrily yelling at Natsu. I am done teaming up with you. Lucy yelled angrily at a confused Natsu. What did I do? Natsu yelled back. Let's see. You and Happy only took my on my last job because the flyer set wanted blonde maid. Lucy said indignantly while well, Happy snuckered. Well it will've been worth it if you let me burn that book so we can collect the reward. Natsu replied with Happy nodding his head. You idiots it didn't even matter as the client didn't have the money either way. Lucy yelled before she smirked although I did get another golden key, so I guess I can call it even. Lucy said as she lovingly stoked her new golden gate key. But did we miss something? Naruto asked confused as he sat down next to Lucy while Mira headed back to the bar. Naruto welcome back. Lucy said cheerfully while Natsu gave Naruto a fist bump. Yeah these idiots conned me into going on a 2 million jewel job after the Macau mission to destroy some book. However, the client was not rich at all, so all I got was a golden key. Lucy whined while Naruto raised an eyebrow. Well I think you would look beautiful as a maid Lucy. Naruto said without thinking as Lucy blushed. What? She asked looking at him strangely as Naruto stuttered getting a laugh from Natsu. Anyways Mira and I completed our job without a hitch, so it was all good on our end. Naruto said with a thumbs up as Natsu grinned at him. Good for you, but now I don't have enough for my 70,000 jewels rent this month. Lucy whined as Naruto looked sympathetic. He was about to offer to pay at least a month rent, due to the large amount he got on his A-class reward, when he heard a shout. Wait a minute. Where do you live Naruto? I mean we heard Lucy rents a place nearby, but we don't know you live. Kana yelled from across the guild. Naturally every eye went to Naruto who looked surprised. The yeah, man you should not hide where you live from us. Gray said with a disappointed tone of voice. Well I. Naruto started before getting interrupted. Eyes hold up. He just got here two days ago and already went with a job with Mir-san. Maybe he hasn't had the time to get a place of his own. Levy reasoned as several people did. Well maybe he can stay with Lucy as they are both newbies. Kana suggested suggestively wiggling her eyebrows as Lucy's face turned scarlet and Naruto tilted his head. Living with a boy my landlord would never allow that or would raise the price even higher. Lucy screamed before muttering and I can barely afford it now. Too bad the fairy tale dormitory is only for girls so that's out. Levy said with a pout. You could bunk with Natsu and Happy, but their place is a dump so it might be ideal. Gray noted with a superior smirk as Natsu butted heads with him. What did you say ice stripper? Natsu shouted. 
Several people made suggestions as Naruto eyebrow twitched from not getting a word in. Luckily Lasana noticed and spoke up. Guys I think Naruto Nai has something to say. This got everyone to quiet down as Naruto sighed and shouted okay I have a place in Magnolia, so I don't need a place to stay. Lucy however noticed something in his last phrasing. What do you mean have a place? Don't you mean renting a place? Lucy asked as it seemed like he owned property not renting like almost everyone here. Well I mean I have a house outside of Magnolia. Naruto clarified as everyone looked shocked at him. You mean built a house or like brought a piece of property? Lucky asked as she knew of some wizards who could use wood magic to make simple houses. I mean I put a down payment on a place a year ago, and it just finished getting built when I got here. Naruto said with a shrug. It was like only 1000, 000 joules for the down payment, and like 100,000 per month afterwards for the renovations and building permits and stuff. He said as the guild looked gobstopped at him. AN2. Are you telling me you spent over a million joules on a house that is yours? Lucy asked in pure shock anyone could have that kind of money lying around. Well yeah. I wanted a place of my own when I joined, so I made a plan and stuck to it. Naruto said plainly still not getting what the big deal was. Uh, Naruto-kun how did you have the money in the first place to get the property? Mira asked nicely as even she was curious. Look I have been S-class wizard for 6 years. Naruto started as he heard some grumbling whether you believe me or not. So, I have been of hundreds of jobs, and once you start saving you can get a lot for a purchase like a house of something. Naruto said wisely as Lucy looked awestruck at him. Could you actually save that kind of money for a house? Jet asked Levi who looked thoughtful. However, Wakaba was not convinced. Hey look. Even if you did hundreds of jobs like you claim ho, could you actually save enough jewels at once for a down payment of that size? Wakaba said in accusation ignoring the look sent by Makarov. It's easy when you're an orphan and you have to learn to live on your own. Naruto said quietly as the guild gasped at the new information. This got some guilty expressions on most of the guild for accusing Naruto of somehow being spoiled and looks of sympathy and sadness from Mera and Lucy. Makarov looked sadly at the blonde, remembering how Naruto skimmed over his life in the leaf. Look man I am sorry. We didn't mean to bringing up bad memories or anything. Gray said with a grimace as Naruto gave him a fake smile. It's okay. My parents died on the same day I was born so I don't have any real memories or anything to miss them by. Naruto said with a grin but sadness in his voice. This made the guild feel worse that Naruto was alone right from the beginning. Hey no biggie after the fight I will even let anyone come over to check the place out. Naruto said with a real smile as the guild was somewhat at ease again. Naruto you should not feel obliged to hide your pain from people who love you. Your family here will accept you for who you are no matter what I know it. Makarov thought as he started Naruto. Naruto grinned before he got on guard. I sense a powerful magic power coming towards the guild. Naruto noted as he looked at Makarov. Mira only smiled when she recognized the signature while Lucy looked uneasy. Don't worry my boy it's just another one of our S-class wizards coming back from her job. Makarov said with a chuckle as everybody heard loud boots clanking towards the guild hall. Bears I have become stronger fight me. Natsu shouted excitedly having recognized her scent. He ran towards the door with a fire dragon iron fist already and fired up. All the girl could see was a metal first hit Natsu through the door to the guild and send Natsu flying back into the guild hitting a table and getting knocked through it. Natsu that is no way to greet a member of the guild when she enters. A stern voice chides as she entered the guild. Naruto eyes widened as he briefly looked at the massive horn the woman was carrying, but then focused on the woman. It was a young beautiful scarlet haired woman whose hair went to her lower back. She had bite brown eyes, a pretty face and slender yet endowed figure. She wore an armored top hiding her chest, but left her arms exposed along with metal gauntlets on each hand. She wore a blue skirt that ended at her lower thighs, along with black boots that went to her knees. This was Urza Scarlet the second youngest wizard to reach S-class status, also famously known as Fairy Tales Titania. Naruto noticed her slender figure rivaling Mera and Lucy in beauty, but the thing that instantly drew his attention was shiny beautiful red hair that reminded him of his mother. Although he did admit overall Urza Scarlet did seem to put effort into her hair, than his mother did. Master I have returned. Urza said with a bow as she set her trophy on the floor of the guild hall with a loud clank. Nobody in the guild wanted to answer her as they feared she would start yelling at them for their flaws like usual. However, Naruto was the exception. You have beautiful red hair. Naruto said loudly as he looked wide-eyed at the S-class wizard. The girl turned to Naruto like he was both stupid and had a death wish. Oh? And you are. Urza asked politely with a raised eyebrow as she turned her head towards the new blonde wizard. Naruto felt him get flustered when Urza's attention was on him so he could not answer. Luckily Makarov answered for him. Urza welcome back. This one of our guild members Naruto Uzumaki. He is our newest S-class wizard. Makarov introduced cheerfully as Naruto awkwardly waved at her. Urza fell confusion when she heard a majority of the guild grumble when Makarov mentioned S-class. S-class. I do not believe I was gone long enough for another S-class trial to pass Urza asked with confusion on how they got a new S-class wizard in the short time she was gone from the guild. I will explain inside my dear. Makarov told her as they walked into his office. 
As soon as the door closed the guild started talking loudly at the embarrassed blonde wizard. What are you doing? There's a hate getting flirted with. Naruto Khan you should explain yourself. If you have guts kid I will give you that one. Haha youth these days have no filter control. We're just some of the voices he managed to hear among the talking. Bloke surprisingly decided to defend Naruto. Guys I understand Naruto's position. As the girl gave him a weird look. You do? Lucy gave Loki a dry look while she looked at Naruto's sheepish face with a raised eyebrow. Of course, I do. I once tried to catch Lady Erz's heart once before, and sadly I failed in my conquest as well. Harsh fate decided to give me her curl hand. Lok said dramatically as Naruto looked surprised. It means he flirted with Urza once, so she punched him through the guild in response. Kana explained which dropped Naruto's respect for Loki down. Look I was not flirting. Naruto yelled over the guild and they turned to him with a dry look. It just her hair reminds me of my mom's. Naruto said softly as he looked down at the floor. This got the girl quiet and surprised as Lucy said softly, you mom. With great sympathy. Yeah my mom Kashina Yuzumaki. Naruto said making a quick shadow clone that took the resemblance of his later mother. And my dad Minato Namikis. He declared as another shadow clone popped up to his first one. Nobody realized he hadn't used magic as they were too transfixed at the appearance of Naruto's parents. Naruto looks like his dad. Happy noted their near identical appearances. Naruto's mom looks beautiful, Lucy added as Naruto just stared at his transformed clones with a sad expression. Everyone else looked away as they thought Naruto must have great longing for his parents if they died the same day he was born. Master is it true about his parents? Urza whispered quietly from the slightly open office door. Yes, it is. He never knew a parent's love, so that is why I suspect he is so empathetic and happy all the time. He tries to fill the gap as best they can with everyone he meets. In time I hope he can see the guild as family as well as that is what this guild was made for. A place for people who don't have family to find them with each other. Makarov said wistfully. There's a stare down at Naruto with newfound kinship as she grew up an orphan as well. They retreated back into the door as not to appear to be eavesdropping. After a minute both shadow clones disappeared as Naruto sighed. Levi however had a dying question. Naruto if your parents were married why is your and her name Yuzumaki not your father's last name? She asked with a confused look. The rest of the guild looked up in realization. Much to their surprise Naruto chuckled and said my dad may have been the man, but from what I hear my mom bossed him around. I heard she refused to change her identity to meet the norm, and I was named after her because it was my mother's wish. This got nods of respect from every female, while the guys trembled, wondering what kind of woman had that much control over her husband. AN3. Urza and Makarov decided to open the door loudly, as if they just finished an important discussion. Urza walked up to Naruto and looked at Lucy as well. Hello Lucy and Naruto I am Urza Scarlet nice to meet you. Urza with a nod and warm smile, making them both a bit more at ease with the powerful wizard. Master has told me you both joined two days ago, so on behalf of the Master welcome to Fairy Tale. She declared as the guild cheered. Now Master has told me of Naruto's S-class status. Normally I would adhere to the Magic Council decision in Master, but Master tells me a lot of members here disagree with this status unproven. She asked with a sigh as the guild looked sheepish and away from her. I also wish to see how strong Naruto is, so I accept the challenge of Naruto Uzumaki against me. It shall of course be not a fight taught the death by rather a test of skill and power. She declared as the guild roared in excitement as Naruto looked eagerly at Urza, ready to test himself. The entire guild cheered as they went outside of the guild to a large empty outside arena for the fight between Naruto and Urza. Naruto and Urza stood 20 feet from each other, ready to begin this prompt to test. However, before any fighting could begin Kana yelled place your bets on the winner of this fight. Naruto had dropped as he watched his new guild mates come up the brunette with fistfuls of jewels to place on bets. Does Kana do this of all fights or this one special? Naruto asked Urza dryly. Urza raised an eyebrow and said she does this for anything she thinks can make a profit. I feel it is fine to place friendly bets between family. Urza shrugged her shoulders. Naruto turned back to Kana only to see a large lacrima screen, showing that only 4 people voted for him to win, while 44 bet on Urza to win, with certain subsets on how fast it would take, what the hell databeo. You all think I will lose this fight, Naruto shouted to the guild who gave him a wave in response. It turns out Mira and her siblings bet on him along with Lucy. Everyone else besides Makarov, Levi, and Riedis had bet on Urza. Sorry Blondie, but the crowd has picked their favorite. Kana told him in a fake sad expression as Naruto growled. Don't worry what other people think of you Naruto and just enjoy the fight. Urza told him as she equipped a single sword in her right hand. Let the fight begin. Makarov announced as the girl cheered. Here she comes. Naruto thought as he watched Urza quickly cross the distance in a few seconds swiping it in with a quick slash. Naruto stepped back letting the blade pass him only to move his head when she changed the slash into a slice at his head. This continued with the pattern of Urza continuously attacking him with her sword, with Naruto dodging each slash with ease. On the sidelines. 
The girl was a bit shocked Naruto was countering Urza with her sword while he was unarmed, except for Mir, who saw him go faster against Cell, and Nakarov who remembered Naruto's stories about his life before. Naruto is doing pretty good, isn't he? Lucy asked in excitement watching the two S-class wizards dance around each other in battle. Grey and Natsu scoffed with Grey claiming new guy isn't bad, but Urza is just getting started. Jet and Droy nodded while Levi looked thoughtfully at Naruto. Naruto-kun is just getting started too. Mir informed the guild as Natsu noticed something. Wait a minute. Why is neither of using magic yet? This isn't how a fight's supposed to be. Natsu said loudly as the guild looked at Natsu weirdly. Natsu. If S-class wizards just fought like you suggested then they would not deserve to be S-class. Makarov lectured as everyone turned to him. What is that supposed to mean Gramps? Grey asked with some surprise. Makarov waved to Mira to explain and she did with a smile. Part of being S-class is being able to read the situation and plan during a fight. Naruto Khan and Urza are just testing the waters right now and seeing how the other is going to react. Mira explained as several members looked at Naruto with more respect. Something is happening. Lucy said with surprise as the guild went back to the fight. Urza had changed tactics and had tried to stab Naruto in the foot to immobilize him, however Naruto had read her move, so he stepped back an inch, causing the sword to get stuck in the ground instead. Naruto thought Rikrip. As he summoned a plain-looking CHOKUTO Sasu Part 2 sword into his right hand, Naruto swung his blade at Urza's left shoulder now, while Urza's other hand was occupied with her sword which was in the ground. Much to his surprise though she had recouped another sword in her left hand and quickly blocked his strike. She also let go of the sword in the ground to recruit another sword, and began a barrage with her two swords at Naruto. Naruto began to feel the pressure of trying to defend against two swords, while only having one to block an attack with. Naruto could still block her assaults, but could no longer find openings to attack, while Urza was getting impressed that Naruto was keeping up with her in swordplay. It looks like Naruto is on the defensive now. Makarov noted while Natsu and Grey were cheering Urza on. Yeah but looks like Urza is having a hard time even fighting seriously getting any attacks through. Mira noted back as the guild watched this sword fight continue. I think this is the first time I have ever seen anyone keep with Urza when she is fighting at this level in a sword fight. Grey acknowledged as Naruto avoided another blow while parrying another. So, Naruto uses recruit magic. Lucy questioned, but Mira shook her head. No Lucy, he merely uses to get a weapon on hand not as part of his main like Urza does. Mira told the younger girl. You can do it Naruto Nai. Lasana thought believing in her older brother figure. Naruto blocked a double sword strike, but failed to see the kick in time, so he got sent flying back. He flipped in mid-air and landed on his fight as he had fought enemies with more physical strength, but he was impressed. Urza. You are something else you know that. Naruto told her with a grin as Urza nodded her head in respect. You too Naruto. I don't believe I have had a fight like this ever. Urza admitted ignoring Natsu's yells that their fights were more intense than this. Hmm. <laughs> this girl may be able to give the Ichiha brat a run for his money if he didn't use his Sharingan. Kurama noted with a grumble as the tailed beasts watched the fight from within Naruto. Wait Shuringen. That's it. Jayuki said with a look of realization. Naruto do what I showed you and you can get by her swordmanship. Jayuki told Naruto who widened his eyes before a smile appeared. I guess I have no choice. Let's see you handle this one Urza. Naruto announced as the Chikudo he used disappeared. Then seven one-handed blades with no guards appeared in the air. Much to everyone's shock Naruto twisted his body, so the blades landed in the joints as Naruto balanced on one foot. Acrobat. Naruto thought, seven sword style used by Killer B. What is that stance? Loki yelled bewildered at how anyone could fight like that. It looks stupid. Natsu yelled as the rest awed the guild including Mira and Makarov. Edo music fairy tale main theme Tenro Island version. Here he comes. Urza said as she put her two swords out in front of her in a guard format. She saw Naruto jump with the swords in his joints, but she was surprised to see him spin and somersault in midair, almost like a buzzsaw. She blocked his assault, but her shock still felt two small cuts appear on each of her arms. She got cut grey asked in shock. But her guard was perfect. Levi said watching Urza appear to block the assault. Naruto Kun sure is full of surprises huh? Mira said with a surprise as her dear friend started to overpower her rival. What is with those movements? Natsu yelled in frustration. I can't get a red on him at all right now. Grey said with surprise. Clang. 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 Rang out the collisions of blades as Naruto and Urza's fight raged on. Naruto kept the pressure up with Urza unable to exploit an opening, but her own skill allowed her to fend off the worst of the cuts. Urza began to get frustrated as no matter how much she blocked, she still ended up getting cut, when he adjusted his body slightly, his blade movements got through her guard. She decided to try offensive by slashing her swords at Naruto who jumped. Then he started throwing swords at Urza who backflipped away while Naruto kept throwing swords at her. He reached the ground and picked up his swords back into his unique stance. That Urza sure is quite a swordsman. She doesn't have the perception of the Shuringen, but she is blocking almost as well as Itachi Chiha and Sasuke Chiha. Jayuki praise. 
Naruto Khan is not going full out trying to avoid fatal strikes, so his movements are a bit ragged compared to if he was using this style on somebody like Madar. Madatabi noted seeing how stiff Naruto appeared to be. Naruto's continuous strikes managed to break Urza's swords from countless hits, so Urza was now open. Naruto decided to try to end this in one blow, so he slammed the swords into Urza's form, only to see a light. He felt himself hit something hard, and when the light cleared Urza was in her adamantine armor and absorbed the blow. The force of Naruto's swing managed to dent the armor, but in return the swords themselves broke as both Naruto and Urza panted. The adamantine armor gave her full study armor all over her body except her face. It also gave her two shields in front of her arms. She had used both shields to brace for the impact, and as a result the shield itself looked heavily damaged. Music end. What kind of armor is that? Lucy asked in shock. It's called her adamantine armor, and it is her strongest defense. Happy claimed. Phew I thought it might be for Urza. Mikao said with a sigh of relief. Nah. Sure the kid is good, but this is Urza we are talking about. Wakaba claimed confidently, but he was sweating inside as well. To think Urza would have to go this far means Naruto drove her to a corner. If she hadn't equipped at the last moment it would have been all over. Makarov thought critically as the guild cheered Urza on. Wow you got me. Naruto said with a chuckle as he relaxed his muscles, causing the broken swords to fall on the ground with a clang. He had hundreds of copies of his weapons, but he never expected them to break in this kind of fight. Equip. Urza thought as she took this moment to re-equip into her flight armor, and in the same instant appeared right behind Naruto with both swords in mid-swing. This will end it. Urza shouted as her swords were set to disable Naruto and finish the fight in one swing. Naruto. Kurama shouted with some worry. Sure, the damage would heal, but if he got hit at this range, he would lose the fight. Damn it no time to block or dodge. Naruto thought as the blades edged closer to his back. Clang. Rang out Urza's blades as a dust cloud appeared from the impact obscuring both Urza and Naruto from the crowd. Well the kid did good but looks like Urza won. Wakaba said with a chuckle as the guild members grew money signs in their eyes. Hey pay up Urza won. Natsu whined as Mira looked intently at the dust cloud. It's not over yet. Mira said simply as she continued to look at the dust. Mira said I wanted Naruto to win, but there is no way he could be conscious after that right? Lucy asked. Here he comes. Makarov said as to the shock of the guild a burst of air cleared the dust cloud. This revealed to the shock of the guild Urza struggling with her two swords against Naruto. The swords were about six inches from piecing Naruto with Urza seemingly unable to cross the distance. No way. Mikao said with his mouth opened in shock. Naruto is still and it looks shouted in surprise. Naruto is a real man. I knew it. Elfman cried out in happiness. Naruto Nai is really amazing. Lasana said putting a hand over her pumping heart. What's wrong with Urza? Why can't she cut him? Natsu asked loudly. It's almost like the wind itself is protecting him. Lucy said in awe. There's a grunted as she could not break whatever was around Naruto, no matter how much strength she put in her swords. Naruto grinned as he spun around delivering a kick to a surprised Urza. Urza got sent flying with a shout of pain, as she eventually used her swords to slow down her pushback and fall on the ground with a thud. Looks like you weren't going all out either huh Naruto. Urza asked with reset and a smile as she huffed trying to catch my breath. Damn you are good Urza. Naruto praised as he stood up stretching his shoulders and arms. Never thought I would have to use my magic like this, but you got me to reveal it so congratulations. Naruto told her as the guild leaned in to hear what his magic was. My main magic is called Sky Devil Slayer Magic. Naruto announced as the guild looked shocked and confused at the unusual name for magic. Devil Slayer Magic. Urza asked as she stood up. The yeah, magic designed to defeat demons. Naruto explained as the guild whispered excitedly at the reveal finally of Naruto magic. The only one who did not look shocked was Mira which Lucy noted. Mira said did you know about his magic already? Lucy asked in surprise. Yup. He told me on our job together and I even got to see him slay a demon with it. Mira chirped in happiness. As everyone was admiring Naruto's magic Grey tightened his fist and his eyes grew dark for a minute. Magic to kill demons. Grey thought of his hated enemy Deloria. If someone used this magic order have Grey thought resentfully as his teacher died to seal away a demon when there was magic specifically made for killing them. So, what was it I hit back there? Urza asked remembering hitting something solid instead of Naruto with her flight armor. Oh that. It is my Sky Devil Slayer Wind Armor. Naruto announced as he pointed to the space in front of him. Sure enough now that they focused they could faintly see blue wind surrounding Naruto almost like armor. I don't like using it to be honest as it's not a perfect offense. Naruto admitted sheepishly. Not like my Sand HMPH. Shikaku bragged as Naruto chuckled. Yup nothing like yours. Naruto agreed mentally. Naruto finally got a good look at Urza's flight armor, and he admitted she really was a looker when she didn't cover her chest with steel armor. The armor itself involved making Urza hair unbound and flowing to her back. She had two earmuffs on her head that looked like cheetah ears, a white neck choker, with a revealing fur-lined bra, exposing a large portion of her ample chest. On her left arm there was cheetah armor on her shoulder and the middle of her arm, while her right arm had a blue arm warmer. 
She wore very small black short shorts that had a bell connecting the shorts to a green cape that she wore from her hips to her legs. Part of her thighs were exposed from the bottom of the black short shorts to the middle of her thighs, where she wore blue stockings till her toes. She also wore white boots of different legs on each foot. This armor greatly enhanced Urza's speed. At a music fairy tale lightning flame dragon roaring, Urza smirked when she saw the blush of her armor. Naruto had equipped his Shikudo in his right hand, as he gave her a come here gesture with his hand. She then tried to attack him again in a burst of speed however she quickly learned that without the surprise factor, she was no longer quicker than Naruto in speed even in her flight armor. Naruto easily blocked her strikes as he continued to parry and strike with his singed blade against her two swords. With Naruto beginning to have the edges Urza started having to step back to avoid some for Naruto's blows. Urza is getting pushed back again even in her flight armor. Grey said in awe. What is going on? Urza was kicking his ass a second ago. Natsu asked Makarov who chuckled. Natsu Urza caught him off guard, but no he is fighting seriously, so Urza is the one getting her ass kicked now. Makarov explained as the members who bet against Naruto started to become nervous. I can't beat him in speed or skill now. Urza thought urgently nearly avoiding a strike to the head. I guess it comes down to sheer numbers now. Urza thought as she leapt back several feet. Equip. Urza shouted as a flash of light appeared around her. Heaven's wheel. Urza shouted as she appeared in new armor once again. The heaven's wheel armor essentially gave Urza a look of a deadly angel. She wore silver ears behind her back, two large silver wings from her back and small metal choker on her neck. She wore a very small silver breastplate that exposed the top half of her breasts and most of her stomach and hips. She then wore a silver skirt that went all the way to her ankles, along with silver boots. She wore silver armor all across both of her arms. This armor was mainly for multiple weapons for multiple enemies. She then summoned several dozen different swords and weapons in front of her, as she jumped and flew a dozen feet in the air. The weapons followed her through the power of telekinesis, as she pointed them down aiming at Naruto who only raised an eyebrow. Isn't this a bit much for a friendly fight? Lucy asked freaking out at all the weapons. Just right Gramps. Naruto is strong, but this is getting dangerous. Grey warned Makair who looked intently at the fight. Tell Urza to call it off now. Natsu yelled as the girl kept shouting. Urza then made the swords convene on Naruto's location with a mental command. This caused a massive dust cloud from the impact as she floated down. The girl freaked out worrying about the worst, but they heard a sound coming from the dust. Clap. Clap. Rang out as Naruto's voice also came from the smoke. Very impressive Urza. Here I gave you a flower as a reward. Naruto said childishly as he used sky devil magic to clear the dust. It revealed Naruto's sword jabbed in the ground with all of Urza's sword around him in a perfect formation, forming a flower with not even one cutting Naruto. Think FT episode 312 or possibly 313 Irene deflecting Urza's attack. Battle music ends. I would be shocked, but nothing about Naruto can surprise me anymore. Lucy sighed in relief. I know what you mean. Naruto Nai seems to be stronger and stronger every second. Masana agreed with a grin. To think this is just the tip of the iceberg if I am right about Naruto. Makarov thought with pride. Nicely done Naruto. Kurama praised with the other beasts also shouting their praise. Naruto had used his Wunchikudo to hit the blades as they came towards him every so slightly to divert their paths that make them hit around him in a perfect formation. Naruto then used Sky Devil Magic to destroy the swords as Urza looked down. New battle music the last magic FT soundtrack. Urza. Prepare your best armor and we will end this in the next shot okay. Naruto shouted to Urza swinging his sword back and forth. It was now imbued with Sky Devil Slayer Magic for his final attack. Urza nodded and recouped one last time. She now was in her purgatory armor. This armor like her adamantine armor was covering and unlike most of her others not particular sexual looking. She wore black armor and a black mace. This granted her more strength for heart attacks. She considered this her most power armor she had. Naruto. Urza shouted swinging her mace with all her strength. Here goes. Naruto said quietly as he swung his sword in front of him. Sky Devil Slayer Secret Art. Wind Scar. Naruto shouted as a burst of yellow, Sky Devil Slayer magic is not always blue, it has different colors, Sky Devil Slayer magic came from his sword, and rushed towards Urza. Urza sued her mace to block and grunted, but after a second the energy broke through her mace and smashed into her breaking her armor. Ah. Urza screamed in pain, but to her relief the attack split around her after she fell to the ground in defeat. To the shock and amazement of the guild the attack went on the several meters before it went into TH chair, and it being truly dissipated. The ground now had a scar from day attack. Winner Naruto Uzumaki. Makarov said with pride as the girl burst into cheers. When Urza's purgatory armor was destroyed luckily she automatically recouped back into her normal skirt and armor, so she was not naked when she finally collapsed. The winner is Naruto Uzumaki. Kana sputtered thinking of the bets she would lose as she had bet on Urza as well. Several members were still trying to pick up their jaws from the ground from the upset. Urza was considered on par if not stronger, than Mira with only Laxus, Gilderts and the master himself being stronger inside the guild. Yet this newcomer who was rumored to S-class, had beaten her with little to no injuries. 
Misigan was also another S-class wizard, but since nobody had even seen his face, it was rather difficult for the guild to rank him in strength. Nobody was happier than Lucy at Naruto's victory. Not only did the guy she liked win, she had won enough money for several months of rent. Take that for betting against Naruto just because he was new. Lucy thought victoriously thinking her new friend Levy was right to stay out of it, instead of betting for the simple sake of betting. Most of the guild was now weeping at their lost bets on what they thought was going to be a sure win for them. Elfman and Lasanna were happier their new brother won more than the money, while Mira being fairly wealthy didn't care at all about the bet. Naruto offered the tireders a hand which the Redeed graciously accepted with a smile. Thanks for the fight. Naruto told her with a grin. It was indeed an amazing spar Naruto. Urza replied warmly as the guild walked towards the S-class wizards. Makarov coughed getting the guild's attention. Listen up you brats. Makarov yelled. Naruto fairly beat Urs in a spar, thus proving without a doubt his S-class ranking. Makarov announced as the guild cheered although to vary degrees of enthusiasm. However, for the rest of the guild I will have to share my disappointment. Makarov said with a sigh as everyone looked shocked. Naruto frowned having an idea where this was going well Urza stayed quiet. Let me make this clear. Whether someone is S-class or not is not a popularity contest. Makarov announced sternly as everyone looked confused at him. What the hell are you talking about Gramps? Natsu shouted back as Happy shouted as well. What masters means this fight should not have been necessary. Urza responded with a glare making several wizards flinch. What do you mean Urza? Levy asked politely with a confused look. Master decides who becomes S-class in our guild based on their merit and his decisions not based on whether the guild members like the wizard or not. Urza explained as Makarov nodded. My mind was made up to let Naruto keep his rank before any fight was sanctioned. I merely indulged this fight because Naruto agreed to it as a way to get the guild to trust him. Makarov said coolly as the guild looked down in guilt. Next time you youngsters question my decisions you better have a good reason for it. Makarov yelled as almost everyone in the guild flinched. That's enough master. I think they get the point. Naruto said with a chuckle as the guild looked at him in surprise. Wait you're not mad we mistrusted you and wanted Urza to win. Natsu said bluntly as everyone else gave him an incredulous look for his lack of tact. Of course not. Why would I be mad? Naruto asked with a shrug. I mean you guys grew up with Urza right I know wherever you are you have to prove yourself. Naruto said nonchalantly as he flashed the guild a warm smile. This made the respect for the S-class blonde skyrocket at his cool attitude and friendly nature. Well put Naruto. Urza praised as Makarov nodded his head. Naruto you held back in our fight correct? Urza asked Naruto as most of the guild looked gobstopped at the knowledge. Well yeah. It was just a spar, right? You held back too right Urza? Naruto asked in a confused tone of voice. You got to be kidding me Naruto actually held back and still beat Urza decisively. How powerful is this guy? Kana thought to herself in disbelief. No, I fought as hard as I could, and you still beat me even at my best. Urza humbly admitted as she smiled in defeat. Well there will always be somebody stronger than you. Nobody can claim to be the best as there will always be people stronger than we are now that makes us strive to be better. Naruto remarked wisely as some of the guild looked at him in awe at his knowledge. Naruto was secretly thinking back in his previous world he always continued to fight stronger and stronger opponents, no matter how strong he got, and knew this world would not be different in that regard. Master don't you have the guild master meeting you are supposed to be at? Urza asked Makarov changing the subject. Yeah I guess I will take the train to Clovertown later today. Makarov said in a sheepish tone of voice having forgotten about it in the excitement. Hey Naruto Khan well master is here why don't we check out your place? Mira suggested with a beaming smile as Naruto rubbed his head in embarrassment at the entire guild attention. Yeah man you did make us that promise. Gray snickered as the guild chanted at Naruto. He decided to leave his feelings for Naruto's magic for later, and to just enjoy having fun with the new guild member. Yeah I guess I did promise so everyone follow me. Naruto announced as they started walking to the forest outside of Magnolia. Everyone kept looking around to spot some kind of home, but to their surprise, it seemed like they were walking into a dense forest. Ah uh, Naruto. Are you sure you are going the right way? All I see are trees. Lucy asked awkwardly as the guild started getting anxious. Yup almost there. Naruto announced as he stopped in front of a bunch of trees together. Here it is. Naruto mumbled as he quickly put his hand out, and unbeknownst to the others had done several hand signs rapidly, so no one could see them. What is Naruto doing? Lucy whispered to Natsu who looked even more confused. All of a sudden a flash of light appeared, and when everyone's eyes blinked back into focus everyone's jaws dropped since where once was a hunch of trees was now a house that looked more like a mansion. It was simple design with white paint and several doors and windows, but looked easily bigger than the guild hall or any of the places the wizards were currently living in. I guess welcome to my home in Magnolia Town everyone. Naruto announced as he chuckled at the astonished looks on everyone's face including Urza. Makarov and Mir. You live here the guild universally shouted at once. Well yeah. Naruto responded awkwardly not sure how to answer back. When you said you had a home for yourself, I thought it would be a piece of crap like Natsu's house, but this is a bloody mansion. 
Gray stuttered as Natsuko angry. What did you say about my house stripper? Natsu yelled grabbing Gray until two quick bonks from Urza quickly ended the feud. I got to admit I am rather impressed with your house too. How did you get something like this? Urza asked with genuine curiosity as Naruto shrugged. I mean I use the money mostly for supplies and the permits, but this place I basically built on my own. Every time I finished a job I would come here and keep going till I finished it a few weeks before I joined the guild. Naruto said nonchalant as everyone looked incredulously at him. Choosing not to tell them about your hundreds of clones working on this place while you designed it. Kuruma teased as Naruto patted in his mind. Shut up. Naruto thought back not wanting to admit wanting to look cool in front of his guild mates. Naruto noticed while everyone was admitting his house Levi looked at him with stars in her eyes. Yo Levi what up? Naruto asked as he decided he didn't like referring to people by honorifics, unless they asked for it. He swore he saw Jet and Droy mumbling about getting too personal with their Levi, but he ignored them. Naruto you used rune magic to hide your house, right? Levi asked in amazement. Naruto swore she looked like a puppy, so he resisted the urge to pat her on the head, as A could swear he fell color intent from Mare, but he thought that was impossible. Yeah I put a special variation over my house for protection and cloaking, so unless you know where it is and have my specific magic you can't get into it. Naruto informed Azurza nodded her head seeing the logic into wanting to protect your home. Naruto secretly also adding some Uzumaki style sealing arts to the mix to prevent a rune type wizard or solid script style wizard from overriding the seal's runes. With both magic and chakra in the ray, it was impossible for anyone else to activate or enter his home without his permission. Why would you need something like that for your home? It's pretty far out here. Loke noted gesturing to the forest around them, to prevent people from breaking and entering. Naruto replied flatly seeing Lucy give a glare to the shrugging Natsu. Let's go in. Naruto told everyone as he opened the door to his house. The house looked amazing to everyone's eyes. It had a huge kitchen with full appliances and fully stocked pantry. It also had a large living room with multiple tables and chairs for a lot of guests, and they could see at least several bedrooms and bathrooms. It sure it looked like this house was built for a family more than a single person. Natsu was about to run to the pantry and start digging in until a hand grabbed his arm and held tight. He could see the annoyed look on Naruto's face. Don't even think about eating all my food Natsu. Naruto warned him a dark horror surrounding him. Natsu was about to protest, but Naruto interrupted. Look I made this place so my guild family could hang out here once in a while. Naruto admitted getting touch looks from the guild. However, this is still my home and I work my butt off to make it look nice and have plenty of food, so I don't want people trashing this place okay. Naruto asked with a sigh letting Natsu go. Natsu frowned, but a glare from Urza made him relent as Naruto lead them back outside. Look I am sure we can hang out here some time, but Master has to catch his train, and it is starting to get late, so let's all head back to Guild Hall okay? Naruto asked as Makarov eyes widened as he realized the last train to Clover Town was leaving in a less than an hour. So, he bid everyone a farewell and ran to the train station in a hurry. Everyone got at Tade Guild in a good mood as Urza pulled Naruto aside. Naruto I would like you to accompany me on a spying mission. Would be acceptable. She asked with her arms underneath her chest. Sure let's go. It should be fun. Bye everyone. Naruto waved goodbye to everyone as he left with Urza. There he goes without a care in the world. Lucy said with a sigh and giggle. She secretly thought both Urza and Naruto were amazing and incredibly powerful. Naruto learned from Urza she had heard a tip several members of Eisenwald were meeting a pop to discuss plans. Urza was too well known to just costly enter the bar, so she thought if she changed her outfit and had Naruto pretend to be her boyfriend, they could eardrop without trouble. Naruto stuttered boyfriend. To the confused Urza's raised eyebrow. Yes. Will that be a problem? We are both single so pretending we are a couple should be no problem, right? Urza asked as she starting tying her hair into pigtails, so she would not be so recognizable. I guess not. Naruto murmured as he got control of his blush. Naruto knew Urza was extremely attractive, but he was not looking to be in a real relationship right now, despite the weird situation with Mir. They had both went into a clothing store to buy some disguised jetups and change. Naruto wore castle shorts, vest and sunglasses for his disguise. Urza had gone with shorts, sandals and a tank top, which Naruto noted made more of her beautiful skin was shown than her normal armor. They entered the bar and ordered some drinks and went next to a table where they thought the Eisenwald were, and pretended to be holding on to each other, while secretly listening in on the conversations. They learned Eriger was leading the attack on Ashibana town, and they had a little surprise planned. Naruto and Urza knew they had their work for them. Urza was up for attacking the members now, but Naruto argued that even if they arrested these minor members, the big guys would still be active. He noted it was better for the small guys to lead the to the rest of the group, and they could arrest them all. Urza agreed and praised his smart thinking as they headed back to the guild with a game plan. Okay Naruto let us go to Clover Town, ambush this despicable guild, and stop whatever evil they are trying to spread. Urza declared with a fire in her eyes. Now how about backup from the guild? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. You and I should be more than enough. 
Urza insisted as he placed her hands on her hips in annoyance. True, Naruto admitted. But it would be better if we had at least two members tag along, so they can get some experience for the future. Naruto remarked as they started walking back to the fairy tale guild hall. No, I will not put our comrades in harm's way. This is a dark guild not some bandits or anything. Urza growled protectively. Yeah it's a dark guild and guess what? They will still be around forever. We need our friends to get experience fighting them and with me and you, it would be a perfect experience instead of them getting ambushed on another job out of nowhere. Naruto retorted knowing that this was experience was similar to how three-man squads in Kanoha got sued to harder missions. Urza glared at the defiant Naruto until her warm brown eyes softened, and she smiled warmly you are right I am being too overprotective, and with two S-class wizards, it will be perfect with a few others. Sorry I lashed out at you Naruto. Urza apologized with a slight bow. Naruto grinned and gave her a thumbs up no problem. Any suggestions of who we should pick? You have been in the guild longer. Naruto asked as they continued walking no longer in disguise. I think Natsu and Grey would be good on a job like this. Urza remarked as Naruto nodded absent-mindedly. Oh, and Lucy too. Urza added after some thought. Lucy? Naruto asked with confusion. Yeah I heard some good rumpus about her job with Natsu to the mountains. Urza claimed as they neared the guild hall. Naruto frowned, but then shrugged I guess with Urza and I we can protect the others if worse comes to worst. He thought. They arrived back in the guild where most odd the members were still there chatting happily, until Urza cleared her throat, loudly causing everyone to stare at her at once. Listen Naruto and I have found disturbing news so we have decided to investigate. I am inviting Grey and Natsu to join us. Urza announced as Natsu and Grey go angry looks at each other. I gotta work with him Natsu fumed silently. No way him Grey fumed as well. Will that be a problem gentlemen? Urza asked with frown. Of course not. We would love to Urza. Natsu said with a fake happy smile as he put his arm around Grey's shoulder. But also I would like Lucy to join us too. Please meet me at the train station tomorrow by noon. That is all. Urza announced as she walked back outside giving Naruto a nod. Wait Urza. Natsu yelled as Urza turned around with a raised eyebrow. Yes? Urza asked curious. I will come along if you fight me when we get back. Natsu declared as everyone gave him incredulous looks. Very well I shall see how powerful you have become. Urza replied with a smile as she left the guild. Wait I gotta come too Lucy said afraid as Naruto went over. Don't worry. Think about it as a learning experience. Us four will do all the hard lifting while you will be support. Naruto told reassuringly. When Lucy still looked afraid, he said with conviction no need to worry as I will protect you with my life. Naruto declared as Lucy's face went crimson and Mira frowned deeply. Anyways try to get to sleep Lucy. Bye guys I will see everyone tomorrow. Naruto declared as he walked out with a grin. He didn't hear the snickering of the guild of his loud declaration to Lucy. I am going home too Lucy said timidly with still a blush as she ran out of the guild shortly. Wa Naruto Nai, Urza-san, Grey, and Natsu together. They may be the strongest team in fairy tale. Masana declared as she wins seeing her big sister glare at Urza's name. Why does Naruto get all the luck? He gets to be on the same team as Urza and my dear Lucy. Lok whined before he whimpered seeing a demon glare from Mir. The next day, I know Mir sent secretly asked me to watch over those two and make sure they don't fight too much, but it seems like a lost cause. Lucy whined as she sat patiently with her spear plue in her arms. Her one piece of luggage sat on the ground while happy the cat was chewing on a fish from God's knows where. Haha only Urza can actually make those two cooperate. Happy laughed as they watched Grey and Natsu tussle and argue much to the crowd's fear. I hope I didn't make you wait long. Urza's calm voice asked behind Lucy. Of course not we were just Lucy answered back cutting off for herself when she saw Urza dragging a wagon filled with luggage easily towering herself. So much stuff. Does she think we are going away for a month or something? Lucy thought to herself in shock. Where is Naruto? Urza asked looking around as Lucy clinked realizing she had not seen her fellow blonde. Haha Naruto is late. Natsu laughed as Natsu and Grey had stopped arguing as soon as Urza had arrived. I am behind you guys. Naruto said calmly as everyone turned to see Naruto costly standing there with six bento lunch boxes in his arms. Everyone leaped not realizing Naruto was standing there with even Natsu dragon enhanced sense of smell, not picking anything up in such a crowded space. Anyways I arrived beforehand so I brought everyone lunch so we could eat on the ride there. Naruto said cheerfully pointing at the lunch in his arms. You are the best friend ever. Natsu declared drooling at the bento boxes in Naruto's arms. Ah thanks I guess. Naruto said awkwardly as they walked into an empty cabinet with Urza dumping her luggage in an empty compartment. Naruto handed one bento box to each of his new teammates, when everywhere sat down in a large compartment that could hold eight people easily. Naruto sat in between Urza and Lucy, since he had gotten used to them enough not to blush instantly, while Happy sat in between Grey and Natsu across from them. He's only one box for me. Natsu sat with a pout as he finished half of the box in little over a minute, while the rest of the team calmly ate into the boxes. Show some matter Natsu. Naruto was being nice for buying us lunch when the rest of us didn't even bring food. 
Gray scolded in annoyance at Natsu's rudeness, while Lucy nodded eagerly. Gray's right, Natsu. What Naruto did was wonderful for us, so don't spoil it by whining. Urza scolded with a glare as Natsu meekly apologized. Naruto sighed as he gave Natsu the last box in his arms which he hadn't even eaten yet. Here. I was planning to give this one to Happy anyways, but he has a fish so here. Naruto explained as Natsu started having manly tears of gratitude. Natsu thanked Naruto about ten times before he snatched the box and dug in. Wait what are you going to eat then Naruto? Lucy asked guiltily as she realized they ate Naruto's food and didn't get him anything. And where is your luggage? Gray decided to ask looking around and not seeing Naruto carry anything else onto the train. Same answer. Naruto said cheekily as A brought out a scroll with a letter for travel on it. He put a small amount of magic in it, and much to everyone's surprise there was a suitcase on the floor now, and a steaming hot bowl of ramen with chopsticks in Naruto's hands. How did you do that? Lucy asked excitedly as Urza and Gray also looked intrigued. It's a special form of rune magic that seals away objects and food in their current status into a scroll, and can be released with my magic. Naruto explained as he slurped Raymond in between words. Urza and Lucy looked impressed. Nice one Naruto. Kurama chuckled from inside the seal. Yeah in reality you had to reverse engineer the generic sealing Jutsu Ninja used to be able to seal and unseal using magic, instead of blood or chakra. Chimei elaborated while Naruto grinned to himself at his partial truth. Anyways Naruto, Urza I think it is about time you tell us what we should expect ahead. Gray said seriously as everyone finished their meals. Right so we learned that Eisenwald is planning something big in Clovertown with their head made Jerigar being there too. Naruto explained as everyone but Lucy gulped. They are a dark guild that specialize in assassination. Urza explained darkly as Lucy looked afraid and Naruto glared heatedly at the window. Now we don't know their actual objective, but from what we heard it sounds like the entire guild will be there, so we best be on our toes. Naruto concluded as everyone's eyes get resolute. But what's wrong with Natsu? Lucy decided to ask as she just noticed Natsu look pale and about to barf. A writer's motion sickness seems to have caught up to him. Urza sighed as she got up and punched Natsu in the stomach, knocking him out solving the problem. Eddie had forgot he had it while he was eating, but as soon as he was done, he got it again. Gray snickered at the down dragon slayer. Wait there was one detail I remember that might help. One member claimed someone called Cage was coming back with lullaby, which I think is a magic item. Naruto piped up. Gray and Lucy shared a look lullaby. I think those guys we saw on our last job said something about lullaby. Lucy noted. They seem to be deserters of Eisenwald who didn't want part of their latest plans. Urza said thinking it over. In a case if they have something that can cause harm to innocent people, we won't let them get away with it. So, we are storming the Eisenwald guild. Urza declared as happy, Lucy, Gray and Naruto raised a fist in agreement. I? They all yelled. The train continued onward to the next designation Onibus station, where unbeknownst to the fairy tale wizards one dark guild member was already on the train. Meanwhile, Makarov was at the guild master's meeting in Clovertown. He was socializing with the other masters, loudly bragging about the hotties of his guild including Lucy Hurtfilia. You blokes are just jealous I get all the smoking hot ones in my guild. Like Lucy she is new, but still has a body that won't quit. Makarov bragged as several people whistled. Makarov you wizard's attractive qualities aside. You should really tell them to rein in their destructive impulses, as sooner or later the magic council will disband you guild once and for all. Goldmine warned. He was the master of the Kordo Cerberus guild. Those blow hearts up there can blow it for all I care. Makarov replied eating another chicken leg and drinking another gulp of beer. Master Makarov a message from Rahinsan. A bird piped up holding a letter in his feet. Makarov grabbed the letter and applied magic on the seal on the back of the letter. A hologram of a smiling of Mira in her red dress appeared in front of him. Instantly almost every man there whistled with blushes seeing the beautiful Marahin nearly in person. Mira glared sending a demonic glare, a and 3, making everyone back off. She smiled again once people backed off while Makarov just chuckled. That my dear masters is Mira Chan from Fairy Tale. Quite a cutie huh? She is our pride and joy model. Makarov boasted raising his glass in the air. Mira just laughed as the men were much more subtle checking her hologram out. Thank you master. Mira said simply. Anyways I just wanted to tell you wonderful news. Urza, Grey, Natsu, Lucy and Naruto Khan formed a team this morning. I hope you well. Bye. Mira chanted as she waved making the message disappear. These three of your most destructive mages on a single team. Tough break Makarov. Goldmine said sympathetically while he chuckled. Yeah but they have Naruto on the team so it should work out. Makarov said in a proud and serious tone as everyone looked at him strangely. Who is this Naruto Chan? I don't believe I heard of him before. Bob the master of Blue Pegasus asked. He represents the true soul of our guild. He may be new, but I trust him to handle situations. Makarov said proudly. Don't you think of all your members as children? It's not very nice to have a favorite. Goldmine reminded him as Makarov just chuckled. You are probably right. I hope one day you can see him in person. Makarov getting back to his drink. Let's see I get home tomorrow afternoon, so I hope my children don't get into trouble before then. 
Makarov thought worriedly. I think as a team it would be best to familiarize with each other magic. Lucy suggested as everyone nodded their head in agreement. Let's see. Naruto uses Requip, Runen Sky Devil Slayer Magic Ride. Lucy started as Naruto nodded his head. Urza uses Requip and a lot of armors, Happy can fly, and I use Celestial Spirit Magic. Lucy said out loud. What kind of magic do you use Grey? Lucy asked in a curious tone. Oh, mine is simply this. Grey said putting his hands together an ice fairy tale symbol appeared in his hands. Ice make magic Grey revealed as Lucy clapped and pressed. I see that is why you and Atsudan get along. It's because you are ice and he is fire. Lucy thought after a moment as Urza looked intrigued. Now I just hate his guts. Grey claimed stubbornly. I think they are just too stubborn to admit they are close friends. Naruto thought in amusement thinking of his and Sasuke's friendship. So why exactly does Natsuke get motion sickness? Lucy decided to ask the group as they continued their ride to the next stop. Before Happy could answer Naruto decided to speak up, it is a side effect of the Dragon Slayer magic Natsu uses. The magic causes an imbalance with the mage and their senses, so moving vehicles equals motion sickness. Naruto explained as Lucy nodded her head. How do you know about Dragon Slayer magic Naruto? Grey asked as most of the guild never heard about the magic till Natsu showed up and ate fire to prove it wasn't just normal fire magic. Though, I read about lots of different types of magic. Naruto said vaguely with ironic amusement. Anyways the train is stopping so let's head off here. Naruto said in a hurry as everyone picked up their luggage and left the train. Now leaving Ashibana station the train conductor announced. Are we forgetting something? Lissy asked as the group looked at each other. Where's Natsu happy screamed as the group saw the train in the distance and realized they left him behind. Natsu. It is all my fault. We were discussing Natsu's weakness and I completely forgot to take him off the train. Urza said dramatically on her knees in defeat. Well you did not come out so it would hard for normal people to walk off the train themselves. Lucy and Naruto whispered together. I must be punished. Somebody please hit me. Urza begged as Grey sweat dropped and pretended he could hear her, while Lucy looked incredulous. Naruto however had a very different thought running through his head. You know you could spank her, and you could claim you are hitting her. Shukaku remarked with a grin as Naruto had a vivid erotic thought of Urza moaning in pain and pleasure, if he slapped her ass. Shukaku. Naruto yelled in his mind as he fought hard to keep his face neutral. It's true plus I won't mind if this girl became your mate. Kurama grumbled muttering to himself about crazy redeeds which Naruto presumed to mean his mother. Naruto stuttered unable to respond to the tailed beasts who were laughing at the face he was making. I think she would make a wonderful girlfriend for Naruto. Madatabi chimed in and then added along with that Lucy girl and Mira girl too. Naruto cut the connection to his mind as he realized that Urza was still asking them to punish her. Or should we be more worried about catching up to Natsu right now? Naruto asked trying to steer the conversation away from the redeed, need to be punished. Of course, you are right Naruto. Urza said as she compassed her face much to Naruto's relief. I will rent us a magic mobile to catch up, but first things first. Urza said as she went up to the startled station conductor. Forgive me, but I need to stop the train right away. Urza said politely as the conductor got annoyed. Look lady we can't stop the train every time you forgot something. We would wreck the entire system if we did that. The conductor insisted while Urza got impatient. I must insist. Urza replied as she shoved the conductor aside and pulled the lever causing the train to come to a halt. Urza then paid the scared vendor outside to rent a magic mobile for a cheap price. Little did she know the vendor was too scared to charge full price. Lucy, Grey and Happy quickly went into the vehicle, while Naruto looked sheepish. I apologize but it really is for the best. Naruto apologized as he quickly slipped in some jewels to the poor vendor and conductor for the trouble. Naruto then sat inside the vehicle along with Lucy, while Grey sat on top. Urza quickly strapped an SC plug onto her left arm after taking her armor on that arm off, and the vehicle started zooming across the road towards the train. Lucy screamed in fright, while Grey kept advising Urza to slow down which were ignored by the night. Naruto himself was impressed with the technology they invented in this world which was superior to his old world. He never actually ridden in a magic mobile before as he preferred walking, but he admitted it was useful for people not as fast as him for travel. After several minutes of driving they saw the train which was smoking from one compartment which everyone knew was the one with Natsu in it. Urza sped up a bit and right when they started to catch up Natsu flew from the train with a yell. Natsu. Urza yelled as Grey grew white-eyed when he saw he was in the way of Natsu's foal. Ah. Natsu screamed as a thunk was heard from the collision of Natsu and Grey's skull bashing into each other. Lucy looked embarrassed at her new teammates, while Naruto and Happy laughed in delight. That hurt you idiot. Grey screamed butting heads with Natsu who looked equally as annoyed. Shut up. It's not like I wanted to slam into you either. Besides how could you leave me behind? Natsu screamed in outrage. I am just glad everyone is safe. Urza said in relief as she slammed Natsu's head into her armored chest. Dunk. Was hurt as Natsu's eyes whitened in pain. Naruto winced as he knew based on her skimpy armors, that Urza was rather well endowed in the chest area, easily being in the same league as Mira and Lucy. 
However, he thought with her chest armor getting slammed into her chest would probably not be pleasant, with possibly her perverted sensei being the only man alive who might enjoy it. It's okay. Anyways I got attacked on the train. Natsu explained once Urza let him go. Lucy gave him a concerned look while Naruto, Grey and Urza eyes narrowed. He said he was from Eisenwald Guild. Natsu claimed as suddenly Urza got mad. You idiot. He was part of the group we were looking for. Urza screeched after slapping Natsu's silly with her bare left hand, as a visible red mark was shown on Natsu's cheek. How we were. This is the first time I heard about them. Natsu protested rubbing his throbbing cheek. How could you not be listening? Naruto and I explained it on the train. Urza insisted lecturing the confused dragon slayer. Kind of hard to listen when you knock somebody out. Naruto whispered dryly to his fellow blonde. She's kind of crazy after all. Lucy replied agreeing with Naruto just as dryly. Meanwhile Happy and Grey were deathly quiet, not wanting to be hurt by the irate Urza. Anyways what did the guy look like? Grey asked once Urza calmed down and headed back to the magic mobile to start the engine running. He had black hair and didn't look like he was part of Dark Guild. Natsu recalled. However, he did have this creepy flute with three eyes drop out of his pocket. Natsu added as Lucy looked deadly serious and scared. What's wrong Lucy? Naruto asked in concern. Guys if that flute is what I think it is we are in big trouble. It is called lullaby and it is dark magic that kills people. Lucy explained as everyone eyes widened. Yes there is certain black magic created specifically to kill people. Urza said darkly as her hands tightened. Meanwhile Naruto's eyes narrowed in disgust. True he had no reason to be outraged as his old world created ninjutsu as a means to start wars. It was changed from connecting people as ninshu to killing each other as ninjutsu. However, he still thought this world should know better to play with powers that they called to understand. After everyone got back in the magic mobile despite Natsu's protests, Urza funneled magic back through the SC plug, and the vehicle sped after the train. They were heading to the next train station and hoping they could stop Eisenwald before they caused any harm. They arrived in Kanagi station only to find they were too late. They stopped briefly to hear some passengers complain that Eisenwald had taken over the train and dumped everyone and everything behind. I guess their target is the next town over. Urza theorized as they got back to the road. Yeah if they went out of their way to unseal lullaby they would probably want to use it on a lot of people, and Kanagi station is pretty small. The next town Ashibana station is a lot bigger. Grey added as Naruto had a determined look. No matter what their plans are we are going to stop them. Naruto said with no hesitation as everyone nodded. Natsu looked like he was going to die, but weakly raised a fist in agreement. They soon arrived in Ashibana station, only to see a large crowd of people gathered outside of the train station looking angry. The newly formed team quickly went off the magic mobile much to Natsu delight as they quickly went inside. Lucy looked close to tears as several solders were bloody and dead. They killed them. Lucy said in sheer shock while everyone else looked angry. They're going to pay. Natsu said quietly as flames burst from his fists. After walking deeper into the station, the team was quickly surrounded the entire Eisenwald guild to look cockily at the fairy tale team. The guild consisted of several dozen members who looked at girls with lust and superiority, as Lucy looked creeped out. Here's the guy I fought. Natsu pointed out the dark-haired man with the white vest. Shikamaru. Naruto asked in confusion as everyone looked at him confusion. Who? The black-haired man replied. Listen here fairy tale flies. I am Cage and this is Eisenwald. Cage announced as the fairy tale team tensed. You must be Erger. Urza said in disgust, pointing at the smoking white-haired man on top with a scythe. Erger merely laughed as he jumped hovering in the air before landing on Olympus. Pass flying. Lucy said in surprise. It's wind magic. Happy informed as Naruto looked unimpressed. I am guessing you plan to broadcast the lullaby song over the speakers to kill everyone around. Naruto guessed. Haha those fools living their peaceful lives will never see it coming. They shall get eternal sleep. Erger announced with a sneer as the fairy tale team looked disgusted. What did these citizens ever do to you? Lucy cried out as Erger looked bored. Nothing but we lost out rights to guild so everyone has to suffer now. Erger explained. You took on assassination missions after being outlawed by the magic council. Urza retorted as the Eisenwald members snickered. You, legal guilds are the fools listening to the magic council instead of doing what you like. Anyways I must be going. People are dying to listen to lullaby. Erger claimed as he floated away with the Eisenwald guild circling and surrounding the team. Natsu and Grey you go after Erger. Together you can beat him while the three of us will handle the rest. Urza commanded the tow wizards who ran towards the exit. Wait you mean we gotta take out the rest of them by ourselves? Lucy said in fear as several members looked at her with lust. Well look at here boys it is just a blondie and two women to take us all on. One member said with a laugh. After we beat you to submission, I think we can have fun with the Redeed and the booby blonde. Another wizard said with lust as Urza and Lucy looked disgusted. Nope just me. I wouldn't even need to use magic on scum like you. Naruto declared with his blonde locks covering his eyes. Are you sure? Urza asked with some worry. Don't worry about it. Recover your magic while Lucy can't see how I fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Naruto said with a grin. Charge. 
One member screamed as several bursts of light magic converged at Naruto, and a puff of smoke could be seen. Lucy screamed before the smoke cleared to show Naruto with his left hand in front of him looking bored and unhurt. That all Eisenwald can do. Naruto taunted as Eisenwald screamed as they began to attack him again. One member tried to hit Naruto from behind with a spear, but Naruto easily sidestepped the assault. He then grabbed the guy's wrist to snap it, causing the spear to drop into Naruto's hands. Naruto then used his elbow to knock the wizard out, and spun throwing the spear at another wizard. The appear got caught in the shoulder of the wizard, making him scream in pain, and lose control of the magic he was charging up. This caused the spell to explode prematurely and take out another 10 wizards around him. This all happened in a span of a few seconds as Lucy looked at Naruto in awe. Naruto is amazing. Lucy announced with her eyes shining. I sir. Happy agreed. Yes, Naruto is something else. To think he is doing this without any magic or even a weapon. Urza noted thinking to herself she called be this effective without at least some weapons and equips. Yeah it reminds me when Adara faced the 4th division using that blasted Shuringen of his. Kurama grumbled as much as he despised Madar, he could admit his skills were well above normal ninjas, but not on Naruto's level. This pattern of pure destruction on Naruto's part continued for several minutes, as not even one wizard could lay a hand on Naruto, while Naruto decimated the entire guild with no problems. He could even steal swords and arrows in mid-air to briefly use them to attack the guild. Done. Naruto said as he stretched just as the last member dropped in defeat. Well done Naruto. Urza praised as Naruto grinned back at her. Eyes we were tricked. Grey yelled as he ran back in at the same time Natsu carried a knocked out cage on his back. They wanted us in here to trap us. The real target is Gramps and the other masters in Cover Town. Grey informed them as everyone ran outside of the station. Only for them to see a giant wind barrier surrounding the station. Urza was about to touch it till Naruto halted her with a hand on her shoulder. He instead threw a sword he borrowed from an Eisenwald member into the wind. Everyone's eyes widened when the sword got shredded to pieces when it hit the barrier. I see so that was their plan from the get-go. Lure us inside where the barrier was set beforehand. Have Aragro leave and activate the barrier while we wasted time with his goonies, and fly to Clover Town with wind magic. Naruto analyzed with a frown as everyone screamed in frustration. And so we can't force our way through since the wind would shred us to pieces. Urza remarked as the wind had not gone down at all even after Aragro had left. Lucy did I forget to tell you something? Happy asked as he paced back and forth. Why are you telling me now? Lucy screamed at the cat who shrugged. Lucy called you summon one of your spears outside the barrier and have them carry us past the barrier. Natsu asked as everyone turned to Lucy who sighed. That's not how celestial spirit magic works Natsu. For one thing I can only summon a spirit to where I am so they would be trapped in the barrier as well. Plus, even if they returned to the celestial spirit world, none of us could join them, as it would a huge violation of the rules to celestial spirit magic. Lucy explained patiently as everyone looked down. Damn it is there nothing we can do. Grey shouted in frustration resisting punching the wall after Naruto showed what would happen. He knew there would no way he could freeze the spell, and he doubted Lucia Urza would have anything powerful enough to destroy the barrier. While I see a Naruto began to explain before he was cut off by an excited Happy. Lucy, I remembered what I had to tell you. Happy said flying up to Lucy as everyone forgot about Naruto. On our last mission you got a new gold key. Happy exclaimed as Lucy looked confused. New key? Lucy asked not remembering any new key from when she joined Fairy Tail. Yeah this one. I forget to give it you, but the last job guy decided to give it me to give to you. Happy exclaimed as Lucy sighed wishing he piped up earlier. This will help as Virgo can use earth magic to tunnel us out. Lucy said in realization before Natsu's eyes widened. Happy let's fly out pf here. If we don't catch Aragra first then Urza and Naruto will hog all the glory. Natsu shouted as Happy picked him up. Aye aye sir. Happy replied as they flew high and passed the opening of the wind barrier and flew high speed towards Clover Town. The barrier only covered around the station not above or below it, so Happy flew safely above the gap. A and 2. Come back you jerk. Grey exclaimed angrily as Urza sighed. I guess it can't be helped as Happy can only carry one person at a time. Lucy can you please get your spirit to tunnel the rest of us out of here? Urza asked Lucy who nodded. Alright. Open the gate of the maiden. Virgo. Lucy shouted as she spun her new gold key in her hands, and it glowed with magic. There was a flash of light as a young, beautiful slender girl appeared with a dull calm expression. She had pink hair, blue eyes and a typical maid outfit with thigh-high white stockings and peculiar shackles on both her wrists. I am at you command Lucy Sama. Virgo said calmly with a bow. That's not how I remember her, but I will take what I can get. Lucy thought to herself not willing to test fate and get the huge gorilla woman from before. Asama seems a bit formal. Dot Lucy said awkwardly to her new spirit as Virgo hummed in thought. If Lucy Heim were right with you. Virgo asked as Lucy thought it over before nodding. Anyways can we finalize the contract later as we are a bit of a rush. Lucy asked as Virgo nodded her head as Naruto looked intently at the new spirit. Cute. Naruto said simply as everyone looked oddly at him. Little did they know he was thinking of his former teammate Sakura. Oh? Who are you? A Lucy Heim boyfriend. 
Virgo asked curiously as Grey smirked, Urza smiled, Lucy turned bright red, and Naruto blushed and looked away. It's nothing like that. Lucy declared as she glared at the smirking Grey. He is Naruto Uzumaki and you one of my guildmates. Whatever you say Lucyheim. Nice to meet you Naruto-sama. Virgo said with a bow. In her head she thought Naruto Uzumaki likely Lucyheim future boyfriend. Anyways I shall begin digging a hole out of here. Virgo declared as Lucy cheered. I seriously I see and Naruto tried to explain Nomi to walk back a bit, when Lucy and Urza glared at him for interrupting. Grey just gave a look of surrender as Virgo spun and like a drill, dug a giant hole underneath the wind barrier and onto the other side. As everyone was walking through the tunnel Naruto thought sourly sorry for offering to eat the wind as I am a sky devil slayer, but no, I guess I should shut up. The tailed beasts inside of him tried to be supportive except Kurama who laughed at a misfortune, and Shikaku who crackled he was whipped. They and two. Naruto also realized with the wind wall still up the Eisenwald members would be stuck in sight, instead of trying to escape once they woke up. The hull they walked through quickly disappeared once he left the tunnel which Naruto attributed to earth magic. Naruto was dragged from his wonderings when he saw they were back in the magic mobile with Urza once again put on the SC plug on her arm. Grey resumed his spot on top of the magic mobile, while the pass out cage laid on the floor, while Lucy padded the spot next to her on the seat. Hey why are we carrying that cage guy with us? Naruto asked as he hopped onto the seat next to Lucy. Once we beat Eriger we will make Cage tell us if Eisenwald has any plans. Urza said menacingly as Grey, Lucy and Naruto shuddered. Right Naruto said dryly as Urza popped magic into the SC plug, and the magic mobile drove off quickly towards Culvertown. Naruto noticed Lucy looking nervously, so he patted her on the shoulder, so she turned to him with a worried look. I hope we can stop Eriger on time and save the guildmasters. Lucy said with uncertainty laced in her voice. Naruto smiled and said look don't worry Natsu went on ahead, and I believe he can beat Eriger. True he might not be as strong as Urza or me, but I can tell he can tap into untapped power when he needs to. Dot. Seeing the confident look on Naruto's face Lucy smiled and said thankful. Thanks, I needed that. Naruto blushed a bit when he realized the close proximity as Urza and Grey smiled from his words. The next several minutes were spent racing across the canyon trying to catch up to Natsu and Eriger who both had quite a lead. By the time they arrived at the bridge on the way to Clovertown, Natsu stood over a burnt and defeated Eriger. Urza parked the magic mobile past where the defeated Dark Wizard laid, and everyone piled out to congratulate the Fire Dragon Slayer. Naruto whistled an impressed tone as he noted that Natsu and Eriger magic powers were roughly equal. Grey tried to hide how impressed he was by claiming that Natsu took too long wheel Lucy marveled at Natsu's strength. Look how hard you had to fight. If it was me, he would be frozen solid long ago. Grey claimed butting heads with Natsu who seemed far more energetic than before. Well if you are so cocky why not test me out right now ice stripper. Natsu taunted with fire coking out of his head as he glared at the ice wizard. That's enough boys. Urza scolded as both boys backed off in fright. The important thing is Eriger was defeated so job well done Natsu. Urza parized as Natsu grinned. Remember our deal Urza. When we get back to fairy tale we fight. Natsu said excitedly as Urza chuckled. I haven't forgotten. Now we just grab lullaby and this job is done. Urza said as they turned around only to hear a scream. Eric. Lucy screamed as everyone turned to see Lucy with a black shadow at her throat. Lucy. Everyone shouted as they were about to rush to save her until the shadow moved closer to her throat, making everyone stop. I would stop if I were you fairy tale scum. Cage warned with a cocky smile hiding behind Lucy with one hand on her shoulder and one hand in front of her, commanding his shadow magic. Cage. Urza growled with narrowed eyes as everyone reluctantly stayed still seeing the fear in Lucy's eyes. That's some good wizards. Cage taunted before he raised a finger which caused another shadow to shoot out and grab the lullaby flute that was lying next to Eriger's prone body. He grabbed lullaby. Grey shouted as Cage smirked. Why are you doing this, coward? Naruto asked angrily as he resisted the urge to blast the Dark Wizard off the bridge, knowing he might hit Lucy. Eriger and I might have come up with the plan together, but he is a goner now, so it's up to me to finish our revenge. Cage claimed holding the flute reverently. Now before you fairy tale flies try anything funny just remember I can cut Blondie throw quicker than anything you can throw at me. Cage taunted as he slowly walked towards the magic mobile with Lucy as his hostage. Lucy. Natsu shouted as he took a step forward, but Cage was ready. Let's see how her blood looks shall we? Cage asked as his shadow moved ready to cut her cheek until Naruto grabbed Natsu. You win we won't make a move. Naruto said in defeat as everyone reluctantly stood still making Cage stop his shadow and move with triumph. Just remember this. Whatever happens to Lucy I will repay a thousand times more. Naruto promised with his eyes in slits making his teammates and Cage shudder in fear. Cage went to the driver's seat of the magic mobile still holding on to Lucy as a shield. The look in your eyes makes me think you are not kidding, but how fast are you blondie? Cage asked sadistically as he used his shadow to push Lucy off the bridge, as he drove full speed towards Clovertown. Help. Lucy screamed as she was fooling high speed to the water below. Lucy. Everyone shouted as they all tried to save her. 
Happy was too exhausted to fly anymore, Gray and Natsu won't make it in time, and Urza was unable to recruit fast enough. Faster than anyone however Naruto without regard for his own safety, jumped off the bridge after Lucy, and using Sky Devil Slayer magic, to accelerate his fall to catch up to Lucy. Lucy closed her eyes expecting to a heart fall, but instead she felt the air stop, and she felt her body in something hard but warm. She kept her eyes closed in fear until she heard a warm voice. It's okay Lucy I got you. Naruto warmly as Lucy opened her eyes in surprise. Naruto you saved me. Lucy said in awe as tears starting forming in her eyes. She noticed she was in his arms with one of arms underneath her legs and the other on her waist in the bridal style. She noticed how warm and muscular Naruto's body felt against hers. Of course, I did silly. Naruto teased as they stood on top a pocket of Sky Devil Slayer magic, and now that Lucy was aware, he slowly began an ascent upwards back to the bridge. HMPH if you suit my sand you won't need to use that magic of yours. Shikaka grumbled from inside the seal. Hush and let Naruto and Lucy have their moment. Jayuki scolded as Shikaka grunted but relented. Lucy decided to just go for it and push her head into Naruto's shoulder and wrap her arms around his neck in a tight and warm embrace. Lucy blushed when she felt how safe and right it was to be in Naruto's arms, but let herself enjoy the moment. Well Naruto blushed when he felt Lucy very soft and curvy body press right against his, but he didn't make a move to pull away. Unbeknownst to the other Lucy smelled Naruto's masculine scent, while Naruto smelled Lucy's sweet scent due to the proximity. After a short while both blondes flew back until the bridge to their relieved teammates. However due to the essentially lovers embrace every member had blushes on their faces. Uh do you guys need a minute? Gray asked awkwardly as Lucy pulled her face out of Naruto's neck, but Naruto kept a hold of Lucy. Shut up Gray. Naruto said in annoyance, but the effect was ruined with how he still held on to Lucy. So I didn't know your magic allowed you to fly. Urza commented changing the subject as Naruto snorted. If that one of Shinigami can fly why won't I be able to do Sky Devil Slayer magic? Naruto asked rhetorically. Anyways let's catch up to that cage and stop lullaby. Naruto should carry Lucy so we can move quicker. Urza suggested as neither Naruto or Lucy had a problem with that. Lucy did not even seem offended that it was implied she was slowing down the team. Natsu, Grey and Urza ran full speed, while Naruto carrying Lucy, kept pace towards Clovertown. Happy was holding on to Natsu's shoulder since he was still exhausted from using so much magic beforehand. After a while they arrived near the Clovertown conference hall where Naruto set down Lucy, but kept her clothes in case of attack. They saw Cage with the flute near his lips, while Makarov was waiting impatiently to play the song. Before they could intervene, Master Bob came up to them and stopped them. He hit on and complimented Grey and Natsu much to their discomfort, called Urza mature, but oddly left Naruto alone, due to his close proximity to Lucy. They heard Makarov start talking before Cage could start playing. Nothing will change. Makarov suddenly said. Kajiyama's eyes widened. The weak will always be weak. But weakness is not evil, since human beings are weak to begin with. Kajiyama just continued to stare with white eyes. Alone, we feel insecurity, that is why we form guilds. That's why we have comrades. Naruto grinned, now seeing there was no need to intervene. We walk together in order to live a strong life. The clumsy ones will run into more walls than others, and it may also take them longer to get there. Kajiyama started trembling. If you believe in tomorrow and put yourself out there, you can naturally obtain your own strength. That's how y'all be able to smile and live strong. Makarov grinned. Without having to depend on such a flute, of course. Kajiyama sank to the ground on his knees, dropping the flute to the ground as he did. I, I lose. Instantly the entire team came up the surprise master, with Urza saying how touched she was by banging Makarov to her armored chest. Naruto himself was impressed with the speech, noting it was something the third Hokage world set to inspire the village. As everyone was relaxing on preventing a massacre a voice came from the flute. That will not do. I will ease souls one way or another today. The voice declared as smoke enveloped the flute until it became a massive wooden demon towering over the hall and the surrounding mountains. What is that thing? Lucy asked in shock and fear. That must be a demon from the books of Zerf. Goldmine said gravely. How unfortunate legacies from that era have awakened in ours. Master Bob sighed. As the team prepared to fight besides Lucy and Happy Naruto stood up and put his hand out. Wait, you guys have used quite a bit of magic this job, so I will finish this one off. Naruto declared. As everyone was about to protest Makarov shook his head agreeing with Naruto as they reluctantly stood down. This one human lullaby shouted in surprise. Don't make me laugh. A thousand of you could not defeat one of demons. Lullaby declared glaring at the human that dared to mock it. Well this one human managed to kill Cell the demon, so you must be even weaker than humans. Naruto mocked as he had his left hand in front telling it to come on. You die first. Lullaby screamed as it threw a massive fist at Naruto, intending to squish him. Everyone scurried out of the way by Naruto calmly held his ground with Sky Devil Slayer magic coating his hand not moving an inch. That all you got demon. Naruto taunted with a cocky smile. Impossible he caught it with one hand. Someone from the crowd shouted. His own team was shell-shocked at how powerful Naruto was. Who is this wizard Maki? 
Master Bob asked his smug Makarov. My guild new sets class wizard Naruto Uzumaki. Makarov said with a smile. Naruto Uzumaki I thought it was just rumors started by the council. Goldmine said in shock as everyone turned back the frustrated demon. That was just a flute nothing else. Die. Lullaby declared as it sprouted fire at the smoking blonde intending to roast him alive. Natsu looked ready to eat the fire until Naruto coated his right hand with Sky Devil Slayer magic and punched the air in front of him. Sky Devil Slayer force push. Naruto said calmly and much to everyone's shock not only did the shockwave overpower the massive fire it even sent lullaby itself flying. That's impossible. Lucy and Gray shouted at the same time. That's incredible. Urza declared with white eyes. Past stealing the spotlight. Natsu whined. To finish this while he is in the air to prevent collateral damage. Naruto thought as he summoned a blue bowl of magic in his hand, except it had small shuriken-like blades around it. Sky Devil Slayer Wind Rasengan. Naruto shouted as he threw the ball into Lullaby Airborne Self. There is no way a mere human could kill me. Impossible Lullaby screamed as the ball hit it and expanded enveloping the demon with massive winds and explosion following. Lucy and Urza held onto their skirts, while everyone braced themselves for a few seconds until the explosion disappeared, revealing the demon was gone. What kind of wizards are fairy tale? He defeated a demon in two attacks. Somebody shouted from the crowd as Naruto's team cheered him on while he was modest about his win. Powerful and kind along with worrying about damages to property. Naruto really is worthy of S-Class. Makarov thought to himself as he joined in on the celebrations inside the conference hall which was unscathed. Unbeknownst to anyone Naruto had snatched the broken flute while nobody was looking. Thus, ended the first of Fairy Tail's new steam jobs. The group of seven got back to the guild hall without an incident, although Naruto did have to endure Natsu yelling that Naruto was holding out on the guild, which was not cool with him. Naruto just sighed and explained he did it like using more force than needed as he knew what it was to be homeless. He told Natsu sharply that property damage hurt more than the guild's finances it destroyed actual people homes. This shut up Natsu while Urza and Makarov looked approvingly at him. When they arrived home, it was full on celebration with every member drinking and partying. Welcome back everyone. Rang out the guild as everyone held a banner saying congratulations for not dying. Making both Lucy and Naruto sweat drop. Everyone separated into groups while Natsu looked eagerly at Urza. Urza it's time to fight. Natsu begged lighting up his hands with fire. First we eat and then we fight. Urza said calmly trying to walk past the annoyed dragon slayer. No. We fight now. You promise. Natsu said heatedly, but quickly shrunk back when Urza gave him a glare. Natsu I am hungry right now. Urza said with annoyance. Yes, mom. Natsu said meekly stepping aside as Urza walked to Mira to order her favorite strawberry cake. Naruto had sat on a table with just Lucy who him gave a chuckle as he just slurped up his ramen which he didn't know was made by Mira specially for him. He didn't know that Urza told Mira for his fondness for ramen, and she had brought speciality ingredients for his return. Wow this tastes great. Maybe the best food I have ever had. Naruto exclaimed in happiness as Mira with her back to him sighed in happiness. Uh Naruto. Lucy asked nervously shuffling around her feet as Naruto gave her his attention. Uh what's up Lucy? Naruto asked finishing the noodles on his chopsticks. I just wanted to thank you for what you did for me back there. Lucy said softly as she felt guilty, she could not even get him a gift as thanks. Despite what people thought she did not have a huge clothes budget or a lot of jewels to spend. She had basically enough for food and rent with the jobs she had done so far. Hey don't worry about Lucy. Naruto reassured with a grin making her blush at his rugged good looks. How about when we settle in, I take you on a harder job so we can get more jewels together. Naruto offered having guessed about Lucy's financial situation. Honestly with the amount he had he didn't really need jewels, but he knew Lucy would not take charity, so this was the next best thing. Lucy beamed as they stared into each other's eyes. Luckily nobody was paying attention to the blondes as everyone focused on Urza and Natsu. Urza was savoring every bite of her strawberry cake, while Natsu kept desperately to get Urza to hurry up with him several times, almost knocking the cake over to the guild's amusement. The only one to pay attention to Lucy in Naruto's table was Mira who frowned guessing that Lucy had gotten closer to Naruto during the Ice Inwald incident. She sensed another rival for Naruto's attention. After Urza finally finished eating, she accepted Natsu's challenge as the guild cheered. Everyone walked out back to the same battleground where Urza and Naruto fought earlier as Natsu and Urza prepared to fight. Step right up to place your bets. Urza or Natsu. Titania or Salamander. Kana announced as everyone started hurrying to place their bets. 500 jewels on Urza. Happy announced as Lucy looked surprised. They are betting against your best friend Lucy asked in shock. Why not? Urza is going to cream the floor with Natsu anyways. Gray said dryly as once again he was down to his boxers. Oh Gray your clothes. Asana remarked as Gray freaked out. But won't this be bad having another of fairy tale strongest wizards fight each other? Lucy asked freaked out as everyone gave her confused looks. Strongest wizards? Who told you that Natsu and Urza were strongest wizards? Gray asked with slight mocking in his voice. Lucy pointed to a sad Lasana as Grey looked awkward. 
I just meant they are powerful. Masana said sadly as everyone turned to Grey with an annoyed look. Grey I hope have prepared your funeral. Mira threatened with a dark look until Lasana calmed her down. Laknatsu is a pretty powerful kid, but he is not in Urza's league. Elfman commented as Wakaba and Mikao nodded. Urza along with Mira are definitively our strongest female wizards. Levi declared as her teammates nodded eagerly. But for most powerful men, well that's a toy. Nobody really knows how powerful Mystigan is, but I think Laxus or Gildertz would take that honor. Wakaba said thoughtfully. How about Naruto? Hesses class too. Lucy piped up as everyone looked conflicted. Honestly Lu Chan we haven't seen the full power of Naruto, but a fight between him and Gildurs or Laxus would be pretty exciting. Levi told her as everyone attention went back to Natsu and Urza who had begun fighting. Natsu had began swinging his fists with fire dragon slayer magic at Urza, who elegantly dodged with her fighting back with a sword. She swung her sword at Natsu who leapt back and shouted fire dragon roars, he spewed out a breath of fire at Urza. Urza jumped straight into the air to dodge. Equip. Urza shouted as a light appeared around her. Once it vanished, she was in a new armor. She had orange and red colored armor appear on her body. Her hair was in two high pigtails with two black clippings holding them into place. She had two loose strands hanging by her ears, while she wore an orange and black neck choker. She wore an orange, red and black breastplate that exposed some of her cleavage, and ended barely covering her crotch, while leaving her arms bare. She wore separate fur-covered gauntlets on each arm that covered halfway up her arms and her hands. She wore armor on her legs that left a patch of skin visible between her bottom of her breastplates and top of her leggings, revealing a patch of thighs. That's her Flame Empress armor, which allows her 50% resistance to all fire-based magic. Shes got this in the bag. Mikao said happily as he would not be losing twice in a row. Naruto whistled in appreciation at both the properties of the armor, along with its coloring. Man she must have an armor for everything. Color me impressed. Naruto praised as Mira narrowed her eyes at a rival getting such high praise. After she equipped the fight continued with Urza being less focused on defense, and Natsu struggling to keep up. Naruto estimated that soon Urza would end up being the winner, as now she could ignore the damage and focus on pure offense, with the armor protecting her. Stop this fight this instant. A loud voice yelled as everyone paused to see a frog-like woman in council robes walk to the guild with a clap of her hands. As representative of the magic council I am here to take Naruto Uzumaki to the council to explain the incident of the Einsteinwald incident in person. She announced as everyone turned to Naruto who sighed. Schultz expected it. Naruto said calmly walking up without a fight. Naruto will you be okay? Makarov said in a worried voice as Naruto waved his hand lazily. Continue the fight and tell me how it ends. I will be back before you know it. Naruto told the members as he entered the carriage without a fuss. Several hours later they arrived in Iro with Naruto, waiting until it was his turn to enter the council room. When he entered, he saw he all nine members of the head of the magic council there, although they were pixelated. And thought projects how nice it must be not to even be here for my trial. Naruto said mockingly as several members glared at him. You brat. You will treat us with respect. A member Naruto didn't know sneered at him as Naruto just picked lint out off his coat. Enough of this foolishness. Or the chairman yelled as the members settled down. Naruto Uzumaki you have been called to the council to explain your actions during the lullaby incident. Well it is pointed out there was no collateral damage, fairy tales still went after a dark guild without authorization. What say you to that? Or gasped with heat as Naruto glared right back. We did what anyone should have done. Saved lives and if that means we have to do decisive actions I would gladly do it again. Naruto declared as several members glared at him. Would you rather the guild masters all perish while we waited for approval for an issue the magic council could not handle? Naruto asked with a mocking smile as the glares intensified. To his surprise he heard laughter and a giggle from two members. Naruto Uzumaki does have a point. The actions of fairy tale prevented the loss of life, and it is true that our rune knights may not have been enough to stop the issue. Seagrain remarked as Naruto gave him an uneasy look. Naruto remembered him as Jal Twin Bother, although he still sensed something off with his magic power. I believe that issue should be put to rest now. Altier suggested with a sultry smile on her plump lips. Altier was attractive female wizards just slightly older than Naruto who wore a provocative white top, exposing some of her chest. Despite her pretty looks Naruto sensed deception around her like an ore. Sigh. Very well we can ignore the bash actions of fairy tale this time. Oryx said reluctantly as the other members grumbled. Naruto Uzumaki what happened to the lullaby flute? It disappeared and was not retrieved after the fight. Oryx asked Naruto sharply as Naruto reached into his pocket and pulled out the broken halves of lullaby, with gasps being heard. You mean this? Naruto asked rhetorically as shouts were once again heard. Blasphemy. Destroying council property like that is a crime. Lock him up. How dare he? He is out of control. Naruto Uzumaki explain yourself at once. Or demanded with a barely controlled rage. I stopped lullaby and made sure it could not be used by any more dark guilds ever again. Naruto explained slowly as if talking to small children making the magic council even more outraged. 
Why would you destroy it completely when we could simply reseal it away after the demon was defeated? Seagrain decided to ask resting his face into his hands. Why would you keep it intact? Naruto asked furiously and before anyone could retort he continued. This whole mess started when Dark Wizards broke the seal and planned to use it on innocent people. The way I see it by destroying the flute completely it can never be used again, and you don't have to worry about sealing it up again. Naruto told them coolly. It is not any wizard's decision to make on what happens to the tools. A member yelled at him as he glared back. What about the king? Naruto asked with a sadistic grin, seeing the horrified looks on most members of the council. I am sure he would love to hear how his magic council would rather seal away a dangerous object and risk it being used on the public rather than destroying the evil magic outright him. Naruto asked enjoying the looks on the old crony's face. As much as they hated it, they knew the king would dismiss them if it looked like they were more worried about power and public imagine than keeping security around Fiori. No charges. You are free to go now. Oryx said gritting his teeth as Naruto gave him up bow. Don't bother sending a carriage I am sure I can run home myself. I am sure your poor old backs would need them more. Naruto said with a mock as every hologram except Haltier and Seagrain vanished. Naruto Yuzumaki send my regards to Urza for me, would you? I hear she has gotten rather pretty recently. Seagrain told him making Naruto narrow his eyes in protectiveness. Something about Jello and Seagrain made him on edge. Naruto I would like a word if you would. Altier asked with a pleasing, seductive but dangerous smile, as Seagrain gave her an amused look. No thanks. You look pretty but have lips like a dangerous snake. Naruto told her with a glare as he walked off. Altier eyes narrowed as she thought can he see through my mask. Most boys become pretty when I smile at them, but he looked me in the eye and warned me off. Seagrain laughed and told her haha Naruto Yuzumaki told you off good. Altier gave a dry laugh as Seagrain once again went over his plan with her. Little did he know he was nothing but a pawn in her plans. Naruto ran home at a casual pace arriving back in Magnolia Town in just under an hour as he walked back into the guild halls with a grin. Miss me guys. He asked as everyone ran up to him. How is it my boy? Makarov asked in concern knowing the magic council would use any excuse to blame them. Free of all charges. Naruto told him smugly as the guild cheered. So how did the fight end? Who won? Naruto asked everyone as everyone looked at the annoyed Natsu who had a lump on his head. Well after you left Urza decided to call the fight off to wait for you. As you can see Natsu didn't take it well and Urza wasn't happy for his defiance. Lucy explained as Urza sent him a warm smile. I don't care what that Seagrain wants with Urza. I will protect her and everyone else no matter what. Naruto thought in determination as he smiled back at Urza. But first I gotta find a job for me and Lucy to do so she can get some more money in her savings. Naruto mused as the party continued. Suddenly a wave on tiredness hit Naruto and every member of Fairy Tail. Naruto magic reserves and chakra prevented him from falling asleep, but he could detect the magic trying to influence him. Here it comes again. Makarov said with a sigh as every member except himself and Naruto fell asleep. Naruto eyes widened when he saw Lucy about to crash her head on the table, Mira about to fall face first into the bar table, and Urza about to fall out of her chair. Making two seal less shadow clones, he quickly grabbed Lucy into his arms, and sent a clone to Urza and Mira in less than a moment. They grabbed the S-Class wizards into their arms, and quickly ran back to Naruto's table, setting the girls gently besides Naruto and Lucy at their table before dispelling. Naruto gently set Lucy across from him in a comfortable position, as Makarov sent him a grateful smile. Little did they know a blonde man on the second floor was watching this with an intrigued look and savage grin on his face. Master who is this man? The new man covered in a mask and a cloak that hid his entire body asked. The only noteworthy thing about him was a wooden staff he carried in his right hand. Misuka meet Naruto Yuzumaki our new Stess class wizard. Makarov told him while Naruto had him a wary look. After a moment Mystica nodded before taking a job request with his left hand and started walking away. I shall be back again. Misuka told his master blankly. Wait undo your sleeping spell first. Makarov told him sternly. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Misuka counted as he was gone by the time one was said, and everyone woke up groggily. Damn it not again. Grey complained rubbing the sleepiness out of his eyes. Urza and Mira looked around confused sure they were not at Naruto's table before they slept. What was that? Lucy asked in annoyance. Misugan supposedly shows up once in a while, but puts everyone to sleep, so no one besides Master has ever seen his face. Khan explained until they heard laughter from above. I have seen his face. Misugan is just a bit shy. A blonde-haired man with iPhone said. Laxus. Natsu glared as Laxus just smiled cockily from the second floor. Of course, new blondie there was awake too. He even put Urza and Mira in a nice position before they slept. Isn't that nice? Laxus mocked as everyone turned to Naruto who glared at Laxus. Something about his attitude just made Naruto on edge. I hear you beat Urza newbie. Don't think that's anything to brag about as I am fairy tale's strongest wizard not her. Laxus declared as Naruto stepped up towards Laxus. Urza gripped her fist angrily. She had no problem losing a fight to Naruto who fought her, but to be mocked by Laxus set her on edge. Laxus come down here and fight me. 
Natsu yelled with fire ignited. Come up here and fight unless you are not ready yet. Laxus retorted mockingly. Natsu yelled ready to punch Laxus until Makarov's massive enhanced fist pinned him down. No, you are not allowed up there yet Natsu. Makarov said sternly. How about you blondie? Ready to play with the big boys. Laxus asked pointing at an infuriated Naruto. I don't care what you have to say about me, but when you mock my friends you go too far. Naruto yelled as wind gathered his hand while Laxus gathered lightning around his. Everyone stood on edge as the tension rose between the two S-class blonde wizards. It looks like a fight was going to occur until Makarov went full giant form after letting Natsu go. There will be no fighting between S-class wizards without my say-so. Makarov declared as Naruto and Laxus glared at each other. After a tense moment they deactivated their magic while Laxus walked away with a grunt. Those matter anyways. When I become master, I will get rid of all the weaklings either way. Laxus promised as he walked out the doors. Woe's that jerk? Lucy asked with a pow crossing her arms above her chest. That's Laxus Dreer. The master's grandson. Mira said with a sigh as Lucy gave her an incredulous look. How can that jerk be related to Master Makarov? They are nothing alike. Lucy asked in shock as Mira gave a giggle, while Naruto suppressed a smile. He remembered old man Six Paths telling him that children do not always inherit the strengths of their parents, so he assumed it stood to reason personalities did not get passed on through generations. What did Lexus mean when he said he was going to be master? Lucy asked as Mira and Urza looked down. You are not really telling me that jerk will be guild master one day. Lucy asked a little afraid. Sadly, Lucy Lexus is likely the next in line if something happens to the master. Mira acknowledged sadly as Lucy gasped and Naruto frowned. He knew some of the hookages were related or at least taught by one of the others, but he didn't think it was right that Laxus should become master, just because he was Makarov's grandson. Don't worry too much about it Lucy. We should instead be looking for a new job soon. Urza said soothingly pointing at the job board on the first floor, as Lucy looked confused. Why can't we go for the ones on the second floor? Lucy asked in confusion as Urza sighed. You see those jobs up there are S-class or higher, so only S-class wizards can take them. They are much more dangerous, but the pay is worth more. Mira explained as Lucy gulped. Yeah I think I am fine. No amount of jewels is worth my life. Lucy said in a depressed voice as the S-class wizards gave her a laugh. In our guild we have six and three of them are at this table. Mira said excitedly as Urza and Naruto smirked. Well anyways I think I will turn in as the last couple of days have been so exhausting. Bye everyone. Lucy announced as she waved to everyone and walked out the guild hall. Soon everyone started going back to hot air homes with nobody noticing Natsu and happy looking at the second floor door with the evil grins. Naruto grumbled to himself as he thought that Laxus would be trouble in the future, if his attitude was anything to go by. Little did he know his own teammates would be more a drag the next morning. As soon as he walked out and nobody was looking, he teleported using the hair Shinjutsu into his house. Due to being the seal and barrier creator he was the only one who could teleport into his own home. He cooked himself a quick meal and went to sleep unbeknownst to him thinking of a certain blonde, model and even night in his dreams that he forgot the next morning. The next morning Naruto woke up a bit later than usual. He usually woke up just after dawn for some daily training and exercise, but he figured he deserved a break from all of the recent events. He had slept till just past noon. He had discovered after arriving here that instead having dreams his consciousness could enter the tail beast sanctuary while he slept. He had spent a few hours inside there just talking with all of the tail beasts inside of him. For him it was a reminder of the world he had chosen to leave behind, while the tail beasts were happy talking with the prophesized savior and their partner. After waking up and making himself a quick breakfast, he did something that was basically routine if he was at home or on Tenru Island. Pray to his parents and his godfather even though they were in a different world and no longer alive. It helped reaffirm his belief that the choice he made was the right one, knowing they were true heroes like he strived to be. Hey dad. I haven't had to use chakra much, but if you were here with me, I am sure you would love to learn from this world. Naruto said to a plaque dedicated to his father. The plaque said Minato Namakis, loving father, fastest ninja to ever live. Pervy Sage. I am sure you would love this world as for some reason almost every girl is super big in the chest area. Naruto said with a flat tone and sweat drop to a plaque dedicated to Jiraiya the Sanin. The plaque said Jiraiya Sensei, proud super pervert, greatest sensei ever, man who wanted true peace. Hey mom. I have still tried to live with the lessons you taught me when I was a baby. The hardest one of choosing a girl since it is also confusing what some of my new friends who are girls means to me. I still wish you were here to tell me what do. I love you all. Naruto said quietly with a single tear running down his face as he closed his eyes in prayer. The plaque said Kashina Yuzumaki, baddest mom, beautiful hair, loving mother, person I wish I could talk to most. The tailed beasts inside of him stayed quiet, but they all could see Kurama hang his head down with some shame visible. Despite Naruto repeatedly saying he did not blame Kurama for his parents' deaths, Kurama knew he was responsible. Even if he had not driven his claw through their bodies, his attempts of freedom forced Minato to use a justice that resulted in his death, and the removal of him would have eventually led to Kashina death one way or another.
Naruto then walked to the guild ready to take on a job with Lucy like he promised the night before, although he had a feeling that Natsu would want to tag along. Much to his surprise, when he got to the guild everyone was on high alert and somber. Eyes what's up? Naruto shouted as he entered the guild. Everyone inside jolted up and rushed to Naruto to his surprise. Thank god Naruto-kun. Something terrible has happened. Mira said in relief as Naruto gave her a look of worry. What happened? Naruto asked in concern. Natsu, happy and Lucy stole last class job during the night and ran off to do it. Mira said with a frown. Those idiots. Naruto said with a sigh and a hint of disappointment. So what is being done to bring them back? Naruto asked as he knew that even simple S class jobs would be too much for the team of Natsu, Happy and Lucy. I have sent Gray to bring them back, and I will punish them for breaking one of the guild's rules. Makarov said gravely as he sat at the bar with a beer half drunk. Naruto hummed as he looked thoughtful. What's wrong Naruto Nai? Lasana asked. Gray might be able to bring them back, but he could just as easily join them on the job instead. Naruto said after a moment of thought. This greatly shocked everyone, but none so much as Urza who walked urgently to Naruto. Why would Grey approve of doing something so foolish? Urza demanded with a scowl on her face. For the same reason Natsu and Happy convinced Lucy to go on S-class job without telling anyone. Naruto answered with a frown. As everyone looked confused at him, he decided to elaborate. Urza and I are the same age as Natsu is now, but we have been S-class for several years now, while Natsu's power is still only at A-class. Natsu and Grey probably feel the need to prove themselves, and they think beating this S-class job is the way to do it. Naruto said out loud as everyone's eyes widened in realization. Those idiots. Master I request to bring them back right now for punishment. Urza asked Makarov urgently who looked thoughtful. Wait. Let us wait for a few hours to see if they return. If they return voluntarily then the punishment will be lighter, but if they don't return, I will go with Urza and bring them back for sure. Naruto suggested while well, Urza frowned but not at her agreement. Very well. Urza and Naruto will go to Galuna Island to bring back if they have not returned by sundown. Makarov announced as everyone gave a sigh of relief, as two S-class wizards would soon bring back the reckless team. Naruto walked over to the bar where Mir resumed bartending with a massive smile, seeing Naruto again. Hey Mir. You rest class. Why didn't you volunteer to bring them back? Naruto asked as Mir huffed her cheeks cutely. Silly Naruto-kun. As bad as they think Urza would be bringing them back I would break all their bones, so they called to escape before bringing them back. Mir said with a dark smile making everyone besides Urza shudder. Just kidding. Mir giggled as Naruto laughed nervously, although he thought Mir may not be 100% kidding. Honestly I am really disappointed in them thinking that doing a single S-class job would be a shortcut to make them S-class. Naruto mused as everyone listened closely. In life there are no shortcuts to become S-class or getting stronger besides hard work and having the support of your friends. Naruto declared as most of the wizards looked at him in admiration. Mir openly smiled and blushed at his words. Urza gave him a look of respect, while Makarov could not be prouder of him. Hey Urza do you want to do something while we wait to see if they come back? Naruto asked the redeed as Mir frowned. Urza realized that it would not worth doing a job in the short time thought for a minute. Perhaps you can accompany me to taste some delicious cakes around Magnolia. Urza suggested as she also realized she had not had time to enjoy the simpler things recently. Naruto chuckled and nodded letting Urza take the lead as they left the guild hall to walk around to various bakeries in Magnolia town. Urza quickly discovered that despite not loving sweets as much as she did Naruto did enjoy sweets like her. The two class wizards had a fun afternoon hanging just chatting and eating sweets until the deadline drew near. They both walked to the guild hall where two neither of their surprised Grey, Natsu, Lucy and Happy were not inside. An enraged Urza crackled her knuckles menacingly and cried out okay time's up. Now we are going to get them back to face punishment. Urza started walking out of the guild without waiting for Naruto. Naruto said with a nervous chuckle, don't worry master I will make sure Urza does not hurt them too bad. Naruto gave a thumbs up to seal the promise as he ran after the irate knight. Makarov gave a sigh of relief as he was afraid Urza would lack any kind of restraint, but Naruto would keep Urza focused. Now where do we get a boat? Urza asked as she and Naruto walked to the harbor with no ships round. Don't worry about it. I got this. Naruto told her with a grin as she raised an eyebrow waiting for him. He took out a small strange capsule that had the word boat on it, before he tossed it into the water. Urza was going to ask him why he was tossing that away, but to her shock, there was a puff of smoke. Before the capsule hit the water she heard a splash from inside the smoke and saw a shadow. After the smoke cleared she gasped a speedboat that was reasonably big was suddenly in the water where the capsule was. What was that? Urza asked in amazement as she and Naruto stepped into the bat with Naruto setting you of the controls. Oh? This is a boat from West City transformed by their Capsule Corporation technology. Naruto told her as she blinked. She had heard of West City and their advanced technology for innovations without using magic. When did you buy a boat from them? She asked as she had heard West City technology was effective but expensive. Naruto looked nervous I got one on my last job with Mir-chan to West City. The mayor was so grateful for the help he offered me this boat. 
I tried to refuse, but he insisted so I took it as well. Naruto admitted as only Mira knew of his job to that city. Urza looked impressed as the boat started up and zipped across the water at high speed. Naruto told her it would likely take a few hours to get to the island, so she decided to take a small nap in the pantry, which had blankets as well. Seeing Urza asleep Naruto felt no reason not to summon a shadow clone to pilot the boat, while he laid back and relaxed. He did a hobby that Shikamaru was well known to do cloud watching. After a few hours Naruto felt the boat start to slow down. Boss we are here. His clone told him before dispelling. Naruto nodded before he turned off the engine to go wake up Urza. Urza wake up we are here. Naruto said softly gently shaking Urza's shoulder. She blinked for a few seconds to get the sleep out of her eyes, before she is alert again. Yes. Let us go. Urza announced as they went back up with Naruto pointing to the island as a part the boat. I sense Lucy's magic power weakening over there, so I think we should go after her first. Naruto suggested pointing in a direction as they walked onto the beach. Naruto had returned the boat back into capsule form, so nobody would try to steal it while they were gone. Urza thought for a minute before nodding as she agreed it was the best move. Naruto and Urza instantly started running towards Lucy's location. After a few minutes they arrived to a different part of the beach to a bizarre situation in Naruto's opinion. Lucy was on her back exhausted while a rock golem was poised to crush her with him sending small amounts of magic connecting the golem to a shaky pink haired woman. He also saw a rat in the corner about to strike. Naruto pointed to Urza and the rat which made Urza not a Shiran sword in hand towards the huge rat. Now my lovely rock doll. Crusher. Shiri said with glee as she barely held on with the last of magic being used. The rock doll obeyed her commands as it raised its foot up. No I can't move. Lucy thought to herself as she closed her eyes expecting pain. After a few moments she still felt nothing until she heard a family voice. Need a hand Lucy. Naruto said with a grin as Lucy widened her eyes with happiness and glee. Naruto. You are here. Lucy said happily before she realized Naruto was holding on to the rock golem foot with one hand. What's wrong crush them. Sherry said in frustration as her rock doll was stuck unable to escape the grasp on Naruto's hand. Sorry lady, but nobody hurts my friends and gets away with it. Naruto said coolly as Lucy's eyes sparked touched by Naruto's words. Naruto tugged making the rock golem fall towards him, and to Sherry's shock, he punched the golem with one punch, destroying it completely. No. Angelica avenge me. Sherry said dramatically as she felt the last of her magic disappear with the destruction of her golem. She slumped over and gasped in horror to see a red-haired woman walk past her beloved Angelica who was knocked out. Before Sherry could say another word, Urza ran and punched her in the gut knocking her out. Seeing as Lucy could not move Naruto pulled her into his arms once again as Lucy had a mild blush. Lucy would you like to explain yourself? Urza asked angrily as she held a terrified happy by his tail. He had come back to check on Lucy only to be caught by Urza before he could fly away. Lucy whimpered and stammered too afraid to talk, so Naruto decided to be the peacekeeper. Urza let's find the others first and let explain themselves first okay. He suggested while Urza sighed and nodded. Lucy gave Naruto a grateful look as he sent her a small grin in response. After tying a rope to his stomach so he could not escape Urza had happy to recon until he found where the villagers had relocated themselves. They entered the new spot while Urza roughly tied up Lucy's hands and not her whole body after Naruto's protest that she was still injured. Urza kept a hold of Happy's rope while they waited for Grey and Natsu to show up. Several minutes later an injured but bandaged Grey walked in surprise to see Naruto and Urza. Naruto. Urza. What is going on? Why are Happy and Lucy tied up like this? Grey asked but flinched when Urza gave her a dark glare. Grey where is Natsu? She asked impatiently as Naruto just watched silently in the corner. Well he and I got separated a while ago, but I am sure he is still around here. Grey told her as she sighed. Very well. I will now hear what you have to say for yourselves. Urza said with a black expression. For the next several minutes Grey and Lucy explained about the job, the demon hidden in the temple, and the curse affecting the townspeople, while both Naruto and Urza were silent. After a moment Urza said emotionlessly Grey, once we find Natsu we are heading back to Fairy Tale. This got shock gasps from Lucy and Grey, while Naruto frowned. Urza, I know we broke the guild's rule, but these people need our help. Lucy protested, but flinched when Urza's glare turned to her. And? Urza said flatly as her expression did not change. Urza. Let us finish this job at least and save these people. Grey protested angrily as Urza looked unmoved. This job is posted across all the guilds in Fiori. Another guild can handle it once we leave as this was not an approved job. Urza said coolly refusing to back off. When Grey looked ready to argue she summoned a sword pointing at him threateningly. Seeing this Naruto knew he had to step in. Naruto walked in between Urza and Grey, so Urza lowered her sword down. Urza is right, people who break the rules are trash. Naruto said seriously as Lucy lowered her head down in shame, Urza nodded approvingly, while Grey glared. However, those who abandon their comrades are worse than that so I am choosing to become trash to stop becoming worse. Naruto announced passionately as he stood with Grey. Urza's eyes as she became speechless, Lucy looked at Naruto with star-filled eyes, while Grey's respect for Naruto skyrocketed. 
Urza was still indecisive, so Naruto decided to add the cherry on top. Besides Fairy Tail's reputation will plummet when everyone hears two S-class wizards quit a job halfway through. Naruto said with a wink as Urza blinked and scowled. After a minute she sighed and cut Lucy and Happy Binds away. Very well. They can finish their punishment after we finish the job. Urza declared as Lucy and Grey cheered while Naruto smiled. The group then heard a loud rumbling in the distance as Lucy shouted guys it must be the temple. Natsu is probably the cause. Grey said as everyone agreed and they started running in that direction. Well there and Grey explained his past with the demon Delior and how his teacher sealed it away using ice shell. Naruto was in particular interested in a spell that sealed away a target in exchange for the caster life force. He thought it was similar to the reaper death seal. However, Kurama decided to interject it is not the same Naruto. From what I can understand the ice shell keeps the target sealed in this world, meaning it can be broken. That moon drip can influence and melt it since the target is still in this world. However, the reaper death seal seals away the soul of the target, which makes it impossible for the seal to be broken, unless they are willing to kill themselves using that accursed Uzumaki reaper mask. Naruto teased Kurama that he was starting than people thought before he cut off the connection as they neared the tower. Listen up. Lucy and I will take care of the followers on top to stop the ritual and moon trip. Naruto and Grey will go below the temple and take down Lion and anyone else. Urza commanded as everyone ran in their own paths. When they got inside they were stopped by Lion, but Grey decided to fight him alone, while Naruto went on ahead to fight the last lackey's ulti. But look Grey. Naruto shouted as he went past Grey and Lion deeper into the temple. That must be the demon. Naruto thought as he saw a massive demon somewhat smaller than Lullaby, but bigger than Cell. It was trapped in an ice barrier like Grey told them, but his head was no longer frozen, and it looked like the ice was melting even now. That must be the moon drip effect to dispel magic. Naruto analyzed before he heard a loud explosion. Naruto. Natsu yelled as he turned around to see the S-class wizard walk towards him. Add Mu Salamander. Zulti yelled gleefully as he used Arc of Time to control an orb, and smash a distracted Natsu into a wall trapping him. Damn it. Natsu yelled as he struggled to get free. Well now that he is out of the way I get to play with the infamous Naruto Uzumaki. S-class extraordinaire. Zulti said with a grin as Naruto stepped forward. For some reason I feel like I should know you, but I can't quite out it in down. Naruto told Salty who looked confident but was sweating on the inside. Damn it I was not expecting him of all people to interfere. Altio thought furiously as he used Arc of Time to control a dozen robs at once. He then launched then all at Naruto who looked bored. After the smoke cleared to Altio's shock Naruto was standing in the same spot, but the orbs were surrounding him with not one hitting him. You are a fast one around you. Doesn't matter though. Nobody can escape my magic. Zulti claimed as he kept launching balls by speeding their time up, and even trying to stop it in mid-air to confuse Naruto. To his frustration Naruto effortlessly dodged every attempt without with a bored look. It won't work. It doesn't matter how you affect their time you won't hit me. Naruto told Zulti. He once again dodged another assault, but this time leapt up and flipped in mid-air. Sky Devil Force Palm. Naruto said as he launched a burst of wind at Zulti. Zakti was quick enough to jump backwards as the air bomb destroyed the platform he was standing on, and made the cave creak. Before they could continue their fight, everyone heard a massive roar. As a loud screeching could have heard. It can't be. Naruto said in shock. It is. Zulti said with glee. Giliora has been revived. Naruto and Zulti said at the same time. I have waited all these years and it has finally come. My time to surpass her is here. Lion said as he crawled exhausted from his fight with Grey towards the demon. Hum, it seems the odds are no longer in my favor. Farewell for now. Zulti chuckled as he ran off before anyone could stop him. TCCHH. He is nothing the real problem is Deliora is back now. Naruto mused as Grey entered the cave. Damn it you can't even stand up let alone fight. Natsu yelled at Lion since he got free of the wall finally. I will be DL Lion said before Grey went behind him and chopped him on the neck. Lion instantly collapsed as Grey gave him a look of pity. Don't worry I will clean up your mess like our master did for us. Grey said coolly as he crossed his arms in axe shape. Ice shell. Grey announced before Natsu and Naruto could protest. Before the spell could take effect Deliora roared and shot a beam of energy at Grey. Arg. Grey shouted in pain as the beam hit him, and the spell was cancelled. Grey. Natsu shouted in concern as Deliora started firing beams randomly at the ceiling. This caused the cave to start to shudder as debris started falling. Damn it at this rate it is going to collapse the whole cave on us. Naruto yelled in realization as he avoided another rock from above. Natsu. Grey. Take Lion and get out of here. I will take care of the demon outside. Naruto commanded. Natsu was about to argue, but Grey shook his head as he picked up Lion. Be careful okay. Grey told Naruto who gave him a thumbs up. I will never let me friends die. Naruto told him as Grey gave a nod. Grey and Natsu along with Lion, ran though the entrance as the cave continued to get weaker and weaker. As soon as his friends were safely out, he gave the demon a look of determination. Now it is just you and me big guy. Naruto announced as the demon yelled in response. 
Naruto put a massive amount of Devil Slayer magic into his hand and leaped towards De Lior. It tried to punch him, but he swerved in midair and did a massive blow at the demon's chest, sending it flying through the cave and into the ocean many miles away. Meanwhile outside the cave several minutes after, Bears and Lucy had joined up with Grey and Natsu. This is bad. Suma feels even more powerful than before it was sealed. Grey revealed to the shock of the others. How could that be? It was sealed by your master all those years ago. Lucy asked in shock. Could it be? That the moon drip not only released the demon from its seal, but somehow gave the demon more strength, Urza said in horror as Grey glared at the prom line. We need to help Naruto now. Natsu yelled as everyone nodded and prepared to head back into the cave. Help you? Naruto said playfully as he appeared behind them without a scratch except some slightly damp clothes. Naruto. Everyone yelled as they gave him looks of relief. Is it done? Urza asked referring to the demon. Yup. I guess I can be called the demon killer huh? That is three for me. Naruto said cheerfully as everyone sweat dropped at his attitude. Naruto thought back to what happened minutes ago. After sending the demon flying Naruto flew towards it at high speed using Sky Devil Slayer magic. He arrived to see the demon already standing with its magic power keeping the water away from it. So, it looks like you are a toy huh? Naruto remarked as the demon gave him a look of loathing. That magic a growl could have heard from Delior. What you can talk. Naruto said in mild shock as a thought Delior was a mindless beast. That accursed magic used to slay my brethren. Devil Slayer magic. Ha. Delior hissed ignoring the jab at its intelligence. What gives the right for humans to slay us huh? An2. Delior shouted in hate as it glared at Naruto. Is it because we live forever unlike you mortals? Or is it arrogance for killing what is different than your species? Delior asked as it charged a beam intending to end the life of the human in front of it. It only saw a flash of light before it felt great pain with its beam dissipated. Funny I never said I was culling you because you are a demon. Naruto remarked from behind Delior. Delior could only look down in horror as a giant hull appeared on its chest with cracks appearing and spreading across. It looked behind at the human and was shocked by what it saw. Naruto had yellow energy covering his entire body with black markings. The energy looked like yellow flames while one hand was outstretched. It realized somehow this human had torn through its body before it could react. I killed you so you would no longer hurt my friends anymore. Naruto revealed with a serious expression. Human. This cannot be the end. Praise Lord Zeref. Bansai. Bansai. It shouted as the hole in its chest expanded and it turned to dust in the next moment. Well you haven't used my chakra in some time. Kurama remarked from inside the seal. I guess I haven't. Naruto agreed as he deactivated chakra mode and starting flying back to his friends, since he could tell they were at the cave again. Then flashback, Urza reminded them that breaking the curse was the S-class job not defeating the demon, so they went back to the village. The elder insisted that destroying the moon would be the solution, and much to Lucy, and Grey's shock Naruto and Urza agreed. Do you want me to toss a race and shuriken up there? Naruto offered, but Natsu angrily said he wanted to destroy the moon. Urza sighed and allowed Natsu to use his fire to booster her throwing strength, and use a spear enhanced with light magic to throw. Naruto only grinned while Lucy and Grey looked as shock when the spear hit something and cracked the sky. It turned out that the moon drip released an evil membrane surrounding the island, and by destroying it the villagers' memories returned. The villagers were really demons who could transform into humans, and not humans cursed into demons. They decided to celebrate, and even the troublemakers were forgiven and allowed to party with them all night long. By next morning Lion and his friends had already disappeared, and the village elder was insisting on paying them. Please Urza Sen let us pay you and your friends the 7 million reward. The village elder pleaded. Grey, Natsu and Lucy eyes widened in greed as Naruto just looked intently at Urza. It is hard to refuse, but we must. This was not an official sanctioned job, so it would bring shame to our guild if we accepted the money. Urza declared as their heads dropped, and the elder looked disappointed. Naruto leaned over and whispered into both the elder and Urza's ears. After a moment they all nodded. The village elder put something into Naruto's hands as they said their goodbyes. Here, Lucy. Naruto said as he handed her a golden celestial key and 70 jewels. Wait I get all this. Lucy asked in shock as she put the money away and held the key in reverence. Consider this your month's rent Lucy. Naruto informed her with a grin. Why does only Lucy get money? Natsu whined before Urza bumped him on the head. If you guys wanted to go on an S-class job you call Vast and Urza or I are both would happy to take you along. Naruto chided as Lucy looked wide-eyed. Wait I thought only S-class wizards could take S-class jobs. Lucy asked in confusion as Natsu and Grace suddenly looked very nervous. Naruto sighed and explained how non-S-class wizards could go on S-class jobs, if they followed S-class wizard with the pay usually being split in favor of the S-class wizard. That is why you don't get anything but a punishment. Next time you trick someone to prove a point it will be a lot worse. Urza warned Natsu. Next time you are ordered to bring someone home do it. Urza yelled at Grey as both boys looked terrified. Naruto then put his boat back in the water, which impressed Lucy and horrified Natsu, before they were on their way back to Fairy Tail. 
Lucy kept asking what the punishment was with Natsu and Grey being terrified, Naruto shrugging and Urza just smiling in amusement. Hmm. I wonder how Naruto is doing. Mavis thought out loud as she was sitting on a branch kicking her feet childishly. After she was cursed, died and came back as a thought projection, time for her meant very little. She just passed days without even really thinking about it, but ever since she met Naruto seven years ago on her birth island, things had changed again. She looked forward to each day when Naruto woke up, had chats and planned out each day. She even walked with him off the island when he had errands to do outside of their little home. Since she was essentially a spirit she didn't have to worry about people seeing her, but Naruto did have to make conscious efforts not to look like he was talking to himself when they were on public. Naruto was also the only being she knew who could actually touch her ghost, making her feel like she was alive, and able to enjoy the sensations of touch which she solely lacked. They had discussed a theorizing it had to do with Naruto inheriting Hagamoro's Yang Chakra, but neither of them could prove it conclusively. They had decided just to enjoy the hugs and close contact for what it was. Mavis admitted to herself she enjoyed it more than strictly needed, while it seemed for Naruto it was just friendly contact. Those seven years learning magic, AN2, made Mavis remember what is was to have fun and enjoy life instead of just existing waiting for something to happen. It had only been a short while since Naruto left, but Mavis already missed him greatly. Maybe I should go to Magnolia Town to go visit him. Mavis thought as she waited in her mind. For all time's sake and everything. She justified it as a mild blush appeared on her face, as she realized she sounded a bit clingy. Mavis decided to think it over on what would happen if she went up to Naruto right now and announced. Naruto I am back. Mavis yelled as Naruto looked over in surprise. Mavis Chan. What are you doing here? Naruto asked in shock as Mavis started running towards him. I miss you. Mavis shouted as she leapt into his warm arms. Naruto caught Mavis and held her close as she whispered, I miss you too Mavis Chan. Mavis blushed and giggled as she imagined a happy reunion between the two of them. Then Mavis eyes widened as she thought of another very different scenario, but equally possible one. Naruto I am back. Mavis shouted as Naruto looked at her shock before he became frantic. Before Mavis could react, Naruto vanished with his ninja speed, picked her up and carried her to an empty alley before anyone could see. What are you doing? We agreed I would come to you when I was ready. Naruto hissed in annoyance as Mavis whimpered. I just wanted to see you again Mavis said sadly as Naruto sighed. Look Mavis I care for you, but you are being a bit too clingy right now. Naruto announced as she started crying. Mavis started to have an imaginary storm cloud above her head, as she looked depressed at the thought that Naruto would reject her, as she came back unannounced. He wouldn't do that would he? Mavis thought for a moment before chuckling. Nah but I don't think popping up out of nowhere would ebb okay either. I think it would be best if I just follow him for a bit to see how he's doing. Mavis decided to herself after thinking it over. Mavis said goodbye to all of the animals on Tenru Island, even though she was not quite sure if they could actually see her. They seemed to react to her presence, but she did not talk woodland animals so she could only guess. She then flew towards Magnolia Town ready to start her little quest. Meanwhile in Magnolia Town, man time to relax. Naruto said happily as he walked to the guild hall. After they arrived back in Magnolia Town, Urza told the three troublemakers they would still get punished by Makarov for going S-class job without an S-class wizard to supervise. Grey and Natsu had looked terrified making Lucy fear for the worst. However, Makarov said he would let them enjoy this one day of peace, before he would enact the punishment to build suspense. Hi guys it's me. Naruto shouted as he entered the guild hall with everyone giving him waves. He noticed Mir, her siblings, his team, Makarov, Kana, Wakaba, Mikao, Romeo were the members currently inside the guild. Thank god we get to skip the punishment till tomorrow. Natsu sang happily as Makarov just smirked. Mir-chan it looks like due to all the recent celebrations we are pretty low on supplies. Do you think you can go to the market and pick some up? Makarov asked the model who nodded. Of course, master. Can I get somebody to help carry the bags home? Mira asked with a glint in her eyes as Makarov smirked knowing where this was going. Sure ask anyone in the guild you like. Makarov relied as several people looked ready to offer their aid. Mirani. I am a real man and real men help out when needed. Elfman offered with a grin. It's okay Elfman. I am sure Lasana would need you more at the guild. Mira said kindly as Lasana nodded her head. Elfman was not offended and just gave a thumbs up. Well Mira-chan if the bags are too much for you I can offer to take some off your hands. It can be treated as a date. Wakaba told her suggestively as every female in the guild shuddered in disgust. Not a chance. Mira said flatly as Wakaba hung his head at the rejection. Mira-chan HOW Macau asked excitedly. Mira did not even offer a response, but her glare sent him scurrying. Mira-san may be super nice, but she also scary too. Lissy noted with a scared expression. This got a laugh from Lasana. The Amerini is nice to all of us, but she hates being asked out. She doesn't mind people looking at her in the magazine, but she almost maimed a guy for asking for a private show one time. Lasana remarked as Lucy looked at Mira with respect and fear. Mira then walked up to Naruto with a giant smile, as if the rejections had not even occurred. Naruto-kun would you like to help me? Mira asked with a beautiful warm smile. 
Naruto thought it about it for less than a second. Getting a super pretty, nice girl to ask him out for a fun little chore. No brainer. Consider it on Mir chan Naruto said with a grin as Mir beamed in response. Mir and Naruto started walking out of the guild with Mir calling behind her. Lasana you are in charge of the bar while I am gone. Lasana shouted god at Mirani. Well she thought do your best Mirani. After the walked out of the guild doors Mir instantly looped her arm around his and snuggled into him. Naruto felt his face turn red as he once again felt Mir's very busty and curvy body press against him. He could even smell the vanilla shampoo of her hair at this range. Mir face smiled happily as she felt Naruto's embarrassment, knowing he enjoyed this like her. Mir chan. What are you doing? Naruto asked as Mir pressed against him like that were in a relationship. Naruto kan do you not like this? Mir asked with a fake pout as Naruto instantly felt bad. Mir chan I don't think there's one guy in all of Fiori or even the world who would not kill to be in my position right now. Naruto told her making Mir giggle. I mean I'm a super lucky to be even considered for something like this, but won't this look bad if people saw us? Naruto asked in a worried tone. He personally did not care what people said about him, but he knew Mira's reputation as a model made her one of the most desired single ladies in Fiori. Mira pouted, but she thought seriously and reluctantly untangled herself from Naruto before they started walking. I guess you are right Naruto-kun. I mean if we were in a relationship it would not matter but we are not in one yet. Mira remarked putting great emphasis on the yet part as Naruto bushed. He really is too easy, and that is one of the reasons it is so easy to love him. Mira thought happily. Naruto and Mir had gone to the market and started selecting the needed groceries for the guild hall kitchen. Unbeknownst to them Mavis was hiding in an alleyway watching Naruto and Mir. Naruto then looked at the alleyway with a strange look as Mir gave him a concerned look. Naruto-kun is something the matter? Mir asked in worry. After a moment Naruto shook his head. Now Mir-chan I just thought I saw something, but I must have imagined it. They went back to talking and picking out groceries. Phew that was close. Mavis sighed in relief as she leaned against the alleyway. She had almost gotten caught by Naruto, but she was quick enough to duck her body into the alleyway before he saw her. She knew only Naruto, and the white-haired girl could see her, but she still wanted to be discreet. She did want to be caught on the off chance Naruto did want to have some space instead of her fussing over him. Mavis peeked out again and looked at the girl Naruto was with. This Mira looks so pretty and she looks like she really does enjoy being with Naruto. Mavis remarked as she looked at Mira with some envy. Her own body and soul halted aging at age 13 due to the curse, so Mavis had her petite figure. However, Mira looked around Naruto's age, and her mature figure would make any woman envious. She had a gorgeous face, well-developed chest and perfect herbless figure. It looks like Mira wants to be more than friends with Naruto, judging by the looks she sent him. Mavis noted, but she knew Naruto was not ready to be in relationships, as a lack of parents made him not have the correct perspective on relationships right now. Meanwhile in fairy tale, how long has it been this changeling spell been activated? Natsu and Lok's body asked urgently. 16 minutes so you have 14 minutes left. Lasana said confidently having decided to keep track of time. We are so screwed. Lucy inside Gray's body whimpered as she started drooling chunks of ice. Back with Naruto. Naruto and Mira had spent the next 8 minutes chatting and buying the rest of the groceries. Mira chan it has been fun, but I sense that our guildmates have gotten themselves into trouble back inside the guild. Naruto told her as she gave him an impressed look. Your ability to sense magic really is amazing Naruto-kun. Mira praises Naruto rubbed his head in embarrassment. Thanks, but do you mind if we cut our time a bit short so I can fix things? Naruto asked as Mira nodded while they walked quickly back to Fairy Tail. Mavis sighed from her hiding spot in the alleyway. I guess Naruto is doing fine. Mavis said in relief as she appeared to fly back to Tenru Island. Mavis Chan if you wanted to know how I was doing, you called just ask the real me. Naruto voice appeared from behind her. Beak. Mavis yelled in surprise as she leapt up making Naruto laugh. Naruto how are you right shadow clones? Mavis said in realization. Boss sensed you right away before, but thought if you wanted to hide you would have had a good reason. Naruto remarked as he stared at Mavis. I didn't want to intrude on Naruto's time here. Mavis explained as Naruto frowned. Before she could react a clone of Naruto pulled Mavis into a hug, holding one hand behind her head and one on her small of her back. Naruto Mavis squeaked as she felt her face turn red. They had hugged many times on Tenru Island, but never so suddenly. It's okay Mavis-chan. Naruto feels you are one of his important people and promises he will find a way to get rid of your loneliness for good. Naruto promised as Mavis cried. There will be S-class tests in a few months, so I will see Naruto then. Tell him all this when you dispel won't you? Mavis asked as she pulled away with a watery smile. Naruto's clone gave her a grin as he dispelled and Mavis flew back to Tenru Island. Naruto thought just wait a bit longer Mavis-chan as he and Mavis ran back to guild. Fairy tail guild hall. Even after Levi and team shadow team had come back to the guild, nobody could solve a way to undo the spell. Okay now we're done to the last 10 seconds. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. Mikao said counting back the clock. He had a massive bump on his head from when Natsu in annoyance smashed his head through a table. 
Each second the affected wizard's heart sank. Five, four, three, two. Macau counted just as Naruto's voice appeared from the guild hall doors. Day zero. Naruto shouted as a bright light enveloped the guild hall. A and three. All the wizards who were swapped closed their eyes expecting the worst until the Sano odd voice called out. Everyone I think you are okay. Dot. Lucy, Urza, Lok, Natsu, Grey and Happy opened their eyes and saw they were in their own bodies with their own magic again. They started sharing in pure happiness as Naruto and Mira had walked to the kitchen giving the groceries. Congratulations Naruto. You undid the changeling spell. Nakarov announced as the guild erupted in cheers. Lucy and Urza looked at Naruto with star eyes while the guys gave him nods of respect. I'm sure. But why are you so happy I undid the magic? Naruto asked as everyone gave him looks of shock. Because if you didn't undo it in the first 30 minutes it's permanent. Natsu said indignantly. Who told you that? Naruto asked as everyone pointed to the sweating Makarov. No here is how it goes. The effects last 12 hours and if you don't undo it in the first 30 minutes you can't undo it early. You have to wait the full 12 hours before it deactivates itself. Naruto revealed as the affected wizards looked murderous at Makarov for making them believe it was permanent. AN4 Naruto how about you explain how you undid the magic? Makarov asked as it successfully made the wizards forget their anger at him. Sure. One of my magic is called enchantment magic. It is the ability to pout magic into something or somebody or take it out. Naruto lectured as he used it to give Natsu his Sky Devil Slayer magic. Just as the ecstatic slayer was about to use it, he took the magic away much to the amusement of the guild. The spell I used Days Zero is a spell to remove enchantments placed on people. The changeling spell essentially takes the personality and magic of one person and gives it to another. My spell removed that effect and put everything back to normal. Naruto revealed as the guild gave him another round of applause. Naruto Nai is really Sugo. Lasana said in amazement. He sure is. Mira said with a smile. How many magics does this guy have? Grace said in slight envy. I don't care. It was unfair for him to give me his magic and take it away before I could use it. Natsu whined. It was pretty funny. Lucy said with a chuckle as Natsu grumbled. Naruto sure is something else. Urza said with respect as she watched Naruto try to avoid Kana's attempt to force him to drink with her. After the excitement with the changeling spell was over with everyone decided no jobs for the rest of the day was the better idea. Grey and Lucy still blamed Natsu for reading out the job request and starting the mess in the first place. Makarov was also quick to point out tomorrow they would all receive the promised punishment making Natsu and Grey sweat while Lucy shivered in fear. Afterwards everyone eventually returned to their own homes with Naruto teleporting directly inside once nobody was looking. The only one who knew he could use the Harishin or the fact it could be used with the seals active was Mavis herself while Naruto decided to turn in early. The next morning, he regretted that decision to turn in early, as when he walked to the guild hall he stood outside with the rest of his team in shock and anger. What used to be a nice if not a bit small guild hall was now mostly destroyed, with metal poles still stuck in the roof, and the sides of the building proving without a doubt it was sabotage. They could do something like this. Lucy asked with tears in her eyes as she put her hand over her mouth. Whoever did this is going to pay. Natsu promised with his eyes narrowed, while Grey nodded his head eagerly. It was Phantom Lord. Mira hissed angrily as she and Lasana came out of the guild hall. Phantom Lord. Lucy asked with some confusion as Urza narrowed her eyes. They are a rival guild. They are second strongest guild in Fiori, but their strength rivals ours, with their master being a wizard saint-like master. Urza explained as Lucy looked in fear. Mira seeing no reason to stand out of the guild walked back inside, while Lasana gestured the team to follow. They shortly arrived inside the basement which was mostly intact with the rest of the guild in sour moods, except Makarov who was clearly drunk. Master what shall we do about this? Urza asked calmly but with an edge as she clenched her fists in silent fury. Nothing. Makarov said flatly as a hiccup making Naruto and his teammates glare angrily. What the hell are you talking about Gramps? Natsu shouted as he was restrained by Urza. Why should we stoop so low to fight back with cowards who only attacked when the guild was empty? Makarov retorted rhetorically as Naruto grudgingly nodded his head in agreement. It was like with the Beatles starting the fourth ninja war just to provoke a response. Phantom Lore clearly was trying to achieve the same thing. That's right Natsu. Naruto said somberly as Natsu and Grey looked at him in betrayal. If we fight back against Phantom Lord it will up starting a guild war. Even if we win the Magic Council could easily try to use this incident to disband the guild, and we would up the real loser. Naruto said with a sigh as Mira and Urza nodded with frowns. Lucy looked at Natsu who looked ready to explode, but a glare from Urza made him simmer down. Glad to see one of you has common sense. Makarov praised before his eyes gleamed. That reminds me. Punishment time. Makarov announced as Natsu and Grey attempted to escape. However, an enlarged hand thumped them quickly into the ground, as Happy cried and tried to wake up Natsu who had been knocked out. Naruto saw a perverted grin on Makarov's face as his eyes focused on Lucy's skirt-covered bottom, as his hand shrunk back to normal size. Just as Makarov was going to punish Lucy by slapping Lucy's bottom Naruto grabbed his hand with a too-sweet grin. 
Master, you weren't planning to spank Lucy, but as punishment, were you? Naruto asked with far too sweet voice as Makarov started sweating. As I believe some would consider that sexual harassment. Naruto warned as he released Makarov's hand as Urza and Mira glared at Makarov for trying to cop a feel of the busty teen. Beep. Lucy squealed as she gripped the bottom of her short skirt as if she felt phantom pain from the attempted assault on her poor bottom. After Makarov was yelled at by both female S-class wizards, Lucy sent a thankful look at Naruto, who just grinned back in response. He could appreciate Lucy and several female wizards' beauty, but he would never try anything like that without permission. Gramps are we really going to leave it like this? Gray asked furiously as he gripped his fist in fury. Maker just continued to drink, so Kana decided to answer you heard Naruto, Gray, it would not worth making a response if we were the ones who got disbanded in the end. Although most of the guild grudgingly agree several members were less pleased about it. This just feels wrong. It is not manly to just take it like this and not fight back. Elfman complained as Lysana just sighed patting her older brother on the shoulder. Though that right. We should be teaching those phantom lord jerks a lesson. Joy said menacingly as Joy nodded his head in agreement. Eyes we can't. We are better than this. Levy tried to calm her teammates down, but this time even their crush on her did not seem bright in their mood much. As Naruto and his team along with Mira sat down at one of the tables they had in the basement, Lucy decided to speak her mind up. Why would Phantom Lord do something like this to us? Makarov hearing this just chuckled mirthlessly and said because they are jealous idiots. As Natsu growled while Naruto just stayed quiet. Jealous? Lucy asked with a head tilt. Urza decided to answer her years ago Phantom Lord used to have the strongest guild in Fiori. However, with myself, Mira and Laxus all rising to S-class ranking in the last three years, the scale have tipped so now Fairy Tail is considered number one. Lucy could not help but feel a sense of pride with being part of this family. It also helps the Rudokan has tipped the scale even more now as he is one of our strongest wizards, and being Urza and my age, the sends a message in itself. Mira added as Naruto got a bit flustered at all the sudden attention. Several wizards grumbled at the strongest part, but nobody was paying attention. It is likely me joining Fairy Tail has spread across the world by now, along with the rumors IMS class has made Phantom Lord realize that our rivalry may be too much to handle if this continues up. Naruto said with a guilty look as he realized he may be part of the reason his guild was being threatened. Naruto was not expecting a slap to happen as everyone suddenly become quiet, as Naruto looked at the furious eyes of Urza with surprise. You idiot. You cannot blame yourself for something like this. Urza shouted at him as Naruto blinked with his face still throbbing. Just right Naruto-kun. Phantom Lord has always wanted to pick a fight with us, and it is likely even without you here it will come down to this. Mira said with a soft chiding voice. Naruto realized he was downing in self-pity, so he just smiled and said thanks Mira-chan, Urza. This got a beaming smile from Mira and a warm smile from Urza. The girl just chuckled as one of their newest members was chided for trying to take on this conflict by himself. Makarov decreed due to the destruction of the main part of the guild, they would spend today relaxing and tomorrow rebuilding with it being pointless to start any new jobs in the meanwhile. So how scary is Phantom Lord compared to us? Lizzy asked as she had heard about other guilds before deciding on Fairy Tail, but Phantom Lord did not seem to stand out. Honestly their overall power is about equal to her own. Mira said gravely. With Naruto-kun we have 6 S-class wizards, plus Master a wizard saint, but Phantom Lord has 5 S-class wizards, and their master is a wizard saint as well. Mira revealed gravely as Lucy gulped. The real problem is currently we have only 3 S-class wizards at Fairy Tail right now, while Phantom Lord's S-class wizards never seem to leave their guild very much from what I heard. Urza added with annoyance as she waved to herself, Mira and Naruto, who all had grim expressions. The Agilderts has been gone for years, Misigan only pops in to do jobs, and Laxus is too stubborn and proud to help us out, no matter what the crisis is. The Cobb amused as everyone knew it was at an all-time low. As the guild was bickering to themselves, Naruto was having a silent conversation with his tail beasts. Naruto. 5S class wizards and a wizard saint would be nothing for you if you used our powers. Kurama noted in his deep voice. You know that's not the way I want to do things here. Naruto retorted as he tailed beasts shuffle around nervously. Just know Naruto-kun if you need help you can always ask. Matatabi said kindly as Naruto looked away. He and Mavis had vowed when he learned magic, he would not use his old powers to solve every problem, and be seen as a conqueror, so he rarely used chakra in the open. Naruto blinked just as Lysana was explaining about Phantom Lord S-class wizards. Lucy. There are four of them called the Element Four. Arya the Wind, Juvia the Water, Sol the Earth and Totemary the Fire. Lysana explained as Lucy blinked realizing there was one more on the list. Finally, there is Gajil the Iron Dragon Slayer, who is rumored to be the most powerful member besides their Master Ose. Lysana said grimly as Lucy blinked. Wait Dragon Slayer. You mean he is like Natsu? Lucy asked as Natsu growled. I totally going to kick that guy's ass for doing this to our guild someday. Natsu promised as Lucy realized being the Iron Dragon Slayer, he was likely the culprit for the attack on the guild hall. 
the Fairy Tale Guild would spend the next few hours unaware of the real attack coming very soon from Phantom Lord. Several hours later in Phantom Lord Real Guild Hall outside Oaktown, Agile Red Fox had returned to his guild a hero for destroying the Fairy Tale Flies Guild Hall, and would hide away successfully as part of a plot to make Fairy Tale provide an unprovoked attack of Phantom Lord. Agile my boy well done. Jose praised with an evil smile as Gadgil chuckled along with the rest of the guild. However, it seems like old Makarov did not take the bait and chosen to not retaliate. Jose noted with a frown. Master let me go back. I will string up a few of those fairy tale losers up, and knowing those sentimental idiots they will fly at us in a rage. Gadgil suggested with a demented grin as Jose looked thoughtful. That won't be necessary. We will simply use the Jupiter Cannon and destroy that bothersome guild once and for all. Jose yelled as Gadgil grin grew and the guild yelled in delight. However, one female wizard was a bit reluctant. Master Jose forgive me, but if we use the Jupiter Cannon will they not destroy Lucy Hurtfilia as well? Juvia Luxor asked timidly referring to their job with Jude Hurtfilia to get his daughter back, not matter what the cost or price. Jose scoffed but smiled at one of his S-class wizards. It is no matter my dear Juvia. I already got a substantial pre-job deposit from that fool, so even if we don't compete the job let's say correctly, there will be nothing he can do if we accidentally kill his daughter along with the guild. Jose chuckled as Juvia still looked unsure. But Master Jose, what about the Magic Council? If we launch the Jupiter Cannon and destroy Fairy Tail, they might be forced to disband us for violating the No Attacking Guilds Treaty. Juvia pointed out as Gadgil scoffed. It was well known the Magic Council hatred of Fairy Tail, but everyone knew if any guild destroyed another guild, it would mean disbandment from the Magic Council. It will not matter. Once we become the strongest guild once again with fairy tale destruction, the Magic Council will have no choice but to ignore this little dispute or face our wrath. Jose said in demented and psychotic voice as the cheers ran. Prepared the headquarters to move and the Jupiter Cannon to fire. Jose ordered as everyone started to disperse. Wait Sol. I have a special assignment for you. Jose told Sol who stopped and turned to face his master. When I go to Magnolia Town and get that blasted guild's attention, I will cause a ruckus making everyone focus on us. The smart move for Makarov would be in the back as a commander, until he must go to block the attack. I want you to hide your magical signature and use your drain magic to suck that old man dry. Jose told Sol who nodded at their secret plans. Without Makarov to stop the first blast they will be forced to sacrifice Urza Scarlet, and without them, it will be easy to pick off the rest of those weaklings. Jose schemed as Sol decided to voice a concern. What about Naruto Uzumaki? If the rumors are true, he might be a problem. Sol said with some worry. If that brat is truly a problem, I will deal with myself. Jose said in a dismissive voice as he did not believe somebody so young could actually be any threat to his guild. Soon fairy tale will be gone, and my guild will have number one again. Jose thought to himself happily as he dismissed Sol. Everyone at fairy tale heard several thumping noises as water and glasses and beer and mugs started to slush around. What's happening? Is it an earthquake? Lucy asked as she started to panic. No, it feels almost like a building is moving but that's impossible. Urza said with narrowed eyes. Everyone get outside now. Naruto yelled as his eyes widened. Instantly everyone ran out and looked across the town to see something far off in distance approaching Magnolia Town. Jose that fool. This will only lead to a full-on war. What is he thinking? Makarov said in frustration as he stayed behind to try to plan a line of defense for the town, as Phantom Lord clearly had no objection involving the innocent in this petty rivalry. He did not notice a shadow approach him with a massive grin. What is that? Mira asked trying to focus on it. Whatever it is, it's coming right towards us. Lasana yelled in fright as everyone got into a line in front of the guild hall. Fairy tale members welcome to your end. Jose magical enhanced voice rang as everyone glared at the moving guild hall in the distance. Wait that is Biska shouted urgently as she used her scope on her gun to focus on the guild hall. What is it Biska? Urza asked having equipped into her flight armor already. Eyes they have a Jupiter cannon mounted on their guild and it's aimed right at us. Biska shouted as everyone eyes widened and they got into defensive positions. The Jupiter Cannon I have only read about that kind of magic. It is said to be able to destroy towns, so if it's aimed at us. Lucy said in shock. It will destroy Magnolia along with the Guild Hall. Gray said in horror as he prepared to create as big of an ice make. Shield as possible. Those bastards. Natsu growled as his right hand light up in fire. I see you have seen our little present for you. Jose said mockingly as he stepped aside to reveal a bloodthirsty gadget. May I introduce you to the man who destroyed your guild? Jose asked with a mock bow. Fairy tale ants. I think I like the decorations I added to your guild hall. It makes it look more like a guild for men instead of little pansies. Gadgil exclaimed chuckling in delight at the anger shout sent his way. This toast makes sense. If he wanted to destroy us, he would have fired that cannon as soon as it was in range, not make a show to let us know he had it. A role in war is if you want to destroy somebody do it before they have time to set up defenses. Catch them off guard not announce your presence. If he wanted to use it as leverage, he would have given us a list of demands. 
It is almost like he is stalling, but why? Naruto thought to himself analyzing the situation. Naruto saw Urza equip into her adamantine armor, which to him made no sense why Ose was still bragging, instead of firing the cannon. Surely he must know Urza can't survive one blast of the cannon, so why not fire it now and cripple us instead of gloating? Naruto kept thinking to himself until he heard a voice. Naruto. There is a mage emitting killing intent inside your guild hall. Kurama informed him as Naruto's eyes whitened. Damn it. I am such an idiot. This is a trap. There after Makarov. Naruto hissed to himself. We are such idiots. Naruto shouted before he sprinted back towards to the guild hall to the shock of his guild mates. Naruto. What's wrong? Lucy shouted after Naruto. The fight is that way. Natsu shouted pointing towards Phantom Tail. Though, it seems like Naruto has figured it out. Too bad he won't make it in time. Ose said in amusement with an evil smirk. How did Naruto find out? Arya has the unique power to erase his magical presence, so not even the most skilled wizard could sense him, yet Naruto clearly found him out. Ose thought to himself. Naruto sprinted through the doors and saw a massive man with his hand towards Makarov, who was still unaware of the danger he is in. Damn it I won't make it in time to stop him. Naruto thought as he saw magic being focused into the air. Then before he could think of anything else his body just moved shoving Makarov aside, as he was forced to take the way of the blast. Ah. Naruto screamed as he felt his magic power sucked out of his body before he felt the sweet embrace of sleep. Makarov grit his teeth in anger as he watched Naruto fall having taken a spell meant for him. Makarov gently picked up Naruto's prone body and cradled it, while Ari cried. Master Ose will be so mad. I failed my mission. I did not get Makarov guild master of fairy tale, but instead Naruto Uzumaki. The shame. Arya sighed not noticing Makarov grow steadily angrier with each word. I suppose I shall have to try a GA Arya started only to get cut off with a huge pain in his stomach. He looked up to see Makarov holding Naruto with one arm, while another enlarged arm had punched him so hard in stomach, he coughed up blood. Stay down and I will deliver you back to Ose in one piece. Makarov warned with pure anger as Arya collapsed onto the ground defeated. Naruto I am sorry I did not see the danger in time, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your kind heart. Makarov apologized to Naruto's prone form as he gently laid him on the wall and picked up Arya in one hand. I promise you we will grab your magic after I finish this war and revive you. Just wait a little longer my boy. Makarov swore to him as he stormed off with light magic, filling his eyes in righteous anger. Ose. Makarov yelled as he pushed the guild doors violently open, and threw Arya at high speed towards Phantom Lord Guild Hall, where Arya hit and slumped over in front of Ose. Arya was defeated Makarov is still alive, Ose shouted in frustration as he glared at the angered wizard saint. Master where is Naruto? Urza asked urgently relieved to see her master well but worried about her friend. Several voices also voiced their concerns as Makarov growled at glared at Ose. Naruto sacrificed himself for me due to Ose's dirty little trick, so no more playing around. This ends now. Makarov declared as Lucy gasped. Is Naruto alright? Lucy asked with tears as Mira and Urza gripped their fists as well Natsu and Grey had magic leaking out of them in anger, as the guild looked ready to get revenge. Naruto is drained of magic, but once this is over and those brats are on their knees in defeat, we will find Naruto's scattered magic and restore him back to normal. Makarov promised as Lucy wiped her tears away and nodded. Well it looks like Arya failed to get rid of Makarov, but at least Naruto Uzumaki is near death now, so I suppose not all is lost. Ose growled before raising his arm. Fire the Jupiter cannon now. Ose declared as the cannon channeled magic, and both Urza and Makarov looked ready to try and block it. Shortly before inside Naruto's mind, you done screwed up Naruto-kun. Matatabi said with a sigh as Naruto was once again into a tailed beast telepathy as his body was unconscious right now. I know I did, but I called let the old man get hit. Naruto said with a frown as he rubbed his head in embarrassment, but to his surprise, the tailed beast still looks serious. We are not talking about taking the hit Naruto. Jayuki claimed as Naruto looked confused. What are you talking about the Naruto asked as he titled his head. Naruto you have gotten so used to using magic your body has forgotten how to function without it, and hence why you are a lump right now. Kuruma explained in disappointment. Naruto looked down in shame as he realized that Kurama was right, and he had gotten used to seeing magic more than chakra without magic his body right now was shot. You are right. I am sorry. Naruto apologized as he got on his knees humbly, but to his surprise, he heard snickers from the tailed beasts. However, you have us so we already restored your body to normal, but your magic is still gone, so you can't use any right now. Sun told him sternly as Naruto blinked awake in his real body, but still rather sore. Nice to be awake, but I don't have any magic right now and they need me. Naruto mused as he looked around the empty guild. Why don't you use sage mode to gather your magic flying around and absorb it back? Seiken suggested kindly as Naruto grinned. Navis, Naruto and the tailed beasts learned early on Naruto's unique mastery of sage mode, helped tremendously in enhancing his magic container early on. Naruto could absorb magic forcing his small magic container to grow, have the tailed beasts force it out and continue many times a day. 
This was how Naruto was capable of growing his magic container enough to become S-Class after only one year of livening in Earthland. A and 2. Yeah I guess I should. Naruto said as he prepared to enter Sage mode until he felt a massive buildup of magic. Damn it I are firing the Jupiter cannon. Although this gives me an idea. Naruto said with a grin. You're stupid, but I guess stupid ideas work for stupid people. Kuruma huffed although everyone could see his concern under his grumpy disposition. He. Naruto I already sent some sand with one of your marks in front of your guildmates. Shukaku announced knowing of Naruto's intentions. Thanks Shukaku. Naruto said with a grin as he disappeared in a flash. See I am more helpful than you are, you grumpy fox. Shikaku bragged as Kurama growled, and the other tailed beasts rolled their eyes. Shut up you useless raccoon. Everything Naruto is because of me. I have been there since day one. Kurama growled back from inside his seal. The giant of light called Jupiter shot towards Makarov who stood in front of his beloved children in giant mode, ready to tank it. He saw Naruto appear in front of him out of nowhere and open his mouth. There was a flash of light as the Jupiter blast exploded and smoke covered Magnolia. Ose laughed in triumph finally fairy tale is gone. Now Phantom Lord is supreme guild of all time. Ose kept laughing until Juvia and Gadjil shouted to him Master Ose look. Ose opened his eyes and his shock the light and smoke seemed to shrink every second until it revealed the town in fairy tale alive and well with Naruto Uzumaki, the one who took the blast and somehow survived. Impossible. Your magic was drained and yet somehow you took my Jupiter blast unscathed. Ose fumed in anger as he heard that it would take 15 minutes before another blast could be shot. Raise the barrier. Ose ordered grinning to himself for the foresight not to leave his precious cannon vulnerable during the recharge times. Now he could safely taunt his hated foes with the knowledge that their fates were sealed in 15 minutes. Sorry to worry you guys, but I am fine now. Naruto said with his back to his guildmates, as several girls had tears running down their faces in relief. You're okay Naruto-kun. Mira cheered in happiness. You saved us again Naruto. Lucy said with tears of joy. How did you? Makarov asked in shock having seen the boy still as a doll not even a minute ago. Naruto you smell funny now. Natsu noted as he sniffed. Fairy tale lost dragon force playing. Don't worry about it. I just had a great meal and like Natsu says I'm all fired up. Naruto declared as he spun around with a wild grin on his face. Everyone gasped when they saw his face. His yellow hair had turned bright red, his blue eyes turned violet, and most shocking was his face had scales with his whiskers more prominent on top of the scales. AN3. Naruto what happened to your face? Urza asked in shock seeing Naruto appearance completely different after the Jupiter blast disappeared. Natsu this is what happens when you get to the highest point. Naruto told him seriously as Natsu eyes widened. You don't mean? Natsu asked having heard about it from Igneal. Ose. I called have done this without you draining my magic first. Naruto told the wizard saying smugly. What did you do you brat? Ose hissed as Naruto just kept smoking at him. Simply I ate the Jupiter blast and now we can save the Jupiter dragon slayer. Naruto announced to the shock of everything. Dragon Slayer like Natsu Lucy asked as Natsu looked gobstopped along with everyone else. That appearance. Don't tell me you reached the Dragon Force, Ose said in denial as Gadjil growled in anger. Master you are telling me that blonde managed to get to the final state of Dragon Slayer magic by eating the Jupiter Blast, Gadjil screeched in outrage. Now you try a Jupiter Blast. Naruto said coldly as he raised his hand and fired a yellow beam at the Phantom Lord Guild Hall, only for a bubble to surround them and dissipate the blast with electricity running around the barrier. Well I did not expect this, but it changes nothing. I win the liberty of installing the finest barrier lacrima, so not even five Jupiter blasts can pierce this barrier. Merely repeating the same attack will not breach our barrier. Ose announced as he smiled evilly. Be warned in less than 15 minutes our cannon will recharge, and I will fire a blast ten more powerful, and nobody will stop it this time. Ose proclaimed as the guilds started to panic. Damn it less than 15 minutes and they have that damned barrier. Urza shouted in frustration. What can we do master? Mira asked as Makarov grit his teeth. Don't worry I have something in mind. Naruto said calmly as he walked towards the Phantom Lord Guild with no fear. Recruit. Naruto chanted as he summoned a new sword into his right hand. It was a black dido or long sword. AN4. That's not the same sword he used against you or Zasen. Lasana noted as everyone decided to out their faith in Naruto. Here goes. Naruto muttered as he focused and yellow Jupiter magic flowed into his sword, making it expand in length and power. Full Master Ose explicitly said that using Jupiter power is not enough to breach our barrier. Juvia said with a huff only to whiten her eyes when Naruto ran towards the barrier and swung his sword at it. Ha! Naruto yelled as he swung his sword infused with Jupiter magic, and although the barrier held it started to crack, as Naruto leapt back and continued a furious barrage of swings at the barrier. Gramps what is Naruto doing? Grey asked with awe as everyone saw the barrier continue to crack. I see Naruto is a genius. Instead of releasing the power of the Jupiter magic like a blast, he is keeping it contained inside his blade. Makarov said with pride. Damn it that means each swing of his blade is like a Jupiter blast in itself. Ose hissed in outrage. 
Damn it, the barrier is not meant to take so many blasts at once, as it's supposed to be one strong blast, not dozens of blasts at once. Oze thought in worry. AN5. Damn it. We are trapped like ants as the barrier won't let us out like it was supposed to keep them out. Sol growled as they could not attack while the barrier was active. Time to finish it off before my magic runs out. Naruto thought to himself. Time for a new one. Here goes. Naruto announced as he leapt high into the air and summoned a massive amount of Jupiter magic into his blade. New Ord. Jupiter Dragon Blast Explosion. Naruto yelled as he fired the blast in the form of a dozen streams of magic before they exploded, destroying the barrier and the guild hall, while the members were alive but injured. There was massive smoke as Naruto felt the Jupiter power fade, so he released it, went into sage mode, and absorbed all his leftover magic before anyone could see. Naruto hair had returned to its natural blonde, scales faded away, and his eyes returned to sky blue. Fairy tale dragon force stops. Hey guys anytime you want to join and feel free to. I am going after Ose. Naruto announced to his guild mates as it awoke their fighting spirits, as they ran into action to finish the fight with Phantom Lord once and for all. We can't have Naruto show us up. Mikao claimed. You got that right. Wakaba agreed. It's our fight too Naruto-kun. Mira yelled. That brat trying to tell the guild master what to do. For shame. Makarov said with a smile. Naruto you better teach me how to do that afterwards. Natsu yelled. Curse you fairy tale. Phantom Lord attack. Jose Hestas pulled himself out of the rubble, and sent hundreds of shades towards the fairy tale guild, while his remaining S-class wizards got ready to battle. Mavis had arrived safely back on Tenro Island, where she had sat back on her favorite branch where she noticed something. Ha! Huh? Isn't this? Mavis said quietly as she picked up a book gently and saw the title. Sky Devil Slayer Magic 101 Basics. Mavis smiled to herself as she chuckled, remembering how much fun she had teaching the basics of magic to Naruto and them learning how Naruto could use Sky Devil Slayer Magic. Those were the days, huh? Mavis mused as she gripped the book tightly near where her heart was before she blushed realizing her heart was racing again. As she tried to calm her racing heart, she could not help but remember a particular memory that happened shortly before Naruto left to join Fairy Tail. X-784, shortly before Naruto leaves Tenro Island, Mavis and Naruto were laughing as they watched two squirrels growling at each other, fighting over the same acorn, until a third squirrel came out of nowhere and stole the acorn, while the first two were distracted. Then the first two squirrels ran after the third one, making the scene even funnier for the two blondes. This is the quite the simple I Mavis-chan. Naruto said with a grin as Mavis smiled happily. I know when you leave to join fairy tale things won't be the same anymore, but can you promise me one thing Naruto? Mavis asked with a shy smile. Anything Mavis-chan? Naruto swore. Don't forget me please. Mavis asked sadly as Naruto was her first and truest friend she had in ages, and the only one who could make her feel alive, despite being mostly dead. Naruto instead of answering pulled the girl into his arm as he rested his face into her hair, while Mavis just snuggled into his shoulder. I will never forget Mavis-chan. That is a promise of a lifetime. Naruto told her warmly as Mavis just nodded her head numbly still remaining in Naruto's hug. They spent several more minutes in this warm embrace before Naruto pulled back, but Mavis still sat right next to him without any space between them. Mavis-chan can I ask you something? Naruto asked with a serious voice as Mavis blinked in surprise. Sure Naruto. Anything in my power I will answer. Mavis replied with a tilt of her head. I want you to be honesty and if you don't wish to answer that's okay, but I want a real answer okay. Naruto said as Mavis still looked confused. Why are you being all serious Naruto? It's not like you. Mavis asked suddenly nervous. Mavis promised me. Naruto pressed as Mavis nodded her head. Okay you told me the reason you were like this is because you were cursed with the contradiction curse, and Zeref kissed you right. Naruto asked as Mavis nervously nodded her head dreading where this was going. Okay my question is do you love Zeref? Naruto asked seriously without a hint of playfulness as Mavis eyes widened. How could you ask something like that? Mavis said with a hurt look as she felt tears running down her face. Naruto pulled her back into a hug as he felt tears stain his shirt, but he didn't care. After several more minutes her tears dried up and she looked Naruto directly in the eyes. Why do you want to know something like that? Mavis asked as she stared directly into his eyes, as if she could find an answer just by looking deep into them. I think Zeref loved you with all his heart, so when he kissed you the curse of contradiction took the life force of the thing he loved most you despite your immortality. Naruto said with sad eyes as Mavis nodded sadly. Yet he's still around so that means you did not have the same feelings or do you Mavis-chan? Naruto asked with eyes full of empathy and kindness that filled Mavis' heart full of happiness. Mavis stayed quiet for a while as this was an answer she tried to hide from herself as she feared the answer, but she knew if she could not trust Naruto, she could not trust anyone. I know Zeref loved me more than anything, so the curse took my life as a price for his sins, but my curse did not take his life away. Mavis stated clearly as she looked away hesitantly. It's not important why that happened. All that matters is we defeat him for the sake of the world right. Mavis said changing the subject as Naruto frowned seeing the forced smile on Mavis' face. 
Naruto surprised Mavis by pulling back and grabbing her shoulders, staring directly into her eyes with disappointment. Mavis-chan. I told Sakura this before and I mean it. I hate people who lie to themselves. Naruto said clearly as Mavis gasped as her eyes grew wet again. She wanted to avoid answering more than anything, but she knew she could not bear it if Naruto looked at her this disappointed again. Alright the truth is back then I did not feel love for Zerf. I felt compassion and gratefulness towards him for him teaching me and my friends magic. For giving me the power to save Yuri, for setting us up to start fairy tale. I also felt like the only person who could understand him, and since I was cursed too, I thought maybe I could grow to love him if he was the only one I could ever be with. Mavis admitted shamefully. She closed her eyes unable to bear the disappointed look she thought Naruto was casting on her. However, the curse knew my feelings for Zeref were not genuine, so it only took my life force and not his. Mavis finished with tears running down her face again, only to feel her face get buried into Naruto's warmth and neck. I understand Mavis-chan. Naruto said simply as Mavis' eyes grew white in surprise. How can you treat me normally after learning I was willing to love Zeref if there was no other choice? Mavis demanded staring at Naruto kind eyes with tears. Because I did the same thing. I wanted love so bad I pulled pranks for any type of attention. I convinced myself that Sakura was the love of my life, simply because I thought she had to be or that was it for me. So, I understand better than anyone how you feel Mavis-chan. Naruto admitted freely as Mavis cried more and buried face deeper into Naruto's neck, and wrapped her arms around him, as Naruto wrapped his arms around her. For several minutes the two blonde orphans just sat there holding each other for warmth and comfort, before Mavis hiccuped and pulled away with a warm smile that Naruto returned. Naruto one day Zara for return, and I will not be able to kill him with the curse. He did not die when my feelings for him were at the brightest, and now these decades alter those positive feelings have all but disappeared. Mavis informed Naruto who nodded. However, I know you will be the only to defeat Zaref and save this world. Mavis added looking at Naruto who shot her thumbs up. I promise I will end Zaref and defeat Agnoloja. Naruto swore as Mavis beamed at him before giggling. Why are you laughing? Naruto said with a pout making her giggles louder. It's not that. It's just I don't know if we'll be able to find love for real, but this right here might be enough. Mavis admitted as Naruto flicked her on the forehead, making her give a cute cry of annoyance. Mavis-chan I promise you will find love again, and I will get you back into your real body. Naruto promised as Mavis shyly looked away with a blush. You don't have to promise me something like that. Just this here is enough for me. Mavis insisted that Naruto refused to relent. No. You died so young so you deserve to feel things, and not just when I am here. You deserve everything I have you deserve too. Naruto insisted as Mavis hiccuped and nodded. It's not just my physical state that is the problem Naruto. I don't think anyone could love me not just as family member. Mavis thought to herself, but she decided to change the subject. How about you Naruto? I have a feeling love will greet you when you get to fairy tale. Mavis tried to say wisely, but her massive smile ruined the imagine. Naruto chuckled but said I don't think that will happen. I won't know the first thing to look for if someone actually had feelings for me or what to do if she told me she did love me. Naruto D equals sad smile made Mavis' heart flutter in sympathy and a need to comfort him. Fine then. If you are going to promise me to find love you have to too okay. Mavis said seriously as she grabbed Naruto's hand in her smaller ones. Alright it's a promise then. We will both find love in our lives. Naruto said as he squeezed Mavis' hands back to seal their promise. Oh man I have a tough mission. The only person I thought I loved only loved Sasuke from the bottom of her heart and only saw me as a friend. Naruto whined as they sat next to each other on the tree log. Hey the only person who loved me killed me so if you thought you had it rough get in line. Mavis retorted as Naruto gave her a mock glare. A few seconds later they burst in laughter at how whiny they sounded. Hey Mavis-chan. Naruto asked as Mavis turned around and hummed at him. How about this? What if we can't find loves before too long, we love each other? Naruto suggested as Mavis gave him an odd look. Don't say that. You will find love. If anybody is not going to find love it's going to be me. Mavis smoked before Naruto shook his head. I can't find any reason why somebody will not love you. You are pretty, have super long hair, are smarter than anyone I know, have a giant heart and eyes a guy could get lost in. Naruto admitted with him rubbing his head in embarrassment. Naruto. Mavis sat with her eyes wide and her face burning red. As if sensing this was getting awkward Naruto seemingly decided to add a joke in. Of course, we have to get you back into your body first of course. It's what almost a 100. So when you are alive again I guess I should call you Mavis Bachan right? Naruto joked as Mavis eyes twitched. Naruto you big idiot. Mavis screamed as she started chasing the laughing Naruto who ran away from the fuming ghost, almost as if it was another day. Flashback end, present day, you really are the biggest idiot in the whole white world Naruto. Mavis claimed as happy tears ran down her face. She remembered how Naruto's clone said he would find a way to end her sadness, but little did he know her happiness came from being around Naruto. Claiming nobody could love you, but making the cursed girl fall hats over shoulder in love with you, makes you a real idiot you know. Mavis said as she started wiping happy tears with her sleeve. 
I guess I can only admit it when you wrench here, but Naruto Uzumaki, I love you more than anything in this world from the bottom of my heart. Mavis said as her smile threatened to break her face. She put her hand over my heart as it beat happily as if it was happy, she finally admitting her feelings out loud. Luckily Zeref was still fast asleep, so he did not hear Mavis' proclamation. He did not hear that the woman he loved had picked another, and the previous speech that indicated she had never loved him even before. He blissfully slept ignorant that his heart would be shattered again in the coming years. Back in Magnolia, while Fairy Tail was fighting furiously against Phantom Lord, nobody was near the true basement of the Fairy Tail Guild Hall, where Fairy Tail Greatest Secret was sealed. Lumen Hister is true name Fairy Hardock of the real comatose body of Mavis Vermilion. In that vessel light infinite magic in Mavis' true body. Nobody not even Mavis herself who was still on Tenru Island, knew for the first time since it died, and somewhat came back to life Mavis' body moved. Her hand moved above her heart like her ghost half did, and its face despite its eyes being closed smiled. These movements only lasted a minute before its hand fell back to her side, and her smile vanished, showing her lifeless expression. However, if Prector Makarov were there to bear witness to this unique phenomenon, they would each claim this was proof that Mavis' love for Naruto was real and pure. Powerful enough to transcend the powers over life and death itself. Naruto unaware of another girl pouring her heart out for him, just continued his march towards Ose, while his guildmate supported him. The explosion caused by Naruto's final Jupiter Dragon Slayer attack had sent what remained of the Phantom Lord Guild Hall, and the members inside flying into a nearby forest. This was the stage for the final confrontation between Fairy Tail and Phantom Lord. Naruto was already running towards the Guild Hall to confront Ose when he was confronted by Soul of the Earth. No, no no. You shall not take another step towards Master Ose. Instead you shall face defeat for the humiliation we have suffered. Soul declared as he sent a barrage of earth magic towards Naruto, who stepped back to avoid the rock barrage. Just as Soul was about to send another barrage at Naruto, he was sent flying back courtesy of a kick from Mir, who had leapt into battle. Naruto noticed she had changed from her normal red dress, to a more form-fitting black dress, that although still looked good on her, made her seem more dangerous and combat ready. Naruto-kun. Go on ahead I will take care of him. Mira declared as she faced Soul who slowly picked himself up with a glare. Naruto bit his lip in worry for a moment before he remembered she was a proud S-class wizard like him. I will leave it you Mira-chan. Naruto said as he ran past Soul who was now forced to fight Mira instead. Naruto continued to run until he ducked underneath a ball of blue fire. He looked to the side to see Totem Air of the Fire with a katana out and blue fire in each hand respectively. It appears you are rather fast Naruto Uzumaki however you shall not make it past here. Totem Air declared as he sent several more balls of blue fire which Naruto easily blocked and shattered using his Dido which he was holding onto. Totem Air growled before he ran towards Naruto, with his katana withdrawn with Naruto ready with his Dido to fight back. However, before a clash could occur Urza appeared in the middle of them and blocked Totem Air's strike with her own sword. There's a Scarlet. Totomaru growled as he leapt back to avoid a swing from Urza. Naruto I will handle thing here. Urza told him as Naruto locked eyes with her. You got this Urza. Naruto asked only to get a smirk in response. Naruto nodded to himself before he leapt forward as Urza clashed with Totomaru to make him unable to chase Naruto further. Within Naruto's seal there was one particular tailed beast hissing in anger at the blue fire use. GRR. How dare that one of mage use something resembling my fire. My fire can destroy towns not that tiny ball of nothing. Matatabi hissed as the other tailed beasts gave the cat like tailed beasts her space. Jayuki in particular was far away from Matatabi as she was venting. He remembered a particular memory involving his other host Killer B, and Matabi previous Shinshuriki Yujido Nai. Despite being on well-respected relationship with each other, Killer B had a healthy fear of the blonde ever since that day. Memory Yujido is about 19 and B is about 25. Time to take a look and see. Who else can bathe and please me? Killer B hummed to himself as he was peeking inside Kumo's fanciest hot springs, much to Jayuki annoyance. He peeked through the hole to see a blonde with a well-figured body relaxing in the baths by herself with not any clothes on. Killer B eyes went straight up when he recognized the girl he was spying on. Lucky me it is little miss too. Her busty little body makes me want to do. Killer B hummed softly enjoying the sight of his fellow Jinchuriki in her most naked form. This went on for several glorious minutes before Yujito sniffed around and eyes narrowed. She went out of the bath and put on a towel much to Killer B's displeasure before she vanished. Ha where did miss? To go. She is no longer here like winter snow. B announced as he looked around until he felt Killer intent from behind him. Are you enjoying the show B-sama? Yujito dangerous voice asked sweetly as B turned around to see Yujito's dark eyes hollow and her hair seemingly possessed. Despite only wearing a towel B feared for his life despite being the more powerful Jinchuki, a woman wrath made any guy whimper. Ijido despite her reputation as being a Jinyuriki, was well known for her beauty across Kumo with B, no exception to having a passing fancy towards his Jinchuki student. However Ijido had no interest in dating, so her fierce attitude put guys off from asking her out. She only revealed a sweeter kinder personality to her close friends like B and Team Samui.
However, in this case her inner cat as B would call it was rearing her ugly face. Ejido it is not what it looks like. I was checking on your safety like a good fish. Killer B tried to lie as he put his hands in surrender, especially when tailed beast chakra surrounded the blonde forming a blue cloak and a single blue tail behind Yujido. The only one who needs help is you. Pervert Baka. Yujido shouted before she uppercutted B into the sky. Cat flaming roar fire. Yujido announced as she shot a blue fireball which sent B into a forest and demolished a good portion of the forest when it exploded. Yujido was not in tailed beast mode so it was not at full strength, but it definitely sent a message to B never to peek on Yujido again. Memory end, Dayuki shuddered at that particular memory. Afterwards the fourth rakage forced his brother to apologize, and Yujido had to take a week from missions due to the damages, but B never peeked on Yujido again. Naruto was oblivious to the thoughts of his tailed beasts, as he continued to run forward cutting down any shades that dared to try stop him. Water Slicer. A female voice shouted as several blades of water shot at Naruto who stopped and leaped back several times to avoid them all. Naruto looked forward to see a frowned blue-haired woman who had a slender and busty figure hidden beneath covering clothes. Stop. Juvia will stop you for the sake of Phantom Lord. Juvia announced confidently, but Naruto saw her eyes had no real hatred in them. Look I have nothing against you or anyone really from Phantom Lord, but I need to beat Oze, so this war can stop. Naruto said as he dodged several more waves of water. Juvia cannot let that happen. Juvia said stoically until Naruto dashed forward beneath her guard. Has fast. Juvia thought as Naruto swung his Dido at her aiming for a non-vital shot of her shoulder. To his surprise his sword passed through her body as if she was made of water. What? Naruto said in surprise as Juvia used this opportunity to send water all around him intending to surround him. However, Naruto just swung his Dido several times around scattering the water before he leapt backwards. It is useless. Juvia body made of water cannot be hurt while you will eventually run out of magic. Juvia said with confidence and sent a burst of Sky Devil Slayer magic at her making her fly backwards, but she regained her balance quickly. TCH this is annoying. Her magic appears to turn her body into water at the point of impact, while allowing her to make contact with physical objects the rest of time. She has to be able to keep her shape consistent until she is hit or else the water in her body would not be able to stand upwards. Naruto thought to himself irritated as nothing he did seemed to make much of an impact. Naruto. Jayuki said as Naruto kept his body on autopilot as he focused on his seal. What's up? Naruto thought back as he slashed a barrage of water in half. This girl's magic reminds me of that Ichiha teammate of yours teammate. A Hazuki clan member. He had the ability to turn himself to water at will when he fart B. Jayuki informed Naruto as he frowned. Okay so any idea how I deal with her? Naruto asked as Jayuki looked thoughtful. Hmm. He went unconscious when he tried to block B's non-full power tail beast bomb. Jayuki suggested only to get a dry look in response. Okay not a great idea I must admit. How about lighting style of magic? He was unable to solidify his body with lighting flowing through him, and it should have the same with that woman and her magic. Jayuki remarked as Naruto looked hesitant. Naruto could sense various levels of bloodlust and hatred from the members of Phantom Lord directed at him and Fairy Tail in general. Particularly Oze however Juvia had new true hatred towards him, but felt more like she was obligated to do so, because it was her guild fighting. He had no true desire to hurt her if he did not have to, but he knew he had to beat Oze eventually. All of a sudden Juvia and the water surrounding her was frozen, as Naruto looked back to see Grey standing there with his hands clapped together. Naruto go on ahead. I will handle her. Grey told him as the ice started to crack as Juvia started to vibrate from her prison. Naruto bit his lip before nodding. Okay Shesuors. Naruto said as he leapt forward letting Grey engage Juvia in a fight. Okay almost there. Naruto said as he sent Soze magic patiently waiting inside the ruined guild hall, before he lifted his sword above his head in time. Gajil's metal hand slammed into Naruto's sword as Gajil bloodthirsty grin shot at Naruto. Nice looking sword. Mind if I take a bite? Gajil mocked as he opened his mouth revealing sharp canines. Just try it. Naruto retorted as he kicked Gajil in the stomach, sending him flying backwards. Gajil recovered in midair and used his sword arm to dig into the ground, and used the momentum to fly back at Naruto. Naruto had transformed his other arm into a metal chainsaw, as Naruto took a defensive position. Fire Dragon Iron Fist. Natsu shouted as he came from the sky and bashed his fist at Gajil, causing an explosion to happen. When the smoke cleared Gajil had some minor burns, but had his fist deadlocked with Natsu's own. Natsu. Naruto shouted as Natsu shot him a grin. Hey I can't you steal the spotlight all the time, right? Gajil is mine. Natsu declared as his Fire Dragon Slayer magic clashed with Gajil's Iron Dragon Slayer magic. All right. Dragon vs Dragon. Naruto decided as he let the first generation Dragon Slayer slick it out, as he finally reached the guild hall, where he decided to dismiss his Danto, wanting to settle things with his own fists. Naruto walked up the stairs where Smugose waved his hands in greeting. Welcome Naruto Yuzumaki. So glad you are the one to reach me. Not one of your worms you call friends. 
At least this way I can bring the body of one of Makarov's strongest wizards at his feet when I beat you. Oze boasted as Naruto grit his teeth. Don't you dare mock my friends. Naruto hissed as Oze's expression did not change. I have heard of your hatred of my guild for years, but why start a war now? Naruto asked as he lifted his arms up in case of an attack. Oze looked thoughtful before he shrugged his shoulders. I suppose telling you will not change the outcome. A week ago, a rich man Jude Herfilia offered my guild a substantial amount of money to get his daughter back from fairy tale, and I of course accepted. Oze revealed as Naruto's eyes widened when he remembered something. Wei Lucy never said her last name when she introduced herself. Can it be? Naruto thought as Oze smirk widened. So, you realize it? Yes, our target was Lucy Herfilia. Oze chuckled at the outraged expression on Naruto's face. He started all this just to force Lucy back to her dad who she clearly does not want to be with. Naruto asked with his eyes narrowed. Oze surprised him when he started laughing. That fool thinks that is the reason I am doing all this but no. I force him to give me a large deposit, so even if something were to happen to Lucy Herfilia, our guild would still be rich. Oze stated as Naruto realized something. So, you really intend to kill us all and the town with those Jupiter blasts? Naruto accuses Oze just closed his eyes and waved his hands around. It is the only way to kill cockroaches. You got to kill them all at once. Oze said lightly before he opened his eyes and his eyes grew mad with madness. Fairy tale, fairy tale, fairy tale. It is all anyone talks about nowadays. People even think it has surpassed my guild. How preposterous. Oze shouted as A sent a wave of shade magic at Naruto, who cancelled it out with Sky Devil Slayer magic. Your guild was weak till just a few years ago, with rising stars like Urza Scarlet, Laxus Dreyer, and not even you Naruto Uzumaki. Yes the boy who was rumored to have reached S-class status earlier than any mage in history. The boy whose deeds are known across Fiori. Oze hissed as he continued to send magic out at Naruto who dodged or blocked them with ease. You did all this out of jealousy. Naruto asked in disgust as Oze got even madder. Oh no. Not jealousy. Just to prove your puny guild place. Underneath Phantom Lord's foot. Oze declared as Naruto eyes narrowed. Now show me the same power you suit to take down my beloved Jupiter cannon. Oze demanded as Naruto instead shot a burst of sky devil magic at him which he dodged. I see. You must have used all that magic up to shatter my barrier and restore your magic. Oze deduced as he gathered magic. Dead wave. Oze yelled as a giant wave of black magic flew towards Naruto. Sky devil force push. Naruto yelled back as he sent a blast back as the attacks cancelled each other out. This back and forth continued on for several minutes, with neither of them having an edge. Meanwhile, it is no use as a scarlet I can control any fire, and my swordsmanship is second to none. Totemaru declared as he clashed with Urza with a single sword. Urza leapt back and smirked to equip. She shouted as a light shone as Totemasu then felt his katana shatter and a slice across his stomach. Too bad for you I don't use fire in this armor, and it looks like my swordsmanship is better than yours. Urza said with pity as she was in her flight armor with a blade out. Shit. It looks like I got the worst opponent. Totemaru declared as he looked back before he fell unconscious. Naruto please be careful. Urza said with concern before she joined the rest of her guildmates in fighting off the shades. So, I get the model as my opponent. It should be quick so I can assist Master Oze in defeating Naruto Uzumaki. Soul said cockily as he sent another burst of rocks at Mir, who was forced to jump back to avoid them. It looks like people only see a pretty face when they see me however in reality, I am a demon. Mir said darkly as she summoned up magic to surround herself. Take over. Satan soul. Mir roared as she summoned her magic to the surface. Before Soul could even utter another word, she ran forward and in a single blow, destroyed all the rocks he used as armor and knocked him out. She let him fall to the ground as she deactivated her magic returning to her human form. Naruto-kun. Mir said softly in worry as she placed a hand over her heart for her crush love. She looked at the rune guild hall to see bursts of light trucking the place even more. That's a fight with Gadja landed abruptly when Makarov sent a giant enhanced punch, knocking him out in one blow. Gramps what the hell? I had him. Natsu complained only to flinch when he saw the angered face of Makarov. Natsu this is no time for such childish thoughts as one on one. This is finishing a war Phantom Lord did against our family. Makarov declared as Natsu frowned but nodded. I will assist Naruto in defeating Oze. I want you to round up all the members of our family and make sure everyone is safe. Makarov ordered as he looked at Natsu expectedly who nodded and started sniffing around. Makarov flew forward towards where Oze and Naruto were, while Natsu turned around only to see Grey. What happened to you and her? Natsu asked pointing to the sleeping Juvia in Grey's arms. Grey looked a butt exhausted and covered in bruises but relatively okay. Oh. We fought and I won. She isn't bad person or anything, so I think I can forgive her for Phantom Lord's actions. Grey admitted as he carried her back to the guild with Natsu joining them. They and two. They eventually joined up with Urza and Mir, who fought against the seemingly infinite number of shades. Back with Naruto. That is enough Ose. Makarov yelled as he entered the room to see Ose and Naruto glaring at each neither of them giving an inch.
Finally, Master Makarov has finally got tired of hiding behind his little children. Ozay mocked in delight as Naruto leapt back so he was by Makarov's side. Master let me finish him off. Naruto asked only for Makarov to shake his head. No, my boy it is my duty as master to settle disputes like this. Makarov explained as Naruto looked unhappy. But, Naruto said before Makarov whispered in his ears. I know you want to keep some of your magic secret for now, especially the ones pertaining to the first master, so I shall end it instead. Makarov whispered as Naruto sighed but nodded. Alright but remember fairy law is meant to be used on single targets or alt of weak opponents, not a lot of strong people. Naruto whispered back in concern as Makarov's eyes widened before he chuckled. Of course, she would teach you those spells as well. Makarov remarked as Ose got tired of waiting and sending a wave of dark magic from his hand, which Naruto and Makarov dodged with ease. Ose, I don't care why you did this, but I will give you to the count of three to repent, or I will crush you. Makarov warned as Ose snarled. Why on earth would I repent? Ose asked as a bright light gathered in Makarov's palms. One. Makarov said as his eyes glowed with light magic. Dead wave. Ose yelled as he gathered dark magic in his palms. Two. Makarov yelled as he clapped his hands as the light magic built up. 3. Makarov yelled as the dead wave dissipated upon reaching the pure light. Fairy law. Makarov declared as the light shone above the room and expanded covering not only the guild hall, but the entire field enveloping everyone in its glow. This really is Mavis-chan magic. Well done master. Naruto praised silently as he was basked in the light without fear only feeling warmth. A minute later the magic disappeared, revealing all the shades destroyed and Ose deathly white as he gasped in defeat. However, no fairy tale members or even defeated Phantom Lord members were harmed. This is finally over. Naruto said with a smile as he and Makarov walked out to see the entire fairy tale guild waiting outside for them with cheers. I defeated Ose using our sacred magic fairy law. Makarov declared as everyone shouted in happiness. It is one of the three legendary spells associated with fairy tale. Fairy law a spell that punishes everyone who the caster deems a foe, but leaves allies and innocent people alone. It is one of the strongest spells in existence. Urza told an awestruck Lucy. Three cheers for the master. Urza started out as everyone boomed in celebration before Makarov raised his hand up. It was not just me. Everyone here continued to our victory. Makarov stated as the cheering got louder. Special thanks for Naruto for defeating the Jupiter Cannon and holding off Ose till I got there. Makarov announced as Naruto tried to wave him off. Here my part was not big deal. Naruto said modestly as he got a butt flustered when A got a loud cheer from the entire guild. He Naruto-kun really is a sweetie downplaying his role in this uh. Mira mused as she watched Naruto try to fend off her younger brother many hug. Naruto sure is something else. Urza agreed with a smile as saw Lucy try to thank Naruto, only for him to get dragged off by person to person to give their thanks. We really are a family here. Naruto thought with a grin. Just need those old fossils to know we did not start this war. Naruto thought as he watched Makarov tie up the captive Phantom Lord members, waiting for the Magic Council to send their army to Magnolia Town. The next day after the successful end between Phantom Lord and Fairy Tail, when a toad arrived from the Magic Council. Crap the Magic Council again. Natsu yelled trying to run away only to be held by the scoff of the neck by an impatient grey. I would happy to explain the events that occurred to the Magic Council in person. Makarov offered stoically, but is surprised the toad shook its head. Thank you for the offer Master Makarov, but I have explicit orders to bring Naruto Uzumaki to here. The toad said sternly as everyone turned to the board Naruto. Are you okay going on fairy tales behalf my boy? Makarov asked as Naruto shrugged his shoulders. It's no biggie. I know Magnolia Town will back us up if trouble does come along. Naruto said as he waved to the guild who looked nervous. Naruto began walking to the carriage before he turned back and shouted don't worry about it. Just make sure you start rebuilding the guild when I am gone. This got chuckles from his guildmates as Makarov started talking to Mira about reconstruction. Naruto entered the slow carriage and was once again bored, it would take a few hours just to get to here. He muttered I am guessing they would not be happy if I sent a thought projection for this meeting huh? The toad had a small smile and chuckled I believe they would indeed not be happy if you did that. Dot after several hours Naruto finally arrived in a place he had grown to greatly dislike here. The headquarters of the magic council. Here goes nothing. Naruto sighed as he knocked on the grand doors until they opened. Naruto Uzumaki. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Orc said gruffly as Naruto noticed unlike last time all the members were in person instead of being thought projections. No problem. I am sure news has spread about what happened between Phantom Lord and Fairy Tail, but if you need any details feel free to ask. Naruto said with a polite tone and bow. Not like I have anything better to do than come like a dog. Naruto muttered underneath his brief. We were rather shocked to hear Phantom Lord attack your guild hall at the middle of the night, and launched a direct attack against you and Magnolia Town the next day. One member said with a tone suggesting he felt less shocked but more disappointed. Yeah it was big bummer having to fight Phantom Lord after they started a war against us. Naruto said sarcastically grinning when he saw some members glare at him. 
But hey, if you don't like hearing it from rumors, I am sure you could ask anyone from Magnolia Town, and they would vouch for me. Naruto said with a smug tone as he shrugged his shoulders. You brat. A woman yelled only to get a glare from work. Enough. Naruto Uzumaki, we wish to know why you destroyed the Phantom Lord Guildhall. Was it out of revenge for destruction of the Fairy Tale Guildhall? Orc demanded as Naruto rolled his eyes. Both Sigrun and Uptair looked amused at his reaction. They had that huge Jupiter cannon which Jose threatened to destroy Magnolia with was no big issue. I destroyed the Phantom Lord Guildhall out of vengeance. Naruto mocked as he enjoyed the growls sent at him. I believe we can overlook the destruction of the Phantom Lord Guildhall due to the unprovoked attack on Fairy Tale and threat to involve countless innocent lives no. Altier interjected smoothly as Naruto kept a neutral expression. He still would not trust her as far as he could throw her, but knew she had the magic counselor. Orc looked deep in thought as one male member yelled Orc. You cannot be seriously letting Fairy Tale scot free. It would send the message that any guild can retaliate with any amount of force if they are attacked first. Naruto glared in frustration damn old geezers. They still want to spin this on Fairy Tale, he stared at Orc and mouthed the king. Knowing that the public and king would be on Fairy Tale's side if word of this war got out. Orc was silent for another minute before he grit his teeth and said grudgingly due to the evidence and circumstances the Magic Council decrees that fairy tale actions were justified, so no actions will be required against fairy tale. Naruto smirked when he saw the annoyed looks from the other members, especially when Naruto did a mock bow. Thank you. Once again the benevolent Magic Council has shown how they only uphold the most unbiased opinions when dealing with fairy tale. Naruto said with notable sarcasm, making the glares intensify. Naruto Uzumaki, we should also inform you that due to the unprovoked and unjustifiable actions of Phantom Lord, that Phantom Lord will to this day be disbanded, and Hose has been taken into custody of the Magic Council. Sigrun told Naruto with a smile as Naruto nodded his head. Naruto waved and started to walk off before saying well esteemed Magic Council it has been fun, but I must be off. Rebuilding the guild, sharing news and everything is a big priority right now. I will run home of course, since I don't need a carriage like some people. Naruto made sure to send a look to certain members of the council, as he infuriated them even more. As Naruto walked out of the magic council room he was stopped by Altier who said Naruto. Please wait. There are things I wish to discuss with you. Altier made sure to put her arms underneath her ample chest, and gave Naruto a seductive look. To her annoyance Naruto only gave her a look of disinterest and distrust. I said this before and I still mean it. I won't trust anyone who wears a mask no matter how pretty you try and make it. Naruto said coolly before he walked away from the smiling Altier who had a slight twitch in her eyebrow. That little. Altier thought to herself as she walked to an empty corridor to meet a smirking Sigrun. Seems like not all men fall to your charms Altier. Sigrun said with notable amusement as Altier gave a fake smile. I suppose not. Altier said with fake cheer before she got serious. Are all the preparations ready for you plan? Altier asked as Sigrun's smile grew. Yes. Now all we need is my dear Erza for Zerasama's revival. It will take a few days to prepare my little trap, but the time draws near Sigrun said with a dark smile which was mirrored on Altier. Naruto quickly ran back in a few hours back to Magnolia Town, which notable higher spirits. As soon as he got back to where the guild hall stood he was swamped by his worried guildmates. Naruto Khan you are back. Mira said with a happy smile. Did everything go alright? Makarov asked with some concern. Naruto just smiled and raised a fist up. Fairy tale is in the clear. Naruto told them as they cheered. What will happen to Phantom Lord? Lucy asked darkly as Naruto gave her a concerned look. Lucy are you alright? Naruto asked with worry seeing a few tears appearing on the blonde's face, as the rest of the guild gave her looks of sympathy. After you left, I got a letter from my father demanding that fairy tale hang me over. Lucy said angrily as Naruto eyes whitened before he eyes grew angry. My real name is Lucy Hertfilia heiress of the Hertfilia fortune, and my father paid Phantom Lord to attack us to get to me come home. Lucy explained shamefully refusing to look at the faces of concern from her guildmates who told her it was not her fault. Naruto stayed quiet but pulled Lucy into his arms as she looked white-eyed at him blinking away tears. Why rent you mad? Because I decided to run away from home fairy tale got attacked by Phantom Lord. Lucy asked desperately as Naruto squeezed her tighter. He said softly, I don't care why you left home Lucy or why your dad wanted you to come home. You are my family now along with everyone else, so we would never let anything happen to you ever. This got happy gasps from Lucy as the guild smiled. Well put Naruto-kun. Mira said with a warm smile as Urza nodded too. Natsu sent him a grin while Makarov looked proud. That is right. What kind of guild would we be if we gave one of us up like a coward? Makarov asked as the guild cheered. Lucy just kept crying in Naruto's embrace as he gently held her. Besides I doubt Ose actually gave a rat's ass about returning Lucy alive to her dad. He probably only took the job as a pretense to attack us, and he even fired a full-powered Jupiter cannon at the town, without getting Lucy out first. Naruto thought to himself as he looked down at the blonde who calmed herself down. Lucy gave him a grateful smile as she pulled back while Naruto gave her a reassuring smile. Listen up you brats. 
Today has been rough on all of us so we shall go home and celebrate. Next day we shall start to rebuild the guild hall better than ever. Makarov declared as everyone started to disperse into groups. Naruto was about to walk back to his home until his team looked eagerly at him. What? Naruto asked with sweat running down his back when they looked at him. Naruto, let us stay at your place tonight. Natsu demanded as they all looked at him expectedly. What? No way. Gray strips everywhere he goes, Natsu and Happy would eat all my food. Naruto exclaimed as Lucy and Urza had huge grins on their faces. How about us Naruto-kun? You won't leave two ladies to their own devices would you? Urza asked with a pout and whine. Naruto sighed when Lucy also sent him a pleading look. Fine one night. Naruto relented and sweat dropped when they cheered and Natsu and Grey laughed at his expression. Bring your own clothes though. I am not guessing your sizes Naruto said awkwardly with a slight blush as Lucy and Urza giggled before they ran to their places to grab a change of clothes. Careful man. Urza liked to be clingy when she sleeps. Grey warned with some humor as Natsu and Happy already left with laughter. I am not going to sleep in the same bed as him. Naruto said furiously as he had a massive blush. Inside his head he imagined a somewhat erotic picture of being sandwiched between Lucy and Urza busty bodies which he blinked away. Right. Well anyways see you and everyone else tomorrow. Grey said with a smirk as he walked away. Stupid perverted ice stripper. Naruto muttered as he regained control of his face just as Urza and Lucy came back with a bag full of clothes each. Is something wrong Naruto? Urza asked as Naruto noted the lack of honorific now. Not a thing. Let's go before it gets too late. Naruto suggested as the two women nodded and walked with Naruto to his home. After several minutes they arrived to Naruto's invisible house in the middle of the forest. Once he unsealed, he touched the doorknob and opened it. After you my ladies. Naruto said with a smile as he invited them. Urza and Lucy smiled and once they got in, they gave a gasp. They had seen inside once before, but it stood impressed them Naruto had the whole thing for himself. It's pretty late so I will cook us all a quick dinner, while you can take a bath or shower to freshen up. Naruto offered as he already walked to the kitchen and pulled out several ingredients out of his fridge. You don't have to do that. It's your home and we are guests. Lucy said as she started to feel regret for pressuring Naruto into letting them stay over. It's no problem. I think of myself lucky I get two beautiful ladies in my home anyways. Naruto said with a grin as he denied it being a burden. Lucy blushed at his comment while Urza nodded and smirked sultry. Well Naruto would you like to take a bath with me? I think it's only fair since I am spending the NGHT for free. Urza offered with a seductive look as she grinned inwardly when she saw Naruto's face turn a dark shade of red and blood start leaking down his nose. To her amusement Lucy was also blushing but almost seemed jealous. We can wash each other back or even front to front, as long you don't get any funny ideas. Urza offered as she pulled a towel out of her bag and clean clothes as well. Damn it. Does this woman have no shame? It's just like with Mira-chan. Do they not understand how impossible it would be to not jump them or try to grab them in a bath? Naruto thought to himself imagining some very erotic scenes involving him and Urza in a tub. Naruto was holding on to his nose which was leaking blood due to his thoughts and Urza's suggestions. Urza-san. She is so forward trying to seduce Naruto like this. Unless is this really what she considers a friendly thing. I mean she has always been kinda unmodest with her body. Why is this getting me so frustrated? It's not like it really means anything with my Naruto. Wait did I say my I am dating Naruto or anything, so it should matter if he bathes or does something with another girl. I hope nobody is reading my thoughts Lucy thought in a span of less than a minute, with her face going through several stages. It's okay Urza really I mean it might get weird and everything. Naruto said nervously as he continued to hold his nose closed, while Urza gave him an amused look. Are you sure? They can save on some money if we take one bath and we can get closer. Urza suggested walking to the bathroom with a notable shake of her hips. It's okay. Besides I got to make dinner and everything he... Naruto replied as he missed Lucy's sigh of relief. Very well. Urza sighed before she gleamed. Lucy come with me. It will be fun. Urza demanded as Lucy eaped as she was pulled by Urza along with her clothing bag. Together Lucy squeaked unable to resist the much more powerful wizard who only whistled in amusement. What would be the problem be for two girls to share a bath together? We can wash each other without a problem. Urza remarked as she grinned seeing Naruto with his nose overflowing and him with a happy expression on his face. No peeking Naruto. Urza called out before she closed the door with a blushing Lucy behind her. Naruto barely heard her as he very vivid imagines hit his mind of his two very attractive female teammates. Urza pulled off all her clothes without hesitation not even minding when Lucy stared at her with some awe as she slowly undressed. Urza turned the hot water on and after a few minutes filled the tub with nice hot water as she stepped in sighing with notable pleasure and relief. Come in Lucy. The water is perfect temperature. Urza told Lucy who had finished undressing herself. Lucy nodded before she carefully stepped in also sighing in relief and pleasure as a aching body relaxed in the hot water. The tub itself was shockingly large able to fit both females with ease, so neither felt cramped. 
The water level was high enough it went midway to both of the busty wizard's chests, but the bubbles covered what laid on depth the water. The seal's amazing. Lucy moaned as she washed her hair and face in the water. Yes, it is a rather nice change in pace from taking showers at home by myself. Urza remarked as she also washed her hair. Too bad Naruto could not join me or even us. There is plenty of space here if we scooched over. Urza remarked with a sigh as Lucy got flustered again. You mean that was a serious offer? Lucy shouted in surprise as Urza just shrugged. He would be naked with us in the tub. Lucy stated indignantly as Urza seemed nonchalant. I honestly don't see what the big issue is Lucy. I trust Naruto very much so I know he would know where to draw the line if he was bathing with us. Urza commented as she gestured to Lucy to start washing her back. Lucy did so with her jaw dropped. I mean I trust Naruto more than anyone, but he is still a guy. I can't blame him if he has urges that he can't control, but they are still have urges. Lucy insisted not in a place to be in that kind of situation, even with a guy she secretly liked. Urza turned around to Lucy with a deadpan expression. Have you never had a guy try to look down your shirt or take a peek of what is underneath your skirt? Mira and I honestly dress more conservatively than you Lucy, and we are fully aware that guys are checking us out even when we are on jobs. Urza asked with some sarcasm as Lucy closed her jaw with an out-of-the-park expression. Oh uh, well I mean. I know I have some impressive sizes and everything, and I realize people are going to look. Dot but it's different than letting a naked guy get so close to me when I am naked. Lucy insisted shaking her head trying to prove her point. Urza sighed and gave her a disappointed look. Do you think Naruto would honestly be a man who if you said no, would not be able to control his urges and back off Lucy? Urza scolded her as Lucy blinked, realizing that she was generalizing Naruto who had been nothing but kind to her, as nothing more than a man trying to get into her skirt. Lucy was silent before Urza chuckled. I did not mean to put you on the spot Lucy. I realize that there are some boundaries that must be respected, and I know Naruto would know uncomfortable with it as well. Urza admitted as she gestured for Lucy to turn over what she did. Urza started washing Lucy's back. Somehow I think despite this she would still eagerly invite Naruto into her bath if I wasn't here. Lucy thought to herself as she started to wash Urza's back and red hair. Lucy decided to change the subject from this awkwardness and ask something else. Don't you think it was nice of Naruto to invite us into his house, let us use his bath and even make us dinner? Lucy asked with a smile on her face. Yes, Naruto is truly a nice teammate with a wonderful heart. Perhaps I should do something nice to repay him as we did kin to guilt him to letting us come over. Urza remarked as she looked back at Lucy. Lucy. Urza. Dinner is ready so finish up your bath soon okay. Naruto loud voice could be heard from beyond the door. Okay Naruto. We will be out soon. Lucy replied as Urza got out first grabbing a towel from the towel rack to start to dry off her naked wet body. Lucy soon got out too and started to dry herself up. Lucy was pleasantly surprised to see eight clean towels in the bathroom, so each girl grabbed one for their hair as they are dressed into their pajamas. Lucy and Urza opened the door to walk back to the kitchen, only to be overwhelmed with the delicious smell of hard cooked food. Naruto rubbed his head and chuckled I hope it's okay girls. I didn't know I would have guests over, so I just cooked a simple meal out of the stuff from my fridge. Naruto said modestly. Urza and Lucy were already drooling as they sat on each side of Naruto. Naruto had been barraged with comments and imagines from the tailed beasts inside of him, telling to claim at least one if not both of his female teammates. Mad at Abi had even claimed that the redhead was asking for him to step up. Much to his embarrassment. Naruto had to resort to using three shadow clones to finish the meal, while he confronted the tailed beasts directly inside his mind. He made it clear no matter how attractive he thought they were, he had no intentions of starting anything with any of them, until he was sure that is what they wanted. Naruto had taken a quick look at Urza and Lucy. Urza wore a pink PJ top and bottom, while Lucy wore blue ones. They each had a towel on their head for their slightly damp hair, which Naruto noted still looked rather good on them, especially the loose parts framing their faces. The meal consisted on three huge bowls of rice, one for each of them, a giant rice cooker full of fresh rice, three vegetable dishes and two meat dishes. This looks amazing Naruto. Lucy told him as he waited for them to start eating before he took high first bit. This is absolutely amazing Naruto. I mean I knew you could cook from the train ride, but this is absolutely delicious. Urza told him with stars in her eyes which were mirrored by Lucy. Thanks that means a lot to me. Naruto said as he ate a quick rate while Lucy and Urza devoured the food. After everything was eaten both Urza and Lucy looked much more content than before. Thanks for the meal and everything Naruto. Lucy thanked him with a bow. Yes, Naruto it was a wonderful night and I thank you as well. Urza praised as Naruto smiled. No problem. I think we shall all go to sleep tonight as I think the next couple of days will be just helping out rebuilding the guild so rougher. Naruto suggested as Lucy and Urza nodded while they each went to separate bedrooms. Naruto entered his and told the photos of his parents and Jiraiya, it is not what you think. They are just friends staying over for a night. He could also imagine his dad laughing, Jiraiya giving him a thumbs up and his mom fussing over him for the misunderstanding.
The next morning, they all woke up pretty early so Lucy and Urza could return to their homes before anyone could find out they spent the night at Naruto's. Naruto waved goodbye to the girls as they walked away. Naruto made sure to reseal his home again before he slowly walked over to the guild hall. Naruto made sure to arrive there first as he greeted the town people who happened to be setting up for their openings. After an hour Mira was the first to show up and was quite surprised to see Naruto be there before she was. Naruto-kun, you are here awfully early today. Mira said with a smile as Naruto grinned at her. Yeah I am eager to start repairing the guild hall. Naruto claimed as she smiled with amusement. By the next hour later everyone had arrived with Mira noticing that Naruto glared at Grey and Natsu who looked away. She also noticed Lucy and Urza seemed much happier than usual, but shook it off as a coincidence. Wonder why Naruto-kun is mad at Grey and Natsu. Also, why Lucy and Urza seemed so relaxed. Ph well I guess if they want me to know they will tell me at some point. Mira mused as she turned back to Makarov who began to go over the plan. The next week passed quickly for Fairy Tail as they started construction on the new guild hall, with no notable events happening. Naruto did tell Lucy and Urza quietly without anyone noticing that they were not going to stay at his house again like that which Lucy pouted but agreed. Urza offered to let Naruto sneak into her place in bath as her payment, but Naruto had declined with a blush. Naruto did notice that Gadjil appeared to be hovering near the ruined guild hall, but never close enough for anyone to see him. Naruto also sensed Juvia around the construction zone, hiding wherever Grey happened to have working. He even noticed once that there was a lunchbox carried by a wave with Juvia's signature with it. Naruto could only conclude that somehow Water Wizard had a crush on Grey, but was unable to express it. Haha <laughs> poor Juvia. Grey has someone who loves him and he has no idea. Good thing I never had anyone like that for me. Naruto thought to himself as he carried several planks of wood towards Makarov. Meanwhile in the elemental nations, a certain bussy Hayuga sneezed out of nowhere making her younger sister rather concerned. Wani san Are you okay? Hanabi asked with worry. It's okay Hanabi. It must be a one-time thing. Hinata claimed as she grabbed a tissue for her nose. Maybe somebody is talking about you. Hanabi teased as Hinata rolled her eyes playfully. Back in Earthland, by the end of the week the basic construction with the basic structure was complete much to everyone relief. Makarov came up to Naruto with a letter in hand. What's up master? Naruto asked with some curiosity. My boy I got a personal request for a solo job asking for you. Makarov told him proudly as the guild got interested. Well it was not unheard of it was rare for a requester to ask for a specific team, let alone a specific person for a job. Naruto looked over the letter before a grin appeared on his face. It seems like a fun one, and I would love to do it by myself. Naruto said confidently as the guild looked at him eagerly. His only thought after reading the job request was teacher. What? Why does Naruto get a solo job out of nowhere? Natsu whined as the guild started whispering to each other about what Naruto's solo job was. Naruto, Natsu does have a point. If you are going on a job without the team, we should discuss it first. Urza said with some disapproval as Naruto sighed. Wait team? Lucy asked as the rest of the guild looked incredulous at her. I mean you, handsome, grey, Natsu and Urza are basically joined at the hip, so yeah, we assumed you guys are a team. Kana told her amused as Lucy blinked several teams to process it. Yoli chan I mean I don't think you guys talked about it or anything we just assumed by how close and how well you guys work together, you are basically a team. Levi added as Kana nodded approvingly. I see no reason why we can't make it official. Urza said as Natsu, Grey and Naruto nodded. Lucy looked awestruck as the guild clapped at the announcement. However, Mir had a sour expression on her face as she murmured nobody asked me if I wanted to be on a team with Naruto Kun or anything. Thought she was hiding behind the bar counter which had been restored. Lasana just gave a nervous laugh, hoping that her big sister would not dispute this. Then Naruto's official team looked expectantly at Naruto who sighed dramatically. Fine. Here is a discussion. Not going, not going, not going, not going sorry. Naruto said pointing at Natsu, Grey, Urza and Lucy respectively. There was silence for a moment before the guild yelled at the same time what kind of discussion was that. Makarov coughed getting everyone attention. I agree with Naruto. This job is too important for you all to join in just because you want to have fun with Naruto. Makarov said sternly as Natsu and Grey looked annoyed. Lucy and Urza looked more confused while Naruto sighed. Please explain Naruto. Urza asked nicely as Naruto nodded. Alright the King of Fiori has decided to open a teaching school for wizards and has invited me to be a substitute teacher for a few students. Naruto revealed as the guild started to whisper in excitement. The king himself asked for Naruto. Jed asked in astonishment while Lucy looked at confused. King? Has anyone actually met our king? Lucy asked the guild and to her astonishment everyone shook her head. Lucy? The king has more power in our country than the magic council but usually they deal with things more offhand so they leave the decisions mostly to the magic council. Naruto explained ignoring the grumbling at the mention of the council. So, it is no wonder very few wizards ever get time alone with the king. Naruto expanded as Makarov nodded in agreement. Lucy's eyes shined at the new information while the rest of the guild whispered at the idea of meeting the king. So will the king even be at the school? 
Gray decided to ask, but Naruto shook his head. No, but his daughter Princess Hisui will be managing it on his behalf, so we need to make a good impression. Naruto informed them as the girl dinched away from his teammates who looked less pleased at the implications. What the hell? So, the reason we can't come is because you think we will make a bad impression. Natsu shouted spewing out fire as Naruto gave him a dry look. Gray smirked at Natsu and said smugly I can see why Natsu would be a bad choice, but I think I watch you'd represent fairy tale very well. Natsu butted heads with Gray in anger. What did you say ice stripper? Natsu shouted angrily. You heard me fire breather. Gray retorted. The guild let the two have their little moment before Urza smashed their heads together. Boys behave. Urza barked as Gray and Natsu held their throbbing heads. Yes, Urza. Gray said submissively. Sorry Urza. Natsu whimpered as happy just sighed. Okay now that is over. Could you elaborate why you insist on going on this job by yourself Naruto? Urza asked politely as Lucy gave him a curious look as well. Besides the fact the king asked personally for me to come alone. Naruto asked rhetorically as the guild looked a bit annoyed at his answer, so he decided to continue. Fine. Here are the practical reasons why the rest of the team should not come with me. Natsu you destroy things a lot, and I don't think the king would appreciate you destroying his skull he spent a fortune on to build. Naruto told Natsu bluntly as Natsu started yelling with fire coming out. What is that supposed to mean? Do you think I have no control and I just destroy everything I touch? Natsu asked as the guild looked at him flatly. Yes. Everyone echoed as Happy gave him a sad pat on the back. Gray. Naruto said pointing to Gray who looked relaxed. You tend to strip accidentally at random moments, and I am pretty sure the students I will be teaching will be our age or younger. If you strip in front of younger girls that is pretty much sexual harassment. Naruto informed him as Gray looked insulted. What are you talking about? Gray asked before the girl pointed at him. Gray your clothes. Mira said as Gray looked down to see him in just his boxers. Crap. Where did my clothes go? Gray asked as he comically jumped up and started looking for his clothes. Seems like good reasons to me so far. Lucy thought with a sweat drop as Kana laughed at Natsu and Gray. Naruto turned to Lucy with a sympathetic smile as Lucy looked at Naruto. Sorry Lucy, but although you don't have any quirks like these guys. Naruto informed him pointing to the two other males of the team, as Lucy giggled in agreement. Your magic is pretty much specialized to people who want to and able to lean celestial spirit magic, so I don't think you would get a lot out of teaching. Naruto told him gently as Lucy sighed but nodded. That's okay Naruto. Thanks for explaining. Lucy told him with a smile as Naruto smiled back at her. Everyone inched away when the Scarlet Knight walked towards Naruto and looked at him expectantly. Naruto, I understand why for the others you would prefer they do not come with you, but I wish to know why we cannot go together on this job. Urza asked with a raised eyebrow as Naruto looked at her directly. Urza, I will be honest. You are amazingly strong and kind, but you do not have much patience for teaching. Before you say anything your magic equip. The night is exceedingly difficult for anyone besides you to learn, and this class will only be for a week or two at most. I do not believe that in that short a span of time you could pass on magic in an effective manner. Naruto told her calmly as everyone held their breath waiting for Urza's reaction. Urza blinked before a warm smile appeared on her face. You are absolutely right Naruto. You make excellent points plus I believe you will do excellent as a teacher. You do have more magic than the ones you showed us, right? Urza said with an intrigued look as Naruto just smiled innocently. Plus, did I tell you guys this job is only worth 5,000 jewels? Naruto decided to ask as everyone looked wide-eyed at him. Yeah it is hardly enough for one person let alone getting split into five. Naruto mused as Lucy ran up to him. Wait a job from the king himself is only worth 5,000 jewels. Lucy asked in disbelief as even completing this job solo, she would not have enough for next month's rent. Yeah. It is basically volunteer teacher work for fun and good exposure for the guild. Naruto said cheerfully as Makarov gave him a look of approval for thinking beyond himself. Natsu and Grey looked far less annoyed now about being left behind when they learned the actual prize was much less than what they were expecting. You would think the rich king would be less stingy and give out millions of jewels for a job he asked for. Natsu murmured as Naruto just chuckled. Naruto could tell most of the guild felt the way Natsu did, despite not saying it out loud. He personally could care less about the amount as he had a fair amount saved up. He was happier to be able to teach for once, instead of solving a problem he was helping the future generations. One question remains though. Why would the king request for Naruto specifically? I get he would not want everyone popping up especially for the low reward, but it seems weird that he asked for a person specifically. Makaba pointed out as Mira glared at him. Lasana frowned while Naruto raised an eyebrow. He could never understand why the older guys seemed threatened by him, despite him toe showing any ill will towards him. Hey that's not cool to attack Naruto Nai like that. It's not like he asked the king for a job and he got one. Lasana said defiantly as Wakaba raised his hands in surrender. It's no problem. I honestly wondered that as I have never met the king of his daughter like you guys. Naruto pointed out, but to his surprise Mira gave him a knowing smile. I think I know the reason. 
Naruto Khan has a pretty famous reputation by now, so the king wants to know if he is as good a person as people say. Mira remarked as she brought out several copies of Sorcerer Weekly. Everyone crowded in as Mira pointed out several articles. To Naruto's embarrassment, Jason seemed to have an uncanny source on his life here, since he got to Fairy Tail. While they got Hanaruto beat the entire Eisenwald Guild besides Eriger by yourself. Lucy pointed out in excitement. They also got Hanaruto beaters a one-on-one. -on -one. Kana whistled in appreciation. How uh, somehow they got confirmation you beat Deliora in Galuna Island. Gray commented. Hey Naruto Khan in mind job to West City is in here. Mira sat with glee as Naruto blushed remembering what happened after the job. It even has how Naruto saved Magnolia from the Jupiter Cannon and ate its magic power. Elfman said impressed as Naruto waved them off. Look it sounds impressive when you put it together, but these are just simple things that happened. Naruto said modestly as the guild smiled at his attempts to lessen his efforts. However, Natsu had a serious look on his face. Natsu what's wrong? Happy asked worried as Natsu walked up to Naruto. Naruto. I know you were Dragon Slayer before you ate the Jupiter Cannon Blast, so stop stalling and tell us what your element is. Natsu demanded as Naruto gave him an amused smile. Several people looked confused. Element. Did Naruto become a Jupiter Dragon Slayer after consuming the blast? Biscuit decided to ask. Naruto shook his head. No, I got the power through the Jupiter Cannon, because my magic container was empty due to the effects of the drain spell. When I ate the blast my magic become like the Jupiter Cannon, but it was temporarily. I don't have that power anymore. Naruto confirmed. Lucy asked in worry what happens if a Dragon Slayer eats an element that they are to train for. Natsu decided to answer if we eat elements our magic is not made for we will get sick. Everyone gulped at the imagine. That is not technically correct. If the magic has multiple elements in it and you consume it, you might get some power from the trace amounts of your elements in it, but afterward you will get sick. Naruto elaborated as Natsu blinked never realizing that. Urza realized something wait if you are a dragon slayer like Natsu, why don't you get motion sickness? Urza asked realizing that this must be why Naruto knew about motion sickness on the train. Natsu eyes widened comically as he started spewing out what the hell. You mean Naruto has been a dragon slayer and doesn't get sick on a train? Naruto shrugged and replied Natsu you and other dragon slayers get motion sickness, as your bodies were not prepared for the heightened senses and abilities before you got the magic. I had my senses and abilities only somewhat enhanced after getting dragon slayer magic. Most of my abilities I had before I got the magic, so I had my body prepared essentially. Natsu looked outraged while the rest of the guild looked impressed. Naruto was sure to not mention his shinobi training allowed him to do more things than Dragon Slayer magic. So, what is your element Naruto? Grey asked as everyone leaned in eagerly while Naruto took a dramatic pause. Alright. So, here's Sky Devil Slayer magic in my left hand. Naruto declared as Yellow Wind gathered in his left hand. And in my right hand. Naruto said as everyone turned to his hand looking expectantly. Is. What would be Dragon Slayer magic if I wanted to use it? Naruto said teasingly as everyone had dropped before the guild gathered around him angrily. What? Tell us your element already. Natsu shouted as Naruto kept shrugging. Naruto what is the big deal with your dragon slayer magic? I mean we don't expect you to pop it out or anything, but you could just say its name. Kana remarked, but she recoiled when she saw Naruto's eyes grow cold. Naruto. Lucy asked in worry as the guild backed away when Naruto kind face was filled with anger. You want to know the truth? Naruto asked with pure coldness as his eyes were the dark shade of blue. The truth is my dragon slayer magic is a failure. It did not turn out the way I wanted to. Unlike Natsu, I did not have Igneal to hold my hand and teach me every step of the way, how to use Dragon Slayer magic correctly. I got it after training, but not the one I wanted. Why else do you think I hid the fact I could use it till I had to ha? Huh? Naruto ranted angrily as angry wind picked up around him. Naruto calmed down. Makarov yelled as Naruto angrily punched the air, and a burst of Sky Devil magic blew the door off its hinges. Naruto realized his temper got the better of him, and the wind disappeared as he looked more tired than anything. Sorry everyone for losing my temper and for the door. This should cover the repairs. Naruto said in regret as he handled a large number of jewels to Makarov before he walked out of the guild. That seemed extreme for Naruto. I wonder what happened with his dragon Salir magic for him to try to hide it. Urza asked after Naruto left. Natsu looked shocked at Naruto's anger, and wondered what Naruto meant about not having Igneal teach him. As the guild just stood there in silence Makarov decided to take charge. Anyone who wants to do a job is still free to or the rest of you can help with repairs and remodeling. Makarov declared as Lucy walked up to Mira when the guild dispersed. Mira said is there any jobs I can take with the rest of the team? Lucy asked as Mira rummaged through the job requests before giving her one. Hey Lucy. This is a request to help a town with a bomb threat. With the four of you it should be no problem. Mira told her gently as Lucy nodded her head in appreciation. Also here is a second one in case the first one goes awry. It's for a play. Mira whispered as she handed her a folded job request to Lucy. Thanks Mira-san. 
Lucy said appreciation as she pocketed the second one and walked towards Urza, Grey and Atsu, who still looked shook up with Naruto's outburst. Meanwhile with Naruto several miles outside Magnolia Town, the tailed beasts inside Naruto were worried about Naruto, as he never had such an outburst since he came to Earhand. Naruto let his body go on autopilot as he ran towards the school. Naruto. Kurama said with notable worry as Naruto looked with a sigh. I should not have blown up on them like that. Naruto acknowledged. But you didn't want them to think your dragon slayer magic was something all inspiring right? Jayuki remarked as Naruto looked distant. It's just I spent a lot of time and effort into learning dragon slayer magic, and it turned out like this. Naruto said sadly as the tailed beasts lowered their heads. It's powerful Naruto-kun, but not what you wanted to accomplish in learning it. Matatabi noted as Naruto looked glum. I know everyone here thinks I am some kind of genius, but like in the elemental nations all I am is good at hard work and never giving up. Naruto declared as the tailed beasts gave him a smile before he just ran in silence for several hours. Naruto eventually saw the giant skull and whistled when the king goes big, he goes big. I wonder who my students will be. Naruto remarked as he entered the door and went to the admission office. Hello. May I ask why you are here? The receptionist asked politely. She was an older woman with red hair and green eyes but still youthful looks. I got this and came to fulfill it. Naruto said as he passed her the letter from the king. She read it over before her eyes widened. Forgive me. Please have a seat, and Hisui Haim will be right away Yuzumaki-sama. The receptionist said with a bow. No need for formalities but happy to wait. Naruto said cheerfully sitting down on a comfortable looking couch. Wonder what the princess looks like. Naruto wondered. He like a lot of people never met the royal family before, and he only heard that the princess was about his age if not somewhat younger. Several minutes passed before the receptionist waved him over and pointed him to the headmaster office. Naruto walked to the door and knocked. Come in. A feminine voice answered as Naruto opened the door and was awestruck for just a moment when he saw the princess for the first time. Naruto had grudgingly admitted since coming to Earthland that somehow every girl his age seemed to be much bustier than the girls or even full-grown women he had met in the elemental nations. Bussy girls were rarity with Naruto only knowing Hinata and Tsunade as being busty, although he had heard about the Mizukajime and Kumo Jonin Samui. Yet somehow almost every girl he had met in Earthland was busty or exceptionally pretty at least. AN2. Levy was the only one that came to mind that was not overly busty in his guild, but it seemed like the norm, so he was not stupid enough to bring it up. Is there something in the water here that makes all the girls super pretty? Naruto mused to himself as he was sure his godfather would die of happiness if he lived here. Kana popped to his head as the girl Jiraiya would most happy to meet. A busty brunette who drank a lot and had no issues with guys checking them out or even flirting with her. Although he had a feeling his godfather would more likely get swindled out of paying for Kana's drinks more than anything real besides maybe inspiration for his pervy books, but he was sure Jiraiya would be happy either way. Several girls flashed into his mind including Mare, Urza, Lucy just from his guild. Hisui looked about 16 and despite not being busty like his guild mates, he could admit to himself finding her beautifully in a royal princess way. She had wavy light green hair that reached her middle of her back, two strands framing her face and the tuff on her forehead. She seemed to have a more pale complexion with dark green eyes. She wore a white and green dress that clung to her body that was low cut, exposing some of her developing cleavage, and ended at her mid thighs, along with light green gloves that went with her long sleeves. She did not wear stocking or socks only some green high heels, with some royal accessories like bracelets on her left thigh, and another halfway on her right leg. She wore a golden tiara with a red gemstone in the middle, a large silver necklace with a green pendant and a pair of silver earrings. AN3 Overall Naruto noted she fit the princess look down to a Tihisui smiled at him as unknown to him, she checked him out quickly, and was impressed with what she saw. Hello Naruto Yuzumaki-san. Thank you for coming on such short notice on behalf of my father. Hisui said with a smile as Naruto grinned back to her. Not a problem Hisui Haim. Naruto said with a bow as she giggled. Hisui thought for a moment before she asked shyly. Can you please call me something a bit less formal? Naruto gave her a look of confusion so she explained. I don't have many friends especially close to my age. So I am hoping we can be friends. She asked with a blush as Naruto beamed at her. Of course, Hisui Chan. In return I want something less formal than Naruto san okay. Naruto told her as she nodded her head. Of course, Naruto kun. Please call me Haim when in public though. When it is just us Chan is fine. Hisui proposed as Naruto agreed. Now classes will start tomorrow so today I think we should get to know each other better, so we can communicate when the students arrive. Hisui suggested as Naruto chuckled at her formal way of putting it. Consider it done. Naruto said with a grin as Naruto wondered what the pretty princess had in mind. So Hisui-chan what do you want to do on this free day? Naruto asked the pretty princess curiously. He had never been to this part of Fiori so he was fine just doing whatever the princess asked. Hmm. Dot Hesui thought for a moment before a look of realization appeared on her face. Shoot. Sorry, Naruto-kun. I still have to decide on whether to accept one student into the term, and who they should be placed under. 
Hisui apologized with an apologizing look. Naruto sent her a grin and shook his head. No worries Hisui-chan. Do you want some help? Naruto asked as Hisui tilted her head to the side. Help? Hisui asked as she gathered some files from inside her desk onto the top. Yeah help. I mean if you can't decide whether to accept the student maybe you need another person's opinion. Naruto remarked before adding two heads are better than one right. Naruto joked lamely. Hisui sent him a blank look before a fit of giggles left her mouth making Naruto grin. Hisui quickly covered her mouth when she realized how unladylike she just acted. She was still pleased at Naruto attempt to lighten the mood. Alright Naruto can you win? Hisui surrendered before she took one folder marked on standby. Naruto looked hard Hisui who was scanning through the folder with a frown. So, what's the problem? Naruto asked as Hisui looked up inside. Most of the people rejected are people who boast that they get to be the first people taught at the school robbed by the king. And their reason for picking us. Hisui said with annoyance as Naruto also frowned. However, this applicant wrote I want to try really hard and do my best. As the reason why. Hisui said with a look of tiredness. Naruto gave her a look of confusion so she explained. The entry fee for taking the class is 50 joules, and this poor applicant only could afford 10 Hisui said with regret as she bit her lip nervously. Father told me I have to be objective with the applicants and cannot play favors, which is what I do if I waive the fee for this one applicant. Hisui revealed sadly as Naruto looked thoughtful. Hisui-chan can I see the folder please? Naruto asked as Hisui looked at him before she handed the folder over. Hmm. Let's see. Wendy Marvel ha. Huh? Looks like she is part of a guild called Cage Shelter. Never heard of him. Yeah it does look like she could only afford part of the entry fee, but her application seems honest and pure. Naruto thought reading over the file silently. Any idea what the Cage Shelter is? Naruto asked as Hisui thought it over. Hmm. Honestly, I only know that Wendy Marvel herself registered the guild herself on behalf of its master several years ago. It is not famous like fairy tale or luminous scales, but is a registered legal guild. Hisui informed Naruto who though I was rather strange but choose not to comment on it. After a few minutes Hisui sighed and grabbed her pen with a sad look in her eyes. If I am going to become queen I must stay fair so sadly Wendy Marvel must be rejected. Hisui said, but to her surprise Naruto stopped her with a shake of her head. Hey you don't need to be hasty here. If you think Wendy is an ideal student and the only thing stopping her from coming here then I can pay the 50 joules. Naruto assured her as Hisui looked wide-eyed in surprise. What? You mean you want to buy admission for a girl you have never met before based on nothing? Hisui said with an incredulous tone as Naruto's sweat dropped. It sounds crazy when you have that kind of tone. Naruto thought to himself as he swore he could sense the tailed beast snickering at him. Hey it's no big deal. You can keep your neutral objective position, and Wendy here can get a chance to better herself. Everyone wins. Naruto said cheerfully as Hisui looked at him in confusion. Why would you go so far for somebody you never known before Naruto-kun? Hisui demanded as Naruto looked away for a minute. Because nobody can become great if nobody believes in them. Naruto replied with deep thought before adding, if people didn't believe in me then I would not be here today. Naruto then had several imagines appear in his mind. Naruka, Kakashi, Jiraiya, Team 7, Rookie 9, Kahona, The Ninja World, Mavis, and then Fairy Tail. Because of all of them I could become somebody who could help others instead of falling into darkness. Naruto thought somberly as he stared back into the white eyes of Hisui. Naruto-kun why do you think Wendy is worth betting on? Hisui asked seriously as Naruto smiled softly thinking of his past. I can't be sure, but I have a feeling Wendy will be big in the future, and I feel this simple act could help a lot. Naruto tried to explain as he pulled out several bundles of jewels to hand to Hisui who looked reluctant. Naruto I should accept this, you are already going to be teaching a class and the pay is that great Hisui said, trying to refuse the offered jewels. Naruto sighed before an idea struck his head. Okay don't consider this a free buy okay. How about this? In exchange for getting Wendy's fee paid for I get to have her in my class. Naruto offered as Hisui gave him a bewildered look. So you want to pay for this girl's class, and you want to teach it too? Hisui asked him as Naruto rubbed his head trying to explain. Think of it this way. Paying for Wendy's class is an investment, right? So, by teaching her I can see if my using jewels for her sake pans out. Naruto commented as Hisui bit her lip before finally accepting the jewels. Fine if you want to make a bet be my guest. Hisui said in a puffy voice looking away from Naruto as she signed for Wendy acceptance. Naruto could still hear some admiration making him grin on the inside. After Hisui put her magic seal on it through a stamp the box containing the applications flashed before they flew off using magic. Hisui looked at the time and saw it was getting pretty late, so she sighed sorry Naruto-kun it looks like our time to get to know each other will just have to be dinner. Maybe tomorrow we do something more exciting. Hisui said apologetically as Naruto gave her a weird look. Wait didn't you say classes start tomorrow? Naruto asked. Did I? Hisui said with a thoughtful look before she shook her head. My mistake. Today is Friday and classes don't start till Monday I guess next school day. Hisui giggled trying to amend her statement as Naruto chuckled softly. 
Seems like our local princess is just like any girl at heart. Naruto mused seeing the regal princess blush briefly. Dinner sounds fine, but I just realized I don't have a place to stay for the duration of the classes, so can you point me to the local hotel? Naruto asked nervously as Hisui giggled. Don't be silly Naruto Khan you are a guest of honor here. Father and I already paid for your stay at a private home near the school. Hisui assured him as Naruto rubbed his head at the princess generous offer. Geez you don't have to do that you know. It's not like I am strapped for cash or anything Naruto started as Hisui raised a hand making him got silent. He didn't need to pay for Wendy's admission either. Hisui reminded him putting her hands on her hips sternly. Naruto chuckled at the sassy princess as he lifted his hands in surrender. Alright your highness I know when I am beat. Naruto joked as Hisui narrowed her hands. Of course, as your future queen you accept when I give you a gift. Hasui claimed before she laughed at how out of character it was for her. Naruto and Hisui soon walked out of the school and campus to a secluded area where a few fancy houses were spread out. Hisui walked first bringing out a key before she unlocked the door, gesturing for Naruto to enter first. Naruto walked and whistled in appreciation. Despite it lacking the homey feeling of his place in Magnolia, he could easily admit this place was very fancy, and a step up from a hotel. He could see a fully operated kitchen, two bedrooms, bathroom and a living room. Hisui and Naruto entered the kitchen, and Hisui turned to Naruto with an embarrassed look before saying Naruto Khan are you okay just eating a dessert? I admit I only know how to cook simple desserts. This actually surprised Naruto as most royals in the elemental nations had people cook for them 24-7, so he assumed all nobles were incapable of cooking for themselves. He was pretty pleased to see the pretty princess be more than a pretty face. Naruto grinned it's okay Hisui chan. I am actually a decent cook myself. Why don't you handle dessert while I cook our supper? Naruto offered. A part of him wanted to have people over in the elemental nations, while he realized he greatly enjoyed cooking in this world. Hisui looked at her for a moment before a smile appeared on her face. Consider it done. Hisui said as she grabbed some fresh apples, flour, salt, sugar, and some water to prepare her dessert. Naruto smiled at the happy princess, while he grabbed some rice, vegetables and meat from the fridge, to prepare the main course for the two of them. After several minutes Naruto finished the meal while Hesui was done with the apple pie, and was letting it cool on a nearby table. Wow Naruto Khan this smells delicious. Hisui praised seeing how the meal looks simple, but smelled more delicious than the fancy food her cooks at home made for her. Naruto grinned before he started eating at a polite rate, while Hesui took a first bite, and her eyes widened in delight. Naruto Khan it absolutely amazing. Hisui praised as she eagerly continued eating, while Naruto gave her a modest smile. Thanks, Hisui Chan it means a lot. Naruto told her while he wondered why people thought his cooking was so good while he just thought it was okay. Inside Naruto's seal Matatabi grinned and thought to herself silly Naruto-kun. Little do you know a quick way to a woman's heart is through cooking. Dot. After an hour with Hisui commenting on his cooking and on several flavors, she never tried they were done supper. Naruto was pleased to see the princess happy and was pleased to try the dessert. The apple pie was cold down, but still warm, so Hisui sliced it into pieces, and quietly watched for Naruto's reaction out of the corner of her eyes. Naruto took a bite before saying this is amazing Hisui-chan. Hisui eyes lit up as she asked really you like it. Like it? I loved it. Naruto praised as he savored the warm treat. I mean it is so warm and sweet and gooey. Naruto commented as Hisui beamed in happiness. I mean anyone would find you the perfect wife with sweets like this. Naruto said without thinking as Hisui instantly looked away. Luckily for her Naruto was too immersed in the pie to notice. Hisui face lit up as she felt her face pee in a bright red glow. She placed her hands on her face in embarrassment, feeling how hot she felt. What's wrong with me? He is just complimenting my cooking I should not be so embarrassed. I mean calm down. She chanted to herself trying to calm her racing heart down. Luckily it quickly passed as she returned with the calm but please look. I am glad you enjoy it Naruto-kun. Hisui said pleasantly as they finished supper on a happy note. Hisui-chan are you free tomorrow? Naruto asked as Hisui rose up to leave. Yes, I am, but Sunday I need to prepare the school for the students, and I need to tell your expectations for being a teacher. She told him with a smile as Naruto sent a grin at her. Okay how about you come on tomorrow early and I can cook your breakfast, and then we can go someone fun okay? Naruto offered cheerfully. Hisui thought for a moment before she nodded that sounds acceptable Naruto-kun. See you tomorrow. She said as Naruto waved her goodbye. Naruto quickly got ready for bed after a relaxing shower. He figured being the princess in charge of the school Hisui must have her own accommodations. The next morning around 9 Hisui rang Naruto up at his home, only to have him answer shirtless to her embarrassment. Naruto apologized and put a shirt on explained it was part of a daily routine he did when he was at home. Hisui accepted his apology as Naruto made breakfast for them. It was hearty breakfast of pancakes, eggs, bacon and toast which amazed Hisui. You mean to tell me you never had any of this stuff before for breakfast? Naruto asked in surprise as Hisui nodded her head. Growing up I guess I ate different things than most people do. Hisui acknowledged as she happily dug into her pancakes. Naruto smiled happy to see the relaxed princess getting a new experience. 
After the breakfast Naruto asked So Hisui chan what is fun to do around here. Hisui gave light blush as Naruto quickly noticed a flyer in her hand about a carnival in town. Naruto could sense the princess was too proud or at least too embarrassed to admit wanting to go, so he decided he would take the pressure off. Say Hesui chan I heard a rumor this place has a great carnival in town. Perhaps you can show me how it is today. Naruto asked nonchalantly as Hisui looked confused until she realized what was happening. Of course, Naruto-kan but I think we stand out too much if we go. Hisui pointed out as Naruto snapped his finger. When the smoke cleared Hisui saw she was now blonde with colossal jeans and a hoodie instead of her green hair and white dress. Hisui gave him a questioning look before he chuckled. I just used some basic transformation magic, and you should call yourself less formal. How about Asia-chan? Naruto told her as she looked thoughtful. Alright. I suppose Asaya would be appropriate. You should change your name too. How about Menmakan? Hisui replied as Naruto eye twitched. Sure Asia-chan. Naruto said with a grin as he thought it must be a coincidence that Hesui picked a name that went against his own Raymond topping name. Her smirk she sent his way implied otherwise. Shortly afterwards they went to the Grand Carnival where luckily nobody recognized Aja or Mena. This meant they could be themselves without people seeing recognizing them. Naruto even changed his hair to black skin straight on the off chance somebody would recognize him. Mena and Asasai quickly realized they enjoyed both high and fast rides. Menma quickly got her a giant fox doll from the ring toss event which Asasia gave a huge grateful smile in return. Asasia's reaction to eating cotton candy was hilarious for Menma, and was worth getting the stink eye afterward. For lunch they decided to stay at the carnival and ate some hot dogs and fries. Menma judged that Asasia never had either of them judging by her reluctance, and alter her absolute delight of face after eating them. Menma could only assume that growing up in royalty Asasia never ate what the obels would call common food. They enjoyed the rest of the evening playing many more games and winning more prizes, most of them Menma gave to Asasia much her embarrassment. Several house later Asasia and Menma dropped off their prizes at the school in Menma's home, while keeping on their disguises. Asasia decided to treat Menma for the wonderful da, by going to a fancy usually reservations only restaurant. Hisui earlier booked an appointment for the two of gave the maitre d a special note to prove her reservation which Naruto saw and was impressed at the prince's foresight. Naruto got to experience a world-class experience getting smaller portions, but many different foods were offered, while Hesui merely commented on the spectacular flavor as usual. After the dinner Hesui walked with Naruto back to his home, as Naruto simply enjoyed more time with the princess. Naruto-kun I would like to thank you for an amazing day today. Hesui said warmly as Naruto sent her a grin. No problem Hesui-chan. I had a lot of fun too. You are pretty fun. Naruto told her before he felt something collide with him, and when he looked down he saw the princess barrel into him a tight hug. Thanks for everything Naruto-kun. Hisui whispered as Naruto instinctively hugged her back. She pulled back after a minute and turned away with a huge blush on her face. Tomorrow please meet me after one so we can discuss what your responsibilities will have okay. Hisui told him in rush before she walked off before he could respond. Hisui quickly ran off out the door before she put a hand on her beating heart. Truth be told she already had a small crush on the older blonde, and she could not help giving him her first hug out of appreciation. She admitted he was her first friend she had, and she could not help how her heart beat quickly when he smiled, or when she got a compliment. Naruto on the other had a look of confusion and small embarrassment from the unexpected interaction with Hisi. Naruto reflected he did not get many hugs in the end besides the one from Sakura for saving the village, and one where she tried to lay claiming she loved him. Both times he felt only platonic feelings of kinship looking back. When he got to Earthland Mavis and him exchanged hugs frequently at he thought nothing of it. It just felt right, especially when he felt Mavis' loneliness melt away, since only, he could make physical mate contact with her ghost body. Then the rare hugs with Mira which still made him embarrassed, but he could admit he greatly enjoyed them, especially when he got a whiff of her sweet hair, and the feeling of her body against his. The hug with Hisui was different again, but he decided if Hisui did not bring it up tomorrow, he would not either. The next day he decided to sleep in and slept until 11, before he made himself a quick lunch. He entered the school and walked to Hisui's office dot. Yusi sent him a smile with no trace of yesterday events affecting her, which was perfectly fine with Naruto. Naruto-kan thank you for coming. Here are the expectations. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hisui told him as she handed him a bundle of papers. I will make sure to do that Hisui-chan. Naruto told him before he sat down and started skimming through the papers. He summarized in his head seems easy enough. Show up by 9 with students expected to come before, class is 9-4 with an hour lunch at 12. The option to choose to eat with students if wanted but not required. Naruto thought to himself these seemed more than reasonable so far. Since this is the first time, I won't be grading them, but I will have to do a summary of what they learned and recommendations, if I thought this training was worth it. Ha huh, seems like they do it to me too at the end of the class. Kinda like a peer review thing. There is a free cafeteria, but students or staff can choose to bring their own food or go to the nearby restaurants as long as I know. 
I am responsible for any injuries that happens on school grounds. Sounds easy enough. Ha huh, this is cool. There will be speciality rooms for individual students if requiring more aggressive magics, and even a few gym rooms as well. Naruto thought to himself seeing no problem with any of the rules. Naruto decided to ask hey how many students am I teaching anyway? Hisui gave him a mysterious smile before answering, this is considered a prodigious school, despite it being a first time school, so the class sizes won't be very big. This is due to the strict selection process, and the higher than normal admission costs. Dot. Naruto thought to himself while she did answer my question. Dot. Before he could ask yes Wendy Marvel has been placed into your class as part of our arrangement, and I did not mention you paid for her class. Hisui told him is Naruto sighed in relief. He wanted his students to have an unbiased opinion of him, and not feel indebted to him before the class started. Naruto feeling bad for the amount of work Hisui still seemed to have to do offered to help out. She was grateful and showed him where his office was and where his classroom was. She showed him the cafeteria. He started after the tour helping her set up banners to welcome the new students in various odd jobs around the school. Hisui in the meanwhile dutifully went through tons of paperwork without a sound. Consider how much Tsunade Bachan complains about paperwork I am pretty shocked Hisui Chan is doing it with such grace. I am glad in some ways I never became hookage as that seems like torture. Naruto thought as he watched Hisui slowly but surely go through her giant piles. By supper time Naruto offered to cook for her, but she politely declined saying she was going to get some early rest, as she had to be all prepared for the first day of the term. She expected him not to be late with a glare which she just laughed, promising her he would be on his best behavior. The next morning Naruto woke up and went in a casual suit, as there nothing in the guidelines about a dress code so figured it would not matter. Okay besides Wendy I wonder who I will get to teach. Naruto thought to himself entering the school. No matter how much she pestered his city she refused to tell him who his students were, but she did give him an amused look. The first thing Naruto noticed when he entered the classroom was how empty it was. Sure, there were enough desks for at least 20 students and still not be cramped, but he noticed it was nowhere near full capacity. He was sure Hesui Chan must have planned this out as some form of revenge of him or something as this was not what he expected. Meanwhile with Hisui, Tihi, I am sure Naruto Khan has met his students by now. Hisui said with a happy smile as she was doing paperwork. Truthfully, she picked students she thought would not be comfortable with other teachers who were at least several years older than Naruto. Wendy was a last minute choice by Naruto himself, but she was sure that Naruto would find it at least amusing the choices she picked. Back with Naruto, Naruto quickly did a head count, and noticed that the entire class was only three girls. And by girls they were literally girls who appeared to all about 12 years more or less. Naruto had a burst of nostalgia when he first was part of Team 7 with Kakashi, but it was quite different as these girls would to be on a team together, and would only have a few weeks of classes with him. Okay glad to see everyone here. My name is Naruto Yuzumaki, and I shall be your teacher for this class. Naruto introduced himself as he heard various greetings sent his way. Hi. The red-haired girl said brightly as she almost appeared to bounce in her chair. Hello, Naruto-sama. The white-haired girl said quietly and respectfully. Hello, Naruto-san. The blue-haired girl said meekly almost with a mix of fear and amazement. Naruto decided to do what his former teacher did to get to know them better. Okay since I don't know your names yet, and I don't think just memorizing them from looking at your applications is a good way to do it. We shall do a little meet and greet as part of our first lesson. Naruto told them kindly as they looked at him expectedly. Ah. Naruto-san we don't know very much about you either, so maybe you could start first. The red-haired girl asked expectedly. This made Naruto almost smile remembering Sakura asking the same thing on their first team meeting. Naruto was half tempted to do what Kakashi did on their first meeting, and tell them nothing about himself, but he knew it wasn't a good thing. He knew Kakashi held a lot of pain back then, and did not want to get attached, but it was different here. He knew it would only be a short class, but he still wanted to bond with his students, so he took it seriously. Okay so how about name, which guild you are part of, likes dislikes, hobbies and your dreams. Naruto told them as they nodded. Okay so like I said I am Naruto Uzumaki, I recently became part of Fairy Tale. Naruto started until he saw a hand go up. Yes. Naruto asked warmly with a smile as everyone turned to the white haired girl. Uh, Naruto sama how long have you been in Fairy Tale? The white haired girl asked quietly trying to avoid anyone's eyes. Excellent question. Naruto praised as the girl blushed. I have been a fairy tale for several months now, but before I was a freelance mage. Naruto explained before he coughed to get them back on track. Anyways my likes are my friends, helping people, going on jobs, Raymond, and I guess just talking. My hobbies include being a mage, cooking, working out and listening to music. My dislikes are people who make fun of others, bullies, people who abuse their powers and dark mages. My dream I guess would be help fairy tale keep his good name and keep the peace. Naruto finished after some thought. His original dream was to become Hokage, but that was out now. He had little ambition to be Guildmaster, but did want to follow Mavis' example. 
Naruto saw them gave him awestruck smiles, so he waved over to the red-haired girl to start. Okay. My name is Sherry Blendy, and I am part of Lamia Scale. I like being part of my guild, I dislike people who look down at women, and my hobbies include learning magic and love. My dream is to make Lamia Scale number one guild. Sherry said excitedly as she smirked at Naruto who rolled his eyes playfully. Naruto was a bit confused on the whole love part, but overall, he could tell he liked this young confidant girl. He took a moment to look her over. She appeared to be about 12 judging her short and petite figure. She had dark short red hair and pigtails held by yellow bows and bright blue eyes. She wore what he could tell was an actual schoolgirl outfit, despite there being no dress code. She wore a shirt white sailor shirt with pink outlines, and a yellow bow that was short enough to show off part of her stomach. She also wore a blue mini skirt, along with black knee socks and black shoes. If Naruto was being honest with himself if she was older or at least closer to Lucy's age at least he might found her sexy, but her young age made her seem cute in his eyes. Very good Shuri chan Nice as you. Naruto said deciding to add the Chan due to her younger age. Shuri beamed at him as the white-haired girl nervously smiled. Hello, Naruto-sama. My name is Akino Agria, and I am part of the Sabertooth Guild. I am not very powerful either. Yukino said sadly as Naruto frowned at her low self-esteem. Um. Dot my likes I guess is trying to learn magic. I dislike him I don't think anything except Zeref and my dream is to find a way to kill Zeref. Yukino said darkly, as the other girls shuddered at her dark answer while Naruto frowned at her need for revenge. Naruto decided the girl was too sad right now, so he decided not to ask her hobby. Naruto took a quick look at Yukino who appeared to be a little younger than Sharia, placing her about 11 years old. Naruto for a moment thought he saw a younger clone of Lisana, but quickly dispelled that illusion from his mind. Yukino had short light blue hair that she kept framed around her face. She had bright hazel colored eyes that had lost their rage, and returning to looking politely at him. She wore dark blue jeans and a light blue tank top and sandals. Naruto had a feeling based on his own guild mates when she hit puberty, she would be very mature. Okay Yukino-chan nice to meet you. Naruto told her as she nodded politely. He decided that adding Chan was pretty much a need for younger kids as he was their senior and teacher. The last person who he knew was Wendy based on her file, looked like she wanted the floor to swallow her when he focused on her. She looked the shyest person he had met of anyone. Hi Wendy said nervously with her face covering her face in embarrassment. My name is Wendy Marvel and I come from the Cage Shelter Guild. We are not very big or very powerful, but it's my home. Wendy admitted softly. Am I like Carla my friend, but she is going to be mad as I left without telling her Wendy adding looking close to tears, as he gestured the other girls to give her space, and not look at her directly. This seemed to help as Wendy huffed before continuing her introduction dislikes. Hm I guess if I had to dislike something it sometimes Carla gets a bit too overprotective. Wendy admitted, but she got red when she saw Naruto give her an amused smile. Don't tell Carla I said that. Wendy pleaded as Naruto laughed and waved her on. Hobbies. I guess I like watching the sky at night and listening to the wind. Wendy said thoughtfully as Sherry smiled. My dream is to help as many people as I can. Wendy said confidently as Naruto nodded his head. A and 2. Naruto had one thought when he looked at Wendy closely cute. Naruto could handle Sherry cute but confident look, Yukino polite look, but everything about Wendy screamed cute to him. Wendy had long dark hair which she let flow to her back, bright brown eyes that screamed innocence and sharp canines, suggesting she focused on type of magic exclusively. She wore a green dress that went down to her lower thighs and was strapless, exposing her shoulders and gold mark on her right shoulder. Naruto could hear laughter from the tailed beasts, much to his embarrassment as A had to the urge to comfort the younger girl and give her a hug and pat her head, since it would inappropriate for him to do. Albright Wendy Chan nice to meet you. Naruto said with a smile as Wendy mumbled a hi as she looked away nervously. Okay so this course will be a bit informal as I don't know exactly what you want from this course, but I will do my best so everyone here gets something from this course. I won't grade you or anything, but I expect you to try and get the most of our time here. Naruto told them sternly as they all looked alert and ready. Since you are all from different guilds and will leave apart after this class is done, I will do one on one with all three of you, and spend my time equally, so nobody thinks I play favors or anything. Naruto told them as he remembered how he fought as a child, Kakashi was playing favorites with Sasuke during the Chunin exams. He realized looking back Kakashi was simply most qualified, and most capable of teaching Sasuke, while Jiraiya was the best person to teach him. Kakashi and him simply had two different of styles to be particularly great student and teacher, although he did take the teamwork lessons to heart. He was sure he could find something with each of his new students to help develop and grow. A sensei. How are going to teach all three of us equally with one of you? Sherry added deciding sensei was appropriate for this situation. Naruto smirked before he made two Sila shadow clones appear shocking the girls. These are unique thought projections who can do anything I can including using magic. I will teach one of myself while the projections tutor the others. Do not think the projections are a lesser version of me. They can do any task I can so they are essentially me teaching you at the same time. 
Naruto assured the girls who nodded their heads dumbly. Naruto's clone dispelled as Naruto went to the whiteboard and said, Since it's our first day we will take it easy and just go over some magic theory and history. Then lunch, then more history, and finally I will set you aside individually and ask what you want out of my lessons. Naruto looked back and asked, Does that sound good to everyone? The girls nodded eagerly liking their new teacher already who seemed cool and kind. Okay let's begin. Naruto told them as he dispelled his clones and started the known history of magic. He used illusion magic to illustrate his point. He learned it from Mavis, but for him it is was a far cry from Mavis, and it was mostly a party trick if anything else. He knew sufficiently powerful wizards like the four gods of Ishkar and above could easily see through his illusion magic, and he knew Mavis might work on them. He won't use them for combat as it was a gamble to bet on his illusions holding up, but for teaching he found it worked wonders. A and 3. He talked about how nobody truly knew when magic started or how, but it was most famously recorded to be used 400 years ago during the era where dragons roamed the world. He used illusion magic to show imagines of tearing dragons, but then used the magic to turn them into much cuter ones to the girls' amusement. If they cooing and giggling were any indication. He talked about how wizard guilds were only a recent thing in the last 100 or so years, alluding to fairy tale beginnings without naming Mavis. He saw them girls eagerly writing the information down in notebooks, making him chuckle. Relax. I won't test you on any of this knowledge, but I think it would be good for you to have some context. Naruto explained as the girls let off sighs of relief. Now they could focus on listening instead of trying to cram it down. Any questions so far? Naruto asked as Yukino bravely raised her hand making him nod towards her. Naruto-sama what magic do you use? Yukino asked eagerly. Naruto could see out the corner of his eyes Sherry and Wendy on the edge of their seats, trying to be discreet. This question made him chuckle. Like any wizard potentially I use several of them. As you could see before I used illusion magic to show realistic pictures. Naruto explained and made two knights fight each other. This got excited claps from the girls who watched happily as the realistic battle soon ended. As you all know magic there are two main categories of magic. Caster and holding type magics. Caster type magic is magic that is expelled by the mage's body, while holding type requires magical items or some form of external form to perform. Naruto lectured as the girls nodded being fairly common knowledge. Illusion magic is a caster type same as my equip magic. Naruto explained as he used Requip to bring out his sword and put it back as he saw Sharia eyes sparkle at his use of magic. Now I can't and won't tell you which types of magic to study as it depends person to person on what kind of magic fits them. Naruto said wisely before he looked at the clock and saw it was near noon. Okay it's lunch now so we shall resume at one. Naruto told his students. Hi. They chanted to him as they got ready to go to the cafeteria. However, Naruto raised a hand to stop them. Seeing their curious looks he chuckled relax it's not a test or anything, but since this is our first day today, I made some lunch for all of us to share. Naruto told them as he pulled them out a scroll. Truthfully, he thought he had at least 20 students, so he made bentos for 20, but since his scrolls kept food in perfect condition, it mattered little that he made extra. Yukino eyes teared up as the girl did not believe in coddling anyone, so they never shared food, while Wendy looked wide-eyed at the kind gesture. Sharia just sheared happy for the free food. Thank you, sensei. Shurya said happily accepting a bento box as he pointed to a large table in the corner. She got the hint and happily skipped over there and waited for her classmates. Yukino wiped her tears when she saw Naruto give her a look of concern. Thank you very much Naruto-sama. Yukino told him sincerely as she bowed and accepted a lunch box to sit next to Shurya. Finally, Naruto looked at Wendy before frowning when he saw the young girl refuse to leave her desk just fidgeting and looking away from everyone, even when Shurya called her over. Naruto could already see quirks form from the girl. Sharia was simply a happy-go-lucky girl, Yukino was polite to everyone she saw, and Wendy was too nervous to be comfortable around people. Naruto sighed before he tossed a bento with perfect accuracy to a spot away from Sharia, so there was a gap between Sharia and his bento. He picked up a bento with one hand and walked up to Wendy with a smile. Wendy-chan, I think you are hungry. Naruto observed as Wendy shook her head furiously with a blush. It's okay Naruto-sensei. I am fine. Wendy insisted until a massive growl came from her stomach. This made her blush even more before Naruto softly pat her on the head. She looked up with white innocent eyes as he smiled down at her. Your stomach says otherwise. Naruto teased her gently as Wendy mumbled with her face down. Naruto gently took her hand into his as she blushed harder before he led her to the table, sighting her down to a happy sharia, while he sat where his bento landed. It's okay if you are nervous Wendy-chan. Meeting new people can be scary. Naruto told her soothingly as she looked up nervously. Wendy-chan, Yukino-chan and Sharia-chan you might not believe it, but I am not just your teacher, but also your friend so feels free to tell me if something is bothering you. Naruto told them as they looked at him in surprise. Friend. I don't really have any Wendy admitted as she looked down sadly. Naruto heartache for her as Sharia and Yukino looked at her in surprise. Naruto remembered how hard it was to make friends as a child due to growing up a Jinchuriki, and he vowed he was going to do everything he could to help Wendy not feel the way he did. 
Well now you have three Wendy Chan, Naruto said with a smile as he looked at Yukino and Sharia who nodded their head. Wendy lifted her head up in shock as she cried a bit. Naruto gently rubbed her head before she sniffed are you sure you want a friend like me? To his joy Sharia was the one who answered the question. Come on. That is no way to ask a question. Of course, we are friends. Sherry insisted as Wendy gave a smile and wiped away her tears. After this sweet moment they finally started eating, and to his confusion, the girls cried about how good his cooking was, while he rubbed his head in embarrassment. He always thought his cooking was okay, but it seemed like people who ate it thought otherwise. They spent the rest of the lunch hours slowly getting to know each other better, with the quieter girls Yukino and Wendy even started to come out of their shells and talk more. After lunch he showed them his Sky Devil Slayer magic, by using small amounts of it to make small objects in the room hover. Technically this magic is only a combat magic, but I have learned to use small amounts of it with great control to do more household tasks. Naruto explained with a chuckle. He found it always funny people thought this magic used to slay demons was cute or beautiful, when the book explicitly said it was meant for battle. Sherry's eyes sparkled and she shouted that is so cool sensei. Her eyes followed the book as it flew around the room. Naruto chuckled at her enthusiasm. Yes Naruto Summit is very impressive. Yukino said politely with less enthusiasm than Shurya, but still keen interest. Wendy gasped and clapped when he made a breeze of airbrush past her hair, leaving it a mess to the amusement of everyone, as she fixed it quickly. Naruto decided for the last hour of the class he would individually ask each girl what they wanted from him personally. He decided since they were from different guilds, he would train them separately, so he put up rune magic barriers around each girl and a clone, so they could talk in private. The rune barriers prevented sound and even sight from being leaked for each space they contained. Meanwhile the original Naruto was with Wendy asking what she wanted. So, Wendy Chan what is it you want to learn? Naruto asked as Wendy began fidgeting. Naruto thought Wendy was about the cutest thing he ever seen, but he knew she was just being nervous, and happened to look adorable. I want to learn how to fight like a true dragon slayer like you. Wendy declared with confidence as Naruto looked white-eyed at her. Eh? Naruto stuttered especially when Wendy seemingly losing her nervous energy, Lean Dent sniffed him several times. You smell like a dragon like me so I knew you were a dragon slayer when you grabbed my hand. Wendy explained as Naruto's smile grew on his face. Incredible. Natsu who is older and likely used dragon slayer magic longer than Wendy Chan never, noticed I had dragon slayer magic, till I absorbed the Jupiter cannon. Natsu has been on my teams for months now and he never noticed, and yet Wendy Chan noticed it within a day. Naruto thought extremely impressed with this young dragon slayer. Very impressive Wendy Chan. Naruto praised as Wendy blushed but smiled. Here is my dragon slayer magic lightning dragon slayer magic. Naruto told her producing a blue spark to prove his point. She looked awestruck at his magic, but to his surprise she shook her head. No, it's not just that. Wendy said with deep concentration. Your smell does have a stormy scent to it, but it also has the smell of a warm breeze. Wendy stated as Naruto eyes white into plates when Wendy produced a small amount of blue air around her. Wendy Chan is that? Naruto asked in amazement and shock. My dragon slayer magic is sky dragon slayer. She told him quietly as he gaped before blue eyes formed around Naruto, except it was less calm looking than Wendy's magic. You're right Wendy Chan and you are the second person I have told this, but my second dragon slayer magic is wind dragon slayer magic. Naruto told her looking away. Wind? Wendy asked in confusion tilting her head. Mine is the original unrefined version of yours. Naruto admitted shamefully as Wendy looked white eyed at her fellow dragon slayer. So Sherry Chan what is it you want to learn from my course? Naruto's clone asked as they sat down. Sherry looked star eyed at him and answered happily sky god slayer magic. Sherry clapped her hands together as Naruto's smile lessened. Oh, I see. Naruto said hesitantly which Sherry noticed instantly. Sensei. Is something wrong? Sherry asked worried as Naruto tried to give her a reassuring smile. Truth be told sky god slayer magic is not one I have actually used before. Naruto admitted as Sherry face dropped. Oh, I see. Sherry said sadly making Naruto pat her head. She lifted her head up to stare at Naruto with blue eyes. God slayer magic like all slayer magic is caster type magic, so it's possible to teach it, even if you don't practice it. True this method is a bit rough, but I can be your guide. Naruto told her encouragingly. Sherry tilted her head in confusion as she asked, how can you teach me or help me with it, if you can't use it sensei? Naruto used a small swirl of sky devil slayer magic, making her eyes sparkle again. Sky Devil and Sky God magics are different in practice, but theory they do have similarities. Plus I might have a way to show you the theory as well. Naruto told her as she beamed at him. Just remember Sky Devil is purely offensive, so I cannot help you with the healing aspect with Sky God Slayer magic. That is something you will have to master on your own time. Naruto reminded her as she nodded her head. Of course, Sensei. I will do my best. Shuri told him excitedly as he smiled down at his students. With Yukino, Yukino-chan. Be honest. What do you wish to learn from my course by the end of it? Naruto's other shadow clone asked the white-haired girl. Naruto-sama if I could choose any magic, I would want to learn celestial spirit magic. 
Yukino admitted honestly as she put her hands in front of her face nervously. Naruto's face dropped as he pouted. Jizu picked the one course of magic I honestly cannot help you with at all. Naruto admitted as Yukino's eyes widened. You can't help me Naruto-sama. Yukino asked in shock as she heard several rumors about Naruto Uzumaki from Sorcerer Weekly. Celestial spirit magic is holding type magic, which means it is impossible to use without the actual items. It is not the same as holding type magic, which in theory anyone can have the magic taught to them or transferred. It is not as simply as reading a book and trying a bunch of time to get the magic to work. You need the keys to actually do the magic. Naruto explained glumly as he scratched his head in frustration. Though I see Naruto-sama. Yukino said sadly as Naruto bit his lip. Damn it if Lucy was here, she could at least give you some tips although I doubt she would let you use her keys or anything. She is pretty picky about her keys not being used by anyone else. Naruto mumbled as he regretted asking Lucy not to come. How ironic Lucy's only branch of magic is ironically the one one of my students wants to learn, and she isn't here. Naruto thought in annoyance. Yukino heard him mentioning Lucy, and she grew curious. Lucy. Are you talking about Lucy from Fairy Tail? Yukino asked with admiration. Yeah Lucy is one of my teammates from Fairy Tail. Why are you a fan of hers? Naruto asked with a grin as Yukino blushed. Not so much a fan more she has a reputation for having contracts with five golden keys, which is higher than Celestial Spirit Wizard has ever had. Yukino told him as Naruto smirked. Well I try to mention to Lucy that one of adorable students looks up to her. Naruto told her as Yukino looked away and started moving her hands nervously. Naruto was sure Lucy would love to hear she had a fan since although it was hardly vain she was pretty proud about her magic. Look I cannot teach you the magic since I am guessing you can only use it once you have a key. Naruto told her as her head dropped. But I have noticed Lucy does have a weakness that I will try to help fix with Yukino-chan. Naruto explained as Yukino tilted her head in confusion. Weakness? Yukino asked wondering what specific Lucy would have that she would sure to have. Yeah. The weakness of spirit magic is the user is pretty vulnerable while using it. Naruto explained as Yukino had a blank and confused look on her face. Think of this way. While your spirits are fighting usually the wizard is in the back, but if someone attacks you your spirits could be too late to protect you. Naruto observed as Yukino's eyes widened at the realization. Oh no. What can I do Naruto-sama? Yukino asked in worry as he gave her a reassuring pat. Don't worry about Yukino-chan. I will teach you some basic hand-to-hand -hand combat. Naruto told her as she looked surprised. I am not expecting you to fight my friend Natsu to a draw or anything, but by the end of our time together, I hope to at least get some basics down for you. Naruto suggested as Yukino's eyes shone with determination. An2. I will make you proud Naruto-sama. Yukino declared as Naruto smiled at her. Just then the bell rang and all three barriers disappeared. Naruto's shadow clones disappeared as Naruto blinked for a moment getting their memories. Okay girls today is over. Good job everyone. Naruto shouted as the three girls bowed to him. Okay tomorrow we might go over some more theory or I might start your individual training. I am not 100% sure. Naruto told them as he started walking to the door. Sensei. Shuria chirped as Naruto walked back and turned around. Yes? Naruto asked politely. We are staying at the dorms here in the school so if you want to stop by, I, I am in room 305. Sherry told him with a wink as Naruto stuttered at the younger girl's blatantly obvious invitation. Yukino had her mouth wide open, well Wendy looked like a tomato. AN3. Naruto took the opportunity to walk away before it could get any weird. He happened to walk into Hisui who sent him an amused look. Naruto-kun did you enjoy your first class today? Hisui said with a pleasant smile, but Naruto could tell she enjoyed his embarrassment. He didn't tell me my class was going to be only three preteen girls Hisui-chan. Naruto whined as Hisui gave him a chuckle. I suppose I did neglect to tell you those details, but I think I still picked the right sensei for the job. Hisui told him as Naruto huffed. Naruto was not mad per se he got his students, but if word got out, he was teaching preteens he knew certain members of his guild would never let him live it down. Yeah yeah. Naruto relented as Hisui's eyes softened. Those three girls have a lot of potential I can tell you that. Naruto praised as Hisui sent him a proud smile. And Wendy? Hisui inquired as Naruto sent her a huge grin. She is definitely going to shine. I am going to make sure everyone will know the name Wendy Marvel one day. Naruto claimed as Hisui sent him a disbelieving eyebrow. Plus, she is the key to my own magic problems. Naruto whispered which Hisui was not able to catch clearly. Ha. Huh? Did you say something Naruto-kun? Hisui asked as Naruto caught himself and shook his head. So, you don't plan to play favors huh? Hisui asked slyly referring to his euthanistic display of Wendy. Oh, Hashi. Naruto chided as Hisui giggled. I plan to divide my time equally with all three girls and try my best, so they each get something really good out of my class. It's just Wendy Chan happens to have a few more similarities to me than the other girls. Naruto commented as Hisui looked intrigued. I would love to chat Naruto-kun, but I must be going. Hisui told him apologetically as Naruto waved her apology off. No problem Hisui-chan. See you later. 
Naruto told him warmly as he waved her off before he went to his temporary house. He waited a few minutes before he looked out the window to make sure nobody was coming. Okay here goes. Hooray Shinjustu. Naruto whispered before he vanished into thin air. The next instant he arrived back on Tenru Island in the main library room where he appeared next to a marking he had on the floor. Same old Tenru Island. Naruto said fondly seeing it exactly the same as he left it. Right I have to find that book for sure chan Naruto reminded himself as he started to look around. He began to run through several books trying to find one he was sure was there until he heard footsteps and was on guard as he leapt closer to the door. I see you came home again, huh Naruto? A happy familiar voice said as Naruto relaxed his guard. Good to see you too Mavis-chan. Naruto said with a grin only to get knocked over by a blonde blur. Mavis had run full speed at Naruto, causing him to slip and fall on the ground. Ow. Was that needed Mavis-chan? Naruto asked only to feel her warm body press into his as he tried to stand up. He felt Mavis' arms wrap tightly around his neck and her face to press directly into his shoulder. Naruto instinctively wrapped his own arms around Mavis' slim figure, as he heard Mavis sigh in relief. Unbeknownst to him she actually took in his scent trying to memorize his smell which she was now in love with. Mavis had come to terms with the fact she was heads over heels and truly in love with the blonde goofball in front of her. Naruto just thought she missed him, so he let her hold on to him for a few minutes with nothing but silence. I miss you so much Naruto. Mavis murmured as Naruto gently rubbed her long hair which he always liked about her. I miss you too Mavis-chan. Naruto said honestly. She was his first link in this strange new world, and it was a link he would always treasure. Mavis reluctantly pulled away but held onto his hand with her own smiling, when he gave her a confused look. Mavis-chan Naruto said looking at her seriously making her secretly blush. Yes. Mavis asked pleased at the contact of his hand in her own. You seem different than the last time my clone and you spoke. Naruto noticed as Mavis felt her face get flustered. Is that so? Mavis answered nervously as Naruto studied her face carefully. Yeah. You seem a lot happier than before. Naruto remarked as Mavis could hardly keep a smile from bursting her face open. Ever since her true feelings for Naruto were realized to her she could not help feeling complete, and even as a ghost she had never been happier. Oh, you know. Seeing you is always fun. Mavis told her as he gave an unconvinced look. Is that so? Naruto said with a smile feeling Mavis may be hiding something from him, but choose not to pry. Naruto pulled his hand out of hers much to her disappointment as he gave her a grin rubbing his hair. So, Naruto why did you come back here all of a sudden? Mavis asked interested as she was sure he would not come back till the S-class trials. She knew it would happen for a few more months at least. Oh, silly me. You reminded me. Naruto said thumping his head as Mavis gave him an amused giggle. I am looking for a book on Sky God Slayer Magic. Naruto told her as Mavis gave him a confused sad look. Sky God Slayer Magic. I thought you didn't want to learn it ever since you know Mavis said as Naruto looked away. Mavis was well aware of his perceived failure of Wind Dragon Slayer Magic. Naruto stayed silent as Mavis gave him a look of sympathy. Look there is nothing to be ashamed about with creating Wind Dragon Slayer Magic. Most Dragon Slayers can only use the element taught to them directly or one from the Lacrima. There is no record or at least very few records of Dragon Slayers trying to reverse engineer other elements different than the one they already have. Mavis told him kindly as Naruto gripped his fist in frustration. I don't care what other wizards have done with Dragon Slayer magic. I wanted one that heals, but all I did was create a knockoff that hurts others. Naruto said bitterly as Mavis sighed knowing he was not going to relent on his failure. Alright. If you don't want to learn God Slayer magic and if you are going to mope about your failed Dragon Slayer magic. Mavis said ignoring Naruto I twitch about the moping part. Why do you want a book on Sky God Slayer magic? Mavis asked as Naruto smiled happily. One of my students wants to learn it, and I thought I could teach it her. Naruto announced as Mavis start blankly at him a moment before looking confused. Ha. Huh. Mavis said dully as Naruto blinked before seeing the problem. Oh right. You see I got a part-time teaching job with some students, and Shariot Chan wants to learn Sky God Slayer magic. Naruto explained missing the frown on Mavis' face. Shariot Chan. I thought you did like honorifics Naruto. Mavis said with jealously clear in her voice. She knew he used Chan on her name since they were close, and he would usually use it if someone actually asked for it. Though, she is like 12 so she is definitely a Chan. Naruto said dismissively as Mavis sent a sigh of relief. A partner doesn't get the ghost girl wants to bet him, right? Shikaku asked dully as the tailed beast sighed. Nope. When it comes to fighting, he may be second to none when he gets serious, but girls, he is definitely not the sharpest tool in the shed. Matatabi agreed as she waved her tails in annoyance. She wanted Naruto to have many girlfriends, and if he kept avoiding the hints it would take longer. Okay I will get your book for you, but in the meanwhile tell me about your students okay. Mavis asked cheerfully as Naruto gave her a weird look. Sure Mavis-chan. Naruto said as he thought weird. For a moment there I thought she was getting cold to me, but I guess that was just my imagination. Dot. As Mavis hummed while searching through her vast collection of magical books, Naruto decided to sit down. 
Okay, so my class is actually just 13 girls. Naruto admitted as Mavis gave off a giggle. That's like a Jonin sensei, huh, Naruto? Mavis teased as Naruto laughed as well. Pretty much except these girls are from different guilds, so after my lesson, it won't be a team just three wizards on their way. Naruto acknowledged as Mavis gave off a hum asking him to continue. Anyways there is Sherry Chan who wants to learn Sky God Slayer magic, and I promised her I could at least teach her the basics. She is a rather cheerful girl who I am sure will be popular when she grows up. Naruto told her deciding her little invitation to her room was a joke. Sounds like a nice girl. Mavis said absentmently as Naruto sent her a look. I am looking okay. Just continue with your other students. Mavis snapped as Naruto mumbled an apology. Well there is Yukino Chan who is super polite and wants to learn celestial spirit magic. She seems like the girl who treats everyone with respect, but I think lacks self-confidence. Naruto said thoughtfully as Mavis kept looking. Hmm. That might be difficult as you are not a celestial spirit mage, and it is holder type magic, so you need the keys to actually the magic. Mavis mentioned as Naruto sighed. I know but I plan to help her with hand-to-hand -hand combat to offset a celestial spirit wizard weakness in battle. Naruto told her. Mavis turned back to him impressed. I see that is rather creative Naruto. Mavis praised as Naruto grinned. Plus, to sweeten the deal I planned to Naruto said before he leaned and whispered into Mavis ear the rest of the plan. Mavis eyes widened before she said that is rather generous of you Naruto. She had a strange look on her face. It might be, but I do plan to let Sherry Chan borrow that God Slayer book after all. Naruto remarked as Mavis eyes widened before she found the book. Here it is Naruto. Mavis said excitedly as she pulled a seemingly random book that said Sky God Slayer magic. The lost magic. Naruto took a peek at the title before he grinned pulling Mavis into a tight hug. She eat but instantly sank into his warmth. Thanks Mavis Chan. You are the best. I knew I could always count on you. Naruto praised beaming at the blonde. Sure. No problem. Actually, I will make a copy and let you give it to the girl. It will have a magic seal on it, so the letters will only appear for you, me and the girl. Mavis told him with a blush as Naruto nodded to the first master wisdom. Good idea Mavis Chan. Lost magic is dangerous after all. Naruto agreed as he pulled away so Mavis could use her magic. She quickly summoned a copy made of magic which copied the text of the book she was holding onto. Seals quickly appeared and grew bright when she placed her hand on it. She gestured to Naruto who understood as he put a small amount of his magic into the book, which made it emit a light. There now it recognizes us as readers. Once the girl is ready have her put her magic into the book, and it will only accept us three as readers. Mavis told him as he nodded in excitement. So, who is the last lucky student of yours Naruto? Mavis asked hoping he would not treat this girl any less than any of his other students. To her surprise a genuine proud smile appeared on his face. It is Wendy Marvel. She is honestly extraordinary and she is my personally pick. Naruto said with happiness as she gave him a confused look. Personal pick. Mavis asked as Naruto smiled at her. She didn't make the cut and she was about to cut, but I vouched her based on a good feeling, so she was added to my class. Naruto summarized as Mavis smiled at him. That was very kind of you Naruto. Mavis praised as Naruto waved her off. I did wonder about her, but Winnie Chan is pretty nervous and lacks self-confident more than anyone I have met. Naruto noted as Mavis frowned. But she has unbelievable magic potential, and she is a Sky Dragon Slayer Mavis Chan. Naruto told her looking at her directly in the eye. A Sky Dragon Slayer. Mavis gasped as Naruto nodded slowly. Naruto you know what that means Mavis asked excitedly while Naruto smiled softly. She could help you get the magic you always wanted. Mavis told him in happiness as she knew better than any more how much loathing he had when his attempt at healing dragon slayer magic failed over and over again. She thought it was almost karma giving Naruto the break he deserved. I wouldn't make her do anything. Naruto said firmly as Mavis frowned at him. Naruto you do realize she might be the only sky dragon slayer in the whole white world, right? Mavis asked him furiously. I did think of that. Naruto admitted. Then why would you take advantage of the situation? Mavis demanded wanting to know why the person she loved would not demand to learn the magic he seek more than anything. I would not deserve the magic if I made her do anything. Naruto said simply as Mavis gave him a disbelieving look. Besides I feel with Winnie Chan we can teach other, since our magic is more similar than anyone else's. Naruto reassured her as Mavis still looked a bit skeptical. I have a feeling when this class ends it won't be the last time we'll see any of my students. Winnie Chan in particular I just have a feeling she will do great things, and I will stand alongside her. Naruto mentioned as Mavis shrugged. Whatever you say Naruto. Mavis said before she asked can you stay here with me till tomorrow. Mavis looked nervous as she knew he would unlikely just return here for no reason until the S-Class trials. Naruto gave her a warm smile. Of course, Mavis Chan let me just get changed okay. Naruto asked as she nodded before he went to get one of spare clothes he kept on the island. He left several sets of his clothing and toiletry supplies here, as he still considered this his first home in Earthland. He changed out of his suit to a more costly hoodie and pants, while Mavis' ghost form was still in her white dress she wore like always. 
Naruto soon went to his old room with a single bed and crawled in, and he was not surprised when Mavis slid in next to him. He always considered it innocent enough, and figured she was desperate for human attention which she only could perceive when she made physical contact with him. She had slept next to him countless times when they lived together, and he did not consider it any different from before. Unbeknownst to Naruto Mavis did consider it quite different. It was the first time she slept next to Naruto after she realized her true feelings, she would savor every moment of it. Good night Naruto. Mavis told him as she snuggled up next to him. Good night Mavis-chan. Naruto replied warmly as he wrapped his arms around her as if practiced many times. Mavis closed her eyes enjoying Naruto warmth and scent. He didn't realize she took Naruto's hugs for granted, but now she longed for them forever. Naruto thought to himself Mavis' hair still smells like sweet vanilla like before, but it smells nicer than before. Little did he know Mavis' feelings metaphorically transferred to his perception of her. She almost subconsciously was trying to convey he loved through the hair he liked about her. After spending a warm and satisfying night sleeping next to Mavis Naruto gave her ghost final smile and hug, before he set off again. With the God Slayer book in hand, Naruto used the Horation to appear back in his temporary home. Okay now that I have Shari chan book and a basic idea what how to gauge what kind of style Yukino-chan should learn. The only problem is when Yu-chan I know I told Mavis-chan I would not force him to teach me how to use Sky Dragon magic, but she really is the only one who could help me. Naruto murmured as he once again prepared lunches for his class. Naruto had decided for simplistic stake he would send clones for Yukino and Sharia, while he taught Wendy directly. Any Sky God Slayer magic Sharia could actually produce, would easily be cancelled out by his clone Sky Devil Slayer magic. As for Yukino he was not arrogant, but he could not see a clone getting dispelled by a newbie using basic hand-to-hand -hand combat. While Wendy may not be powerful physically his Wind Dragon Slayer magic was very hard to actually keep tame, hence one of the reasons he refused to use it in combat. Ha. Tame. My ass. Kurama crackled from inside the seal. Why did the old man even create you with butts? It's not like you guys even crap Naruto retorted in annoyance as the tailed beast sent him indignant looks. Okay ignoring that blatant insult, Matatabi said with restrained annoyance. Naruto can't remember when you tried to force Wind Dragon to become Sky Dragon. Matatabi asked with motherly concern as Naruto looked away. It was just a few cuts nothing more. Naruto claimed stubbornly as the tailed beast scoffed. Cuts, you right. That training you do with the rapping brat did less damage than that wind dragon recoil. Kurama reminded him as Naruto winced. It's true Naruto. If B tried to do what you did, he would be dead several time over. Jayuki remarked as only Kurama and his Jinchuriki actually had true regeneration. Other Jinchuriki could heal by forcibly advancing in transformation, but not as a passive skill like Kurama. Naruto had learned early on that no matter what you did to Sky Devil Slayer magic, it simply would not heal, and it was not possible to make it do so. So, he just used it for combat, but Naruto was not satisfied with the wind dragon magic he learned. His dragon teacher told him of Grandini, and how her unique sky dragon was the only dragon slayer magic in existence to have healing properties. Since Grandini was not around he tried to force his self-discovered wind dragon magic to heal instead. Long story short the magic itself became unstable and blew up multiple times. The magic caused massive cuts on his body, and destroyed vast amounts of forest, every time he tried to change the properties of the destructive magic to healing magic. In reality it was comparably to a wind release. Race and shuriken exploding due to unstable chakra. AN2. That lighting lizard called you something, what was it? A via brat of 100 scars. Shukaku added helpfully as Naruto grunted. Truthfully if he was not in Yuzumaki and Kurama Jinchuriki he likely would have died multiple times in his foolhardy attempts or at least permanently scarred for life. Naruto frowned and looked down at his hands in thought. He had truly believed he could reverse engineer sky dragon magic, but ended up with the violet wind dragon instead. He had tried to use his various transformation and even six path sage mode, which he avoided using in Earthland, for better control, but it still ended up in failure. In his transformations the damage to himself became less and less, but he still somehow lacked the actual skills to create sky dragon magic. Whatever. Like I told him I will find a way to heal in this world no matter what. Naruto said with determination as he started with walk to his classroom with Shuri's book in hand. Outside the classroom he heard the girls excited whispering, so he decided to let them finish with him waiting outside. Come on Wendy tell me what Naruto-sensei is teaching you. Sherry cheerful voice chirped. I thought we were supposed to have keep our studies secret Yukino quite inquired. Come on. We are friends, he right. Plus, we are sharing the same sensei so we are essentially sisters. Sherry insisted as Naruto sweat dropped at his red-haired student's excitement. Sisters Wendy squeaked with a red face Naruto could already imagine. Sure, why not? It's not like blood is the only thing that makes families, right? Sherry said confidently as Naruto felt a grin stretch on his face. If that girl wasn't part of Lumia's scale, I think she would be great in fairy tale. Naruto mused with pride. Come on it's easy. Okay here. I told Naruto-sensei I want to learn Sky God Slayer magic, and he promised me to learn the basics. 
Shuri chirped as he heard gasps of excitement from Yukino and Wendy. That's amazing Shuri-sama. Okay since you told us what you want to learn I suppose it's only fair I tell you what I want to learn. Naruto-sama is going to teach me some basic hand-to-hand -hand combat so I can defend myself. He can't teach my celestial spirit magic since it's holder type magic, but he can show me how to defend myself while using it. Yukino admitted with admiration. As Scott claps from the other girls. That is very smart of Naruto-sensei. Shuria said with approval. Now Wendy you have no reason to hold out on us. Tell us. Shuri insisted as he heard Wendy stutter. Well I guess it can't be helped. Naruto-sensei wants to help me develop my sky dragon magic. Wendy said nervously as he heard Shuria squeal while Yukino clap in amazement. Sky dragon slayer magic. Shuri questioned. Yeah it's dragon slayer magic that can heal and fight, but so far I can only heal and support people. Wendy clarified. That's so cool Wendy. Why do you think Naruto-sensei can help you with dragon slayer magic though? Shuria asked curiously. Before Wendy could answer Naruto decided it was the perfect time to interject. Okay my dear students I think that is enough with the gossip. Naruto said with a clap as he entered the room. To their credit the girls did appear to be a bit guilty gossiping with Naruto outside the room. Morning sensei. Shuria sang with a wave. Morning Naruto-sama. Yukino said with politeness and a bow. Naruto sensei I hope you weren't waiting too long. Wendy added with nervous head tilt. Morning Wendy chan, Yukino chan and Shuria chan. Naruto greeted back. I was hoping to keep your lessons private. Naruto mused as Sherry ruffled her hair in embarrassment. But it is up to you what you want to do with those lessons, so I suppose no harm no foul. Naruto commented as Sherry gave a slight sigh of relief. So, here is how I will structure the remaining classes now. We will still go over theory or at least do something as a class together, have lunch together and then my clones, and I will do individual training with all three of you at the same time. Sound good. Naruto told them as they looked excited. Hi. All three of the course back to him. So, Naruto started his lecture detailing several of the risks of going on S-class jobs and the rewards. Just to let you know. Being S-class is not all fun and games. You might have a famous reputation, but you also have more responsibilities. You are essentially your guild's most famous members, so people both look up to you and judge you more harshly than your fellow guild members. Naruto revealed as the girls looked awestruck that S-class wizard was taking the time to actually not only lecture them, but also teach them what they wanted to learn. After another interesting lecture Naruto once again showed his pre-made lunches, and judging by the hungry expressions on the teens' faces, they were more than happy to accept. Naruto-sensei can I ask you something? Sherry after eating another bite of her delicious lunch. Go ahead Sherry-chan. Naruto agreed as the girls turned to Sherry who had an innocent expression on her face. Sensei you cook all these meals yourself, right? Sherry asked with her eyes sparking. Your cooking is fine for me. Naruto told her with a nod. So? If I married you later you would cook for me every day right? Sherry asked with a wink as both Yukino and Wendy spit out their food with surprise and massive blushes. Meanwhile Naruto nearly choked on his food as he tried to process his young albeit cute student seeming advances. What is with this girl? She is more forward than Mira-chan, and Mira-chan is a world-class model. Sherry-chan is like 12, and she is already this forward. Naruto thought to himself as he looked at Sherry as if she grew a second head. Before Naruto could even muster a response Sherry smiled and winked again. Just kidding sensei. Sherry chirped as Naruto let a sigh of relief. Not at least for a few years. I am still a kid after all. Sherry whispered. After that more than awkward lunch Naruto decided to split the class up to his two clones, training Yukino and Sherry, while he personally trained Wendy. With Naruto clone and Yukino, Naruto shadow clone took Yukino to a gym room with a series of training dummies. Okay Yukino-chan every person is different so their fighting style is different, but I think you will be better with a kicking style defense. Naruto told her as she nodded. Whatever you say Naruto-sama. Yukino replied eager to learn. Okay here are some basic kicking exercises so you can strengthen your legs and learn how to use kicks effectively. Naruto said as he showed her how to do high kicks and low kicks and even sweeping his foot to catch people off guard. As Yukino clapped in excitement Naruto decided to add his two cents in. Also Yukino-chan here is a little thing to remember when using kicking style to defend yourself. Naruto told her seriously as Yukino gulped. Yes Naruto-sama. Yukino asked a little worried by Naruto's tone of voice. Never and I mean never wear a dress or skirt if you plan to use kicks to defend yourself. Naruto told her as she looked confused. Why Naruto-sama? They are rather comfortable, and they give a wide range of leg range. Yukino asked utterly confused. Because if you wear them and kick. Naruto said dramatically as Yukino leaned in. You could give your opponent a crowd a peek at your panties. Naruto said bluntly as Yukino blinked for a few moments and opened her mouth several times. Yukino face turned continuously more darker shades of red as her embarrassment and anger grew. You are a pervert Naruto-sama. Yukino screamed in righteous female anger. She could not believe her teacher would know something like that without looking up a girl's skirt. She put her hands on her jeans as if somehow Naruto was going to peek as she did put her hands out to protect her panties. 
Naruto put his hands up and waved them. Hey, it just makes common sense. It is not my fault that if you kick high enough it gives a guy a perfect view to your underwear. Naruto explained with some annoyance. A small part of his inner pervert believed that despite Sakura not being in the same league as most of the girls he met in Earthland essentially flashed guys when she thought with such small booty shorts. Well, Yukino stuttered unable to come up with a response to Naruto's well thought out reply. You can't tell a girl what to wear. It's rude. Yukino decided a response was more than justified. Naruto's side told a different story. Look if you want to wear a dress or skirt and still battle, I can't stop you. Naruto amended as Yukino huffed putting her hands on her hips crossly. Just wear some shorts underneath, so at the very least you and not giving the guy a free peek at what color underwear you wear okay. Naruto requested with a face palm. Naruto was sure if his pervert godfather was here, he would tell her the opposite advance, and even suggest she use it as a tactic. After showing it to him first of course, that makes Naruto-sama. Yukino said returning to her polite reverence of him. Okay here is a small demonstration of what kicking can do in combat. Naruto said to her as he gestured her to stand back. Commence practice battle level expert. Naruto shouted. Several beeps can be heard as all of a sudden the practice dummies gained a magical aura, and weapons like swords and clubs in their hands. They started to rush at Naruto who put his hands in his pockets and looked bored. Yukino gasped as they rushed at her seemingly defenseless teacher. As the first dummy rushed him, it slashed a sword at Naruto it deflected it with one leg with no effort. He leapt with the other leg and spun sending a powerful kick that shattered the dummy instantly. As two more appeared to Naruto's side he leapt up easily and landed on the head of the dummy. He kicked it head off and kicked the head with enough force to send it flying through the stomach of another animated dummy. This continued for several minutes as Yukino looked in awe of her teacher, defeating a small army of dummies, without using his hands or magic even once. He used a series of jumps and kicks to decimate all the dummy without even a single one getting close to hurting him. In the end all that was left was a pile of destroyed dummies with Naruto standing next to the pile with a smile. He was glad to see his student all interested and fired up. Okay so I think just repeating several variations of kicks and finding out what is best for your build and strength will best. We will repeat and repeat over and over again until it becomes second nature to you. Naruto declared as Yukino got out of her ostrich state to nod. Yes, Naruto-sama. Yukino said before she noticed the mess. Should we clean them up though? Yukino added as Naruto chuckled. No need to worry Yukino-chan they are just magic constructs inside this room. Watch. Naruto told her in amusement as he snapped his fingers, causing the room to reset itself, and new stationary dummies took their place. Naruto's clone took a seat on the bleachers as he watched his white-haired student began a slow but consistent routine of kicks and jumps. He noticed it appeared it was the first time Yukino was actually doing this method of training, but he was pleasantly surprised at how flexible she was. He mused it was likely because she was a grown girl and could bend more easily than he expected her to. As he expected Yukino favored jumps and high kicks with single movements, instead of weaker multiple kicks. Naruto seriously hoped Yukino would take his advice to avoid dresses when she got older or at least wear shorts underneath. It made him rather jealous and protective of this girl who would likely grow up to be very beautiful show off her legs and panties when she thought. He refused the idea he wanted only himself to see herself exposed like that reasoning it was just his sensei duty to look out for his students, especially if they were girls. Yukino had no idea of her sensei's thoughts, but his suggestion about not exposing herself when she kicked did stick on her head along an embarrassing thought on what her sensei would say as she flashed him when she got older. It was both embarrassing and did make her a bit curious if her sensei would see her as more than his student now. While one of Naruto's clones was slowly integrating Yukino into a fighting style to offset Celestial Wizard's general weakness, another of his clone was with Sherry. So sensei, any ideas on how you are going to teach me Sky God Slayer magic when you don't use it yourself? Sherry asked with a smile as Naruto and her were in an empty classroom. What is Sherry-chan? Naruto said dramatically as he pulled the copy of Sky God Slayer Magic out of his jacket. When Sherry finally saw what the book was she gasped making Naruto grin. Is it a real book on Sky God Slayer Magic? That must be priceless. Sherry asked with white eyes. Lost magic was generally so rare that usually only a handful of people in each century had even one lost magic. Naruto shrugged before admitting it's only a copy, but yeah the original is one of the few books on Sky God Slayer magic, so I suppose it is priceless. Naruto always admired how Mavis' collection of magic was truly splendid, besides certain magic she had books on most nay kind of magic you wanted to learn. Sherry started pacing excitedly as she started excitedly talking about how much she was looking forward to this training. This went on for several minutes while Naruto was rather glad Sherry was only 12. Her bouncing around if she was closer to Lucy age would likely give any pervert a show, but he petite measurements made her cute. Naruto raised a hand up and coughed, making the excited Shuri blush at how childish she was acting, but Naruto's smile made her at ease again. Okay so before we get started to need to access your magic first. Generally people activate it in different ways, but I found just breathing and concentrating on a warm core in your chest works pretty well. 
Naruto lectured as both of them sat in the middle of the room on comfortable mats. Sherry nodded eagerly and sat with her legs crossed, making Naruto silently thankful. Naruto could not honestly say he found Sherry attractive like he did mere or more mature woman, but he would be lying if Sherry somehow flashed him, he would instantly look away either. He was a mature guy after all, and he did always find skirts, seemed to be for the express purpose of showing off a girl's legs. Sherry took several breaths and started to focus as Naruto watched her intently. After several minutes Sherry opened her eyes and huffed. I don't feel anything. Sherry whined as Naruto held back a grin. Naruto himself was more than a bit whiny in his training at several points. Mavis could attest to his slightly bad attitude when Naruto discovered his reborn body had fairly small magical reserves at first. Give it time Sherry-chan. We have days for you to at least activate your magic so there is no real rush. Naruto told her soothingly as Sherry puffed her cheeks keenly. But sensei I want to have as much time with you actually training this magic not doing these boring exercises. Sherry retorted putting her hands on her hips. Naruto sighed and put his hand on his forehead in frustration. I wonder if Kakashi sensei or pervy sage ever felt as frustrated with me. Naruto thought to himself. Looking back, he could admit now he was not an ideal student as a genin, and even his mismatched team were not great when they first started out. Sherry-chan we can't get to more exciting stuff till you at least able to draw out magic at will. Naruto tried to explain as Sherry moved her hands to her small chest and puffed it at him. Fine. You will see I will get it no problem. Sherry declared as she went back to the previous mediating position. Several minutes later with no visible changes, Naruto could see his red-headed student was starting to get rather frustrated, judging the vein almost visible on her forehead, and her legs twitching angrily. And this will never do. Naruto thought to himself before an idea struck him. He smirked before thinking Sakura would kill me for suggesting this, but it will definitely get results. Dot. Sherry-chan. Naruto said loudly as Sherry huffed and opened her eyes. Yes, sensei. Sherry grit out with notable annoyance despite her normally cheerful attitude. This will be something new I want to try. Just stand up first. Naruto told her warmly as Sherry blinked several times. Like this? Sherry asked as she stood up looking up her much taller teacher who also stood up. Yep now just stand there for a minute okay? Naruto asked her. Sure whatever you say sensei. Sherry answered in confusion as Naruto grinned at her. She gasped and felt her face heat up when Naruto rushed forward and put his hand on the small of her back where the shirt ended and her back was exposed. He used a hand to pull her forward so they were pressed right against each other. Sensei. What are you doing? Sherry eat in embarrassment and surprise. Despite her attitude from before this was the first time she was ever this close to a boy and she was starting puberty, so her attractive sensei did bring out unfamiliar feelings in her chest. Her face was redder than her own hair, as she could feel her sensei's strong muscle press against her petite body. Naruto leaned in so his face was on her shoulder and whispered into her ear. Just relax Sherry-chan. I just need to confirm something. Little did the clueless blonde know this position made the young Redeed very bothered and hot and relaxing was rather hard for her to do. Okay sensei. Sherry whimpered as her teacher's warm breath brushed against her ear. She was not sure what was happening, but she rather enjoyed the proximality. Naruto smiled and said softly I knew it. Naruto took a quick sniff while Sherry was this close to him. Know what? Sherry asked with her face pressed into Naruto's shoulder. You used strawberry shampoo after taking a shower this morning. Naruto informed her having small faint hints of it, but up close he confirmed it. Eh? Sherry asked as her blush disappeared to become pure confusion as Naruto pulled back with a massive grin. I am just saying it smells nice on you, and it goes with your hair color. Maybe it's also your natural scent as well. Naruto complimented her innocently. Sherry turned red with righteous feminine anger as she glared heatedly at her sensei. You are such a pervert. Sherry screamed as she slapped Naruto with all her might. Naruto did not even try to dodge or block the blow, as his face barely moved from the hit, but his grin turned into a warm smile. Sherry started to pant as her anger was still visible until Naruto gently patted her forehead warmly and ruffled her hair fondly. Congratulations Sherry-chan. Naruto told her warmly as Sherry anger disappeared. For what? Sherry asked suspiciously as Naruto pointed at her chest. For unlocking your magic container. Naruto told her proudly as Sherry gasped. Sherry put a hand on her chest as she felt warmth emanating from there that was not there before. This is magic. It feels so familiar. Sherry said softly as she could not help the giant smile from her face. Yep every wizard magic container is special, but it is their own so of course it feels familiar. Naruto told her as he led her to a couch where they sat down together. But how? I wasn't able to use it before, but now it feels like it is everywhere in my body. Sherry wondered as she looked at her hands and felt the warmth in her chest move to her hands instinctively. Do you think I made that comment about your shampoo for no reason? Naruto asked her in amusement as Sherry mumbled with some embarrassment. You were all stressed out and frustrated you did not access your magic right away, so I gave you an outlet to focus on Akami. Despite you being angry you no longer unfocused and you instinctively activated your magic all on your own. Naruto explained proudly as Sherry gaped. Wait. 
You mean you pretended to smell my hair just to get to hit you? Sherry accused pointing at Naruto who shrugged. Well I mean you do have strawberry shampoo and it does smell good, but yeah, you thinking I was a pervert was just an act. Naruto admitted as Sherry looked at her feet in embarrassment. By the way your back felt really nice to hold on to. You must really take care of your skin. Naruto told her without thinking making her red face even redder. Thanks. Sherry said in embarrassment as her teacher complimented her appearance. She really did have a serious crush on Naruto, but could tell he was humoring her at best due to her young age. Naruto smiled to himself and thought well Sherry chan is usually rather abrasive and forward, but it rather nice to see her embarrassed. It actually suits her hair color which was pretty soft when I touched it. Naruto even as shadow clones had his mother's motor mouth and just thought her set without really thinking it over. After several minutes of Naruto getting to tease the young Redeed, she finally regained her confidence and looked expectedly at her sensei. Okay now to learn how to use God's Slayer magic. Sherry chirped, but she frowned when he shook his head. Maybe tomorrow. It's enough you managed to unlock your magic container on the first time. Naruto told her as she pouted. And said the rest of the day we shall be going over theory and relaxing. Naruto told her as she put her hands over her chest childishly. What? That sounds lame. I mean if I have magic now why should I not be practicing it all the time? Sherry demanded as Naruto burst out laughing. Sensei it's not funny. Sherry pouted as Naruto smiled at her. Sorry it's just I said the same thing to my sensei who taught me magic as well. Naruto admitted as Sherry eyes widened. You will like me. Sherry asked in amazement as she honestly thought Naruto was the coolest and strongest person she met. Naruto smiled in remembrance as he remembered back to his training. Shortly after Naruto first unlocked magic, Naruto was huffing on the ground as Mavis looked down at him with exasperation. Naruto. You got to stop pushing yourself so hard. Magic takes time to learn. You cannot just force a bend to your will. Mavis lectured putting her hands on her hips as Naruto looked away. Come on Mavis-chan. Magic is so cool so why can't I use that Sky Devil Slayer magic in the book you gave to me yet? Naruto whined as Mavis sighed. Boss magic is higher tier magic, and you have just started to get a magical container to manifest. It will take you some time to get the control and power needed to actually safely utilize the magic. Mavis tried to explain as Naruto glared up at him. Well I will show you. Naruto declared as he grunted as Sky Devil Slayer magic started to form in his hands. Naruto stop. It's dangerous. Mavis ordered with a worried tone. Naruto just grinned at her no need to worry. See I got it. Wait huh? Naruto said as he looked down only to see the wind gathered crackle and explode in his hand. The recoil from the explosion knocked Naruto out as severe burns appeared on his body. The end to Naruto. Mavis screamed as she bent over and picked him up. The wounds quickly healed, but Naruto was still unconscious. Naruto groggily woke up only to see Mavis glare at him with disappointment and anger clear in her eyes. Naruto looked away in guilt knowing Mavis was right. You idiot. If it was anyone else you would not be getting up so easily. There's a reason why we take things slow. Mavis shouted as Naruto squirmed and bit his lip. How long was I out for? Naruto asked quietly as Mavis still glared at him. A day. You are lucky your tailed beast friends inside of you recovered your body so well. Anyone else would be out for at least a week or month. Mavis said with a hint of bitterness in her voice. I am sorry Mavis-chan. I am so sorry. Naruto apologized still looking away not able to handle his new sensei looking at him with disappointment for his rash behavior. Instead he heard quiet sobbing and felt Mavis' warm hand gasp his. He looked up and instead of anger he saw Mavis with tears in her eyes as she looked at him directly in the eyes. If anything, he f- You're such an idiot Naruto. Mavis declared as tears still flowed down her face. Naruto quickly pulled her into a hug on instinct as Mavis kept sobbing onto his back. Why are you crying over me? If anything, you should be mad at me or refuse to teach me magic after the stunt I pulled. Naruto asked Mavis who stayed quiet for a minute. Back in presence. Sensei. 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 Shuri voice echoed in Naruto's ear as Naruto blinked out of the memory. Sorry I got lost in the memory for a minute. Naruto apologized sheepishly as Shuri gave him a curious look. Anyways I was kinda a brat when I first magic. Naruto admitted as Shuri gave him a skeptical look. Sensei you were a bad student. Shuri asked with a raised eyebrow as Naruto gave a dry laugh. Yeah I thought I could learn magic really quick and ignored my teacher's warnings. Naruto said sadly as Sherry leaned in looking worried. What happened sensei? Sherry asked as Naruto gave her a sigh. The magic backfired and I got hurt all because I rushed trying to learn magic. When I woke up my teacher lectured me and I thought I crossed the line and she would stop teaching me. It was the least I deserved for disobeying my teacher and causing harm to myself out of pride. Naruto recollected as Sherry looked at him in awe drawn into his story. You know what she did? Naruto asked Sherry who shook her head. She cried and hugged me. I was so confused on why she was angry at me for my stupidity, so I asked her. She told me with tears in her eyes I am your teacher, so I will always worry about you, no matter how many stupid mistakes you make. Naruto revealed as Sherry grew tear-eyed. Since that day I have followed my teacher's teaching, and she has never steered me wrong. 
That means like her I worry about all my students Sherry Chan, so I don't want you to rush in your magic okay. Naruto assured her as Sherry nodded her head. It seems like your teacher was something else sensei. Sherry noted as a smile appeared on his face. Who is she anyways? Is she famous? Sherry asked digging for information. Naruto smiled fondly and lightly tapped her on the forehead making her pout. Nice try but my teacher is looking for fame or fortune, so I am not going to betray her trust. But yeah, she is something special. She may have been strict teacher, but she is one of the most kindest smartest people I have ever met. Naruto told her making Sherry smile at Naruto's admiration for his unknown teacher. Anyways for the rest of the day we will play games and the end of each lessons till the end. Naruto told her as Sherry looked dumbfounded at his suggestion. Games? Seriously sensei I am not a child. Sherry whined making Naruto laugh. I know it sounds silly, but I learned this from my teacher. If you got cocky and forget about your friends you'll lose your ground and become prideful. Playing silly little games will help you relax after each day, and when you do get Sky God Slayer magic down, you will remember these lessons so you won't fly into the heavens. Naruto told her as he brought out a deck of playing cards out of his pockets. For the rest of the day Naruto and Sherry played several fun card games, and to her amazement, it did help her relax. She even learned more about her teacher in this off time, while Naruto also learned more about her. This pattern continued for several days till Sherry could manifest small amounts of Sky God Slayer magic freely with Naruto helping her draw it out faster and more at a time. Sensei. Sherry asked as she sent a wave of Sky God magic at Naruto, who lazily ducked making it miss. Hmm? Naruto asked as he watched her carefully gather magic in her hands. She is getting this quicker than I thought. She is using less and less time to gather magic in her hands, and wasting less magic just to start it up. She seems like a little genius in my mind. Naruto thought to himself proudly. Sensei will you go out on a date with me when the lessons are over? Sherry asked innocently as Naruto stumbled allowing the black wind to actually hit him. He didn't take damage from it, but Sherry could not help a small amount of vindictive pride when her magic hit him. Despite it not damaging him and him not even bothering to put up a guard a hit was a hit in her books. What? You are joking right? Naruto sputtered it once again his student's flirty attitude bled through. Her wink and smirk certainly did not help her innocent expression. What's the problem sensei? Do you have a fiancé? Sherry asked. Well no. How about a girlfriend? No? Then it should not be a problem if we got out for dinner after the lessons are done right. Sherry asked as Naruto sputtered trying to think of a reason not to. It's just you are too young. I mean if anyone saw me with you, they would think I was a pedophile or a lecher taking out a cute girl like you out to dinner. Naruto yelled as Sherry smiled at his cute comments. I'm cute I would rather sexy, but I guess I will take what I can get. Sherry thought to herself. Sherry huffed before crossing her arms. Fine but when would I be old enough for me to not too young? Sherry asked challengingly as Naruto grinned. Not sure why but she is sure persistent. Naruto thought to himself thinking this was not a serious thing. Tell you what. When you are at least 18 and somehow we meet up again I will take you on a date. Naruto promised putting his hand out. AN3. Sherry had a huge grin on her face as she shook his hand eagerly. No backsies. Sherry demanded as Naruto laughed. I am sure she will forget about whatever this is long before 6 years are up. Naruto thought to himself thinking he was clever for not alienating his much too young student. Naruto to his embarrassment did happen to see up Sherry's schoolgirl's skirt when she practiced her kicks with Sky God Slayer magic and saw she did like Red very much so. He chose not to mention to Sherry, but her smirk implied she was not as clueless as he was led to believe. I am not sure if this girl happened to be a student of Kana, but she will definitely have to keep the boys away when she grows up. Naruto thought as Sherry once again gave him a cute pout, making him once again lose focus and get hit with another burst of Sky God magic. Thanks for watching.